Sky Racing. Coming at you! It's Monday, December 5th, 5 p.m. Pacific. Anaheim just around the corner. The 2023 Supercross season. And Kenny Roxon still doesn't have a ride. Well, not officially, anyways. So lots to talk about tonight. We'll talk about that Roxon situation. We'll have a little bit of off-road talk tonight as well. Thanks for tuning in. I know we were off for two weeks. This is that's the last time we will be off for two weeks for a long time. So uh, stay tuned. More regular show schedule coming up as we ramp up into Anaheim 1 2023. Great show tonight. Zach Osborne will be on, friend of the show. He's calling in about his new GNCC ride. And my question for him is, what the hell? Mike Brown, just beating down Chris Kiefer at Loretta's, beating down Chris Kiefer at the World Vets, and then winning uh, Mini O's. What a season he's had. We'll have Mike Brown calling in. The alien will uh, ring us and tell us about what's going on with him. Uh, friend of the show and one of the best callers we have, David Villeman as well. We'll call in. He's working with Marvin Muscan, of course, and Anaheim's around the corner. So looking forward to talking to our buddy DV. And Robbie McQuarrie will call in as well. Robbie is one of the owners of AMA Arena Cross, and that is kicked off two rounds down. And Robbie wants to talk about that series, the changes they're making, a little more pro-oriented and more. So looking forward to talking to Robbie about Arena Cross as well. Don't forget, go through the motorsport.com banner on popamexshow.com or popamex.com to order something, anything from the guys at Motorsport, whether it's Worth Connection, whether it's Guts Racing, guys at Motorsport, support the uh, 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 sport in many ways and great prices, great return policy, free shipping over 79 bucks. And if you go through the banner, I can afford to keep paying Travis Mark's outrageous salary that he demands to, uh, to run the cameras in this show. Uh, so please check it out. Thanks to motorsport.com guys as well. 702-586-PULP. If you got a question, concern, or comment about uh, the series, Supercross series or anything else, uh, 702-586-PULP. Give us a call. Thanks to Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, X-Brand Goggles, Race Tech Suspension and Engines, Renthal, Michelin Motorcycle Tires, Acherbys, Firepower Batteries and Chains, Maxima USA, OGO Power Sports, ORW, Pro Filter, Skosh, FMF, Guts Racing, Atlas Neck Brace, Works Connection, Get Data, WUSA, MotorcycleNerseyJobs.com, Ride Engineering, Manscaped, Suspension Direct, Wisco Piston, Intense Cycles, Twisted T, all on board with us tonight. Good show. Zacho, Mike Brown, DV, Robbie McQuarrie from Arena Cross. And again, your phone call, 702-586-7857. We are also going to have the motorsport.com tweet at Talon segment, the X-Brand goggle tear-offs, and a race tech rant or two tonight. And maybe, just maybe, if we have time, Kiefer after dark, looking forward to all of this. Quiet down. My in-studio guests, a couple of good friends of mine. Uh, first up. This gentleman uh, owns the Works Connection Company that has been in our sport since 1990. Uh, whether it's a skid plates, whether it's frame guards, radiator braces, purchase, elite purchase, whatever it is, you've probably used something from Works Connection over the years, and we're stoked to have Eric Phipps in studio. What's up, man? How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm glad to be here. And uh, yeah. yeah, third time. Yeah. In studio. This is the third time? I, I, third I, time? I know every time, like I said, I'm, I know. I'm you, back of my head. Right. Yeah, you knew it exactly. Uh, thanks for coming in. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, glad uh, to be here. WorksConnection.com, Publimex 20 is the code to save. Code still being used? You're still seeing it? Yeah, go? we're yeah. still seeing All it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Got, the customers are great. So um, great. We appreciate and, it. Yeah, really, really good company. Uh, you've, you've got a good thing going there, Works Connection. Keep it up. We, we try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're yeah. starting yeah. to get it figured yeah. out. Yeah, you're yeah, starting to get it. It's starting to get some momentum. Yeah, you right. know, <laughs> but we're starting to get, you know, a right. feel for it Okay, now. Yeah. good. Good yeah. to hear. Also in studio, he works for Racer X, Key for Inc. Testing, of course, Pulp MX as well. He's got many things on the go. He's testing a lot of things. <laughs> Jeez. Chris Kiefer, what's up, man? Hi, Steve. How are you? I'm excited to be here. Are you? With you and Eric. Yep. It's yep. going to be a fun. I love DV. Yeah. I hate Mike Brown. You saw the text from DV? I did. Yeah. He, so he approves. He approves of the co-host. All right. He wasn't calling in until I told him the co-host because he's had a bit of combative relationship with. It, it wasn't uh, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Myrtle. No, or or uh, um, uh, uh, the bearded guy. Rutledge. Rutledge. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Rutledge. You uh, you made the cut. Oh, yeah. Rutledge. That was a great. That right. was a great episode. Yeah, it, it was great. Uh, so thanks for coming in. Lots yeah, to talk thank about. Thank you. Off road life. You've been doing some stuff there. Yep. Uh, uh, 
Oh. You wrote an you wrote a article on Razor X. <laughs> was there something in there that said not do not say anything? It's, I was waiting for that. Okay. No. Yes, Razor X. We're going to talk about that. Right. Yes. What is it? Moto Demption. Moto Demption. I can't even read my own writing. Yes. Uh, and uh, also too, uh, we got some topics about Ken Roxon to talk about tonight. Uh, some injuries in our sport, unfortunately, yep. has already hit as well. A lot. Uh, so that sucks. And yeah, and JT will call in as well. Our buddy Jason Thomas. Uh, he is in Anaheim doing some Fell Supercross preview stuff already. Oh, wow. Yeah, him, Weege, Blair, they're all there hanging out. Big sure. media thing today at Anaheim, right? Yeah, okay. they're there. Yep. Uh, picking the cameras over there, watching hockey uh, <sighs> while he's trying to do the, the show and everything. The, the gentleman told me that he needed a new laptop for the show okay. uh, a while back because just it would run smoother. You yep. know, So I spent the... Three thousand dollars on a oh, new laptop big for the gigs, show. Big gigs, but then uh, come to find out, he's just using the other laptop to watch hockey now. Hmm. Travis Marks, what's up, Marks? <laughs> I regret nothing. Unbelievable. <laughs> You're interrupting my game. We just scored. It's three zero. We're beating the Bruins. It's a good night. Hey, it's in Boston too. Yeah, and Boston dude. hasn't lost at home. Uh, we're, we're about to. Yeah. We're about to ruin that. Yeah. What's up, Marks? How are you? Uh, you know, I'm just excited to be here. I did find out that. Uh, your co-host across from you won't be with us next week, and I'm a little bummed about that. Yeah, so next Monday we're off. Big Pulp MX show dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm buying these jerkies dinner. High-end restaurant, Eric. Uh, Kiefer, you and Heather were going to come. Yeah. Uh, and then now you can't. No. But uh, so so who's all, who's all coming for this Christmas? Not you. A parade well, of uh, dinners. Uh, the guy taking the phone calls over there, Talon Taylor. What's up? I was going to go, but if Kiefer can't yeah, go. Yeah, so he's then. bailing. Yar Yar's not coming if I'm not coming. Yeah, Yar Yar's out. Uh, Courtney's coming. Courtney's coming? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, and then Mr. <laughs> she, Legendary. She might be sitting there. <laughs> yeah. And then Mr. Legendary and his wife. Uh, Swizz is not coming? No. Swizz, well, he was talking about it, but it's a long time. Some flight. weird guy named Moser might come? Nobody knows. Okay. <laughs> but the Pulp MX dinner Sounds next like Monday dinner night. Sounds like is as, as well planned as everything Pulp. This this could should be, be a, I, honestly that should be an episode. It should be. That just should be. It, just set up the, the pulp MX dinner Christmas Maybe party. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know people say like, Mister Side and these people coming down on me, for my my <sighs> terrible things. Uh, wow. You know. I did listen to that by the way. That was that wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great. <laughs> but it was good. I mean, it, I but love you. But it was good. That wasn't great. Even but, though he tells you yes, you can. You Fuck shouldn't. My ass. <laughs> he said I can. It doesn't matter. He said I could. Oh boy. Yeah. F you, dude. Right. Exactly, Pookie. Well, all right. There's maybe, a maybe. there was a line there that may or may not have been crossed. Listen, yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, <laughs> deny that I took some heat from our listeners <laughs> on that. I really I did. Bet, I bet. A lot of people weren't happy with that. Look it. But it, the poll, we ran a poll. I did see the poll. The poll was strongly in favor. That's true. I love hey, listen. That that could be my race tech rant. Well, it's too early. Premature. No, let me just briefly say that. Okay. That's my race tech rant. Pulp 22's code to save. We run the poll. Yes. It's like 84% of people said they had the extra $800 or whatever Whatever the question was. It was 800 I don't know. It was 800 I, but that. Yeah. So like 84% of people said they did. Just these guys on social are like, they're liars. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Like, That's we not ran a poll. No. People voted. And like, you can say like, wow, I didn't think there'd be that many. But yeah. like. Just because you don't like the answer, now you're just accusing people of lying? Like, what if it went the other way? Like, no. what? why do you come out and just say, those people in that <laughs> poll are liars? Listen, what, what, the, the poll and what happened are two different things. I know, but when I bring up that 84% of the people in the poll said they did have the extra money, right? the people on social are like, they're wrong. Right. They're wrong. It's the same people, the election shut. That didn't happen. Yeah. Like, okay, like... 84% of people lied? That's what these people are saying. Like, they're all liars. I just think, like, if I was dark side, dark side effed up and said, yeah, dude, just keep it on the DL. And then it would have been fine. Never would have brought it. Right. Up. Never would have brought it. Right. I'm not going to do that to Mr. Sutton. But if he doesn't care, I feel like it's, right. it's for, you know what you're getting into when you say, it's okay. Everyone in this studio knows what can happen if you say, he was range. almost stranded and they locked the door on him. They took away his room key. It didn't work anymore, and all his right. shit was in the room. Yep. And who came into the rescue? Like Superman. Yeah. Me. self Look at Superman. I'm right there <laughs> alongside with you. Like, we saved him from a long list of things that he could be doing right now. Well, 84% of the people are liars. <laughs> I just, I just, like, okay, you can not have it yourself, and you can say, like, that's a lot of money. 
But like, just to say the poll is wrong because you don't agree with the poll is exactly what's wrong with no, America the poll, today. The poll is right. I just think like, if it was me and and Dark Side said, "Hey, you could talk about the show," I wouldn't have talked about it because I just it, I just wouldn't. That's fine. Any Again. chance Dark Side? Maybe there's some confusion on how far Dark Side thought oh, that conversation no. he, might he go. He knows. Listen, he's again, been around he long. Listen, that, you cracked that door I, open. Steve's coming around. through with the truck. I I took heat. A lot of <laughs> listeners didn't like it. They, I'm not I'm not going to sit here. See, now if I was the same assholes as the poll, I would come on here and be like, everyone loved it. Right. Everyone said it was funny. Yeah. That's what the poll people. The people who say the poll is wrong. That's what they say. <laughs> the poll people. <laughs> the poll people would be like, yeah, it's wrong. Right. No, I'm coming in. I'm admitting. I took some heat. Did you get the money back? Oh. Oh. Dude. Okay. His, <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Pope Show. <laughs> fire back up. <laughs> he just poured more I don't want to get into it. <laughs> oh, so there's more. I got the money back, okay. but not without a lot of fighting for the money. Really? Yeah. Wow. On Dark Side's part or Vital's part or what? I just think he forgot. I think Mr. Side forgot. Oh, man. Yeah. He's going to call it, I'm sure, at some point. Yeah, he'll call it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get into all okay. that. We'll get there. Uh, we'll get there when it's time. We'll get there when it's time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we raise Ryder D. We'll get there. We'll raise him when it's time. Hey, burnouts are sick, though. What? Burnouts? After you win mini O's, that's fun. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm really just touching <laughs> Boy, the Boy, he's hitting the <laughs> trigger <laughs> points, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Where was <laughs> Where was, <laughs> where was the grown adult to be like, hey, 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 you just won many O's. You got top 10 at Paula. Let's maybe not do a burnout. Instead, uh, there's Duff. Uh, hey, Duff, you want to, Duff won a 250 Supercross title <laughs> with, my, with Christian Craig. Like, that's a big deal. Oh, man. You're going to do burnouts at mini O's? Hey, whatever. Dude. It's, it's whatever. I don't, I'm not coming down on Hayden. Some adult in the room should have said, no, we don't do burnouts for mini O titles. I went to mini O's in 99. Myself and Ryan Morris, we won like 20 titles. Right. No so, burnouts? So you can't be like, what do you know, Mathis? We won 20 titles. We beat Stu. We fucking beat Stu. Now, he was on 105. We was on anybody one doing burnouts back then, though? No. I don't know, man. No, I don't. don't know, man. But just some adult should have been like, Yeah. It's just mini O's. Can we? Hey, have you thought maybe it's in the star contract that they have to do Fuck burnouts? me, man. Duff I mean, knows better. Come on, Duff. <laughs> Duff, he was just happy, man. That's <laughs> cool, man. Be happy. Duff. No one said don't be happy. Be happy. <laughs> Can we turn Steve's mic down a little bit? I was going to say. I was going to ask <laughs> about Fuck that. Fuck me, man. You started this thing <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. I didn't mean to open the show that aggressive. Mr. Side. Oh, already? God, we're really oh, premature yeah, in the it, shit it, out of this show. All right, that wraps it up, everybody. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. It's early, but listen, just real <laughs> quick, because Kiefer made the point. Yes, Steve, I did say you could talk about it, but I had no fucking idea it was going to go where it went. Oh, my. Stop it. No, listen. <laughs> Even I Eric is shaking his head. <laughs> Look, it, I stuck up for you. Now I'm on Steve's side because you, you know, you know exactly you if you open the door for Steve, you know what you're going to do. It's a Mack truck coming I through. thought for sure we're going to bust on fucking Michael Lindsay for fucking not getting the bill paid. Please. And the, the fact that it went to everybody has $800 blew my <laughs> fucking mind. 80, 84%. I don't give a shit what the fucking Twitter poll says. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. no. The poll people. Poll people. <laughs> poll people. Yep, poll people. No, I'm telling you. Very, that's very uncommon for people to eat fucking to have people don't so, have fucking credit cards and they have so eighty four percent or whatever never, is just lied. They just no, lied. No, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say eighty four percent of the people that fucking voted probably do, but that's not a fucking accurate fucking poll. A lot of f bombs. Just relax. Yeah. Just calm chill, down. Chill, chill, chill back. Right. Chill down a little bit. Chill down. All right. I was fucking dumb. Oh, down. f <laughs> easy effing. <laughs> <There's> no, <laughs> I was dumbfounded that it went to the fact that I didn't have because I just to me. That's pretty common. <laughs> so, uh, again, it's if you're 25 years old, no, I get Steve. it. I get it. You don't have the Listen, money. Don't like, open it back up. Off-season shows. Catch the fever. People, lots of people, Steve, adults, work just to fucking get by. I agree with let's, that. Let's, like, hold I on. Agree. But again, you're like the poll people. You're misunderstanding what it was, what the question was. Working to just get by cars. is one thing, but having 
a credit card with a thousand dollar limit for emergencies is what I'm talking about. Yes. Now I'm not talking well, about like that. I'm not talking about people making like enough that to don't get have by. Credit cards. Okay, you can make enough money to just get by in life, mm. and I understand that, and I get that. What I'm talking about is if you dog gets hit by a car, wife needs a kidney, um, you need more than a your your car gets broken into, like. Do you have an extra mo- credit card somewhere for that kind of money or ability to get that money? That's what I'm talking about. Hold on. And I'm telling you, most, most of the people that are just getting by don't have those credit cards because then they would use that credit card to pay my water bill this month or my electric bill that I barely have money for. They don't mm. have that. Let me, let me just That's ask you really a question, common. Dark Side. Well, not, yeah. not according to 84% of the poll. So when you say real common, we did, had a lot of votes. Now, just – for shits and giggles, did you learn oh. learn a lesson when you when you left and went to Europe? Yes or no? Oh, there's a couple of lessons. Sure. Okay, yeah, so yeah. now now that you've been through what you've been through, will or will you not have an, a credit card for oh shit purposes? Yes, and I do have one of those. Unfortunately, the day before I left for Paris, I spent a thousand dollars on something on my shop. Okay, and. So that's that's that position. Th- that's but either yes, you know, that was a lesson learned. That's it. That's all there is. It, it could be we yeah. close the box now. You live and learn. That's how shit happens. Like we'll talk about it yeah. later on the day when things have failures. You learn from failures, then you move on. That's it. Zach wants to yeah, talk. Yeah. Zach, you want to talk to uh, Dark Side about this? Yeah. Well, all of you guys. I tell you what, this reminds me of Steve. You you uh, you famously said you you've been in a gangbang once, right? Is that correct? No, I didn't. I I, I did not. Say you were that. in a gang. I was like, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I did not say that. I might have made a joke about it, but I was not. He's probably talking about racing gangbangs. Hey, when Dark Side just now said, yeah, I said it was okay, but I didn't know it was going to turn into that. It's like some chick. She gets a little drunk, a couple guys and bite her back. She's like, yeah, I'll go. Then the next day, she's like, I didn't think it was going to be all that. It's like, what do you mean? There was four or five drunk guys inviting you back to a hotel room. What do you think? <laughs> that that slightly could be a little bit different there, yeah, sir. Yeah, I, I think I'm, that's a, it's not a very apples-to-apples apples comparison. Marks, can you at least – listen, I know you're on Mr. Side's side here. I know that, okay? Yep. You're shit-talking me. I, I get it. I'm not can, shit-talking you. Can you at least tell Mr. Side that when he gave me the okay to talk about it, to him, for him to say he didn't know he was going to go there oh. is – No, because I, I already asked really if that, that was a possibility. So I don't – I mean, I don't think that the line has to be crossed just because he said yes. I think that still leaves room for, you know, places that you shouldn't or maybe right. won't go. We got to go. This is this I, is too, too weak old. I think Mr. Side right. should also think about what he says he should allow. I wouldn't have allowed Yeah, that's it. fine. That's allowed. fine. That's fine. But – no more button pushing today. Can you imagine going he to Europe and, and then just be spending a thousand dollars a day before you leave because you're just like, oh, I no, man, you got you got to have a thousand, you got to have a thousand bucks on hand at all times. Even if you have like, with all the apps that we have, you should be able to transfer a thousand at all times. Sell yeah. some shit, dark side, get you a thousand bucks. Yeah, there you go. I would have let exactly. it, I would let it slide you. if he said he spent a thousand dollars on WorksConnection.com. Yeah, I mean, yeah. then yeah. Right. that would be acceptable. Sense, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, it would have been fine. All right, dark side, listen. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're, we're all good now. It's fine. Yeah, we're fine. Just listen. Can you afford a new shelf to hold up all those trophies in your shop? <laughs> hey, what time fuck. do I land? What time do I land Monday for the dinner? What a look at me. What? He has trophies? What? Did you see his post? I saw the poll. I didn't really look at oh, the back. Oh, this happened to put all his trophies on this shelf. Oh, Go really? look at it. Oh, yeah. That's what his a- bling shelf? Uh, yeah. Hold Where on. Where do those trophies come from, Dark? Uh, just different series out here in Texas back in 06, 07 when I was racing a lot. So you, you, do you say you save your trophies from 10, 15 years ago? I have the ones that are like the championship ones that are like six foot tall and big, big bastards. Okay. So yeah. I've kept those. Okay. But he I've, made I've sure those made the Instagram. The... Yeah. Well, I understand. Yeah. Right. Hold on. Crystal wants, yeah, all, Crystal all wants the to weigh in. Crystal. Ones are gone. Crystal wants to weigh in on Kristen? this. Crystal? What's up? Crystal. 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 Yeah. Crystal. Hi, Steve. Hi. I am a actual first time caller. My husband is a huge fan of the show, so Thank you. I have to um to, to deal with it. I do kind of get into it though. Keep Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. After dark. All right. All um, right. Yeah. I feel like I have a unique take on this because to Dark Side's point, how he's like most working class people don't have it, but the polls like eighty four percent of people probably do. Um, I actually come from from poor people, from poor working class people, and now I would say I'm one of the eighty four percent of the poll people that say, yeah, you, you would have $800, but I think that it's, you really have to look at your demographics, right? To us, middle-class, upper-class people, of course you have $800 on a credit card. And to your point, yeah, it makes sense. Like, well, of course, when you have a credit card for emergency, 
But every single adult that I knew growing up, and still to this day, I am an adult, and you're like, they should be responsible. You open a credit card for emergencies, and then it gets used. And it doesn't get paid off because you didn't have that money to begin with. And so then maybe you open another one, and the same thing happens. And then they don't even have the credit to to be able to do that. So I, I to try to limit that down and be mad and be like, oh, <laughs> it's just, you know, people on the poll are, are lying or, you know, but the poll people said we have it. It's a lot bigger than that, and there's two sides to it. And what you and I think is, like, common sense, like, of course, why the hell wouldn't you have $800 for a room? Yeah, that, that's all where I'm coming from, like, just an emergency credit card for – Shit that goes wrong let, in let life. Let me add to this real quick, so, Crystal. We got, we got to move. I know this isn't a, a Mr. Side is ruining the show. One more thing, and I'm going to get out of here. Okay. <laughs> when you take a job such as an industry job where you're going to travel a lot, okay? When what she's talking about is like I understand it. Like when you go to your job nine to five or eight to five or whatever it is, and you go from point A to point B and then back home. I understand, like, hey, I don't have any money. I live paycheck to paycheck. But when you accept a job that you have to travel, you need to understand that you got to have some backup, oh, shit, something. A credit card that sits there and does nothing or something in your bank or just something. So I don't think Dark Side's to blame. I just think he's green and didn't know. Our guy Michael Lindsay deserves some criticism here yes. for, for signing right. Dark Side up for this trip with no hotel Clarify. Because I feel like if you're just going to your job and back home and you don't and your job doesn't require you to travel, then by all means I don't think you're getting but as dude, much shit. If you have a dog and the vet says I need eight hundred dollars or your dog is gonna die, you just let it die? No, that's when you call uh, uh, dad, mom, grandma, grandpa, whoever, and you get money. Okay. Right? Okay. Or, yeah, the reality is that, like, yeah, people let their dogs die because they don't have the money or they did that right. the first time and then the second time they're just screwed. But, I mean, yeah, to Kiefer's point, if you don't travel a lot or, you know, like to how dark side, he hasn't been doing this gig for very right. long. He doesn't know yet. Right. Hasn't, it, it hasn't crossed his mind that I need that. I right. mean, I travel for work, too, so I know exactly yeah. where you're coming from. Of course, I have a credit card for that. But when I first started, of course, I didn't. So uh, Again, when I was 25, I understand. But Dark Side's older. He had a legitimate <laughs> job for a long time. That's where I'm coming from. If you're 25, I, I didn't have the $800 either. I'm, I'm coming from Dark Side's point of view where he had a comfy city job there in East Texas. <laughs> I'm, so, I was more on the team dark side. Don't talk about it. But I'm on team Steve dark side that you should have known that he was going to go 120 percent in on this. What me do that? Yeah. I, I completely right. agree, Kiefer. Team dark side. But if you agree for it to be on the air, you should mm -hmm. know that, that Steve's going to take it too far. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Steve. Mm -hmm. but. Well, <laughs> thank you, Crystal. Yeah. Thank, thank you, right, Crystal. But that's why I didn't. That's why I didn't get mad about it because I should have expected. Well, you just it. came in hot right now, sir. <laughs> no, you're letting your guys attack Steve. That's what happens. Yeah, call off your dark side army. Yeah, we'll call consider it. But uh, right. thanks, Russell. To your, Thank you. What, before before I'll, I'll get off here, but just the point that you just made, Steve. That what about your dog or your car? People I people I work with, guy who I used to work with at the city, and his wife is a teacher. Car broke down. Well, they're down to one fucking car because they don't have money to fix that car. Air conditioner goes out. Well, we're fucked. We don't have the money for that. But they're working two jobs. They're doing the best they can. Again, yeah, they're not traveling. The they're point A to point yeah, B I jobs. Know. Well, I understand, okay. Chris. So, and I'm getting, I'm, I'm working on getting to a point. Well, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm uh, there, dude. I got it figured out. Eighty-four percent right. of the poll you said suck, I did. Mathis. So you know, that's all. The poll, the poll agreed with me. Uh, so I don't know if we have a bunch of life. Rich, life is all about trial and error. I don't, this I don't is know if we have a bunch of rich listeners or anything, but I apparently, you know, we're all just dirt bike people. We're not loaded. <laughs> it is wow. Twitter okay. after all those too. It is Twitter. It yeah, is Twitter, exactly. So. All right, Jamie. All right, we got I'll let you guys go. Right, Bye, guys. Jamie. The Bye, show's Jamie. already fucking derailed with burnouts and dark side and everything else. Yeah. Okay. Listen, Ken Rocks. No more button pushing. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, stop God it. Stop damn. it. Someone needed, to, someone needed to be the adult in the room at Minios. Someone. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, Ken Rocks. Yeah. So, got some injuries to discuss in the sport. We got Supercross preview stuff coming up too, but let's Zach Osborne's coming up too. Um, but Roxon looks like he's doing the Hep Suzuki deal. I thought it was going to be announced today. Uh, I didn't say that. I just said contract signed. Oh, I didn't see. I just said I thought oh, it was too. Oh no, no, no! I just said contract signed because oh, okay. I had heard from someone close to Roxon that he was signing on Monday, and that's why I said Twitter today. I said Happy Ken Roxon signing day because I think it's going to happen. 
So what's your thoughts on that? Where are you at with Kenny? Now, I don't – I think he went to the HEP test with like, sure, I'll try your bike. Why not? Probably stay with the Firepower Honda guys, et cetera, et cetera, or maybe the Cowies or whatever. But from what I know, he loved the bike. Mm-hmm. Loved it. So here's where I think where it goes. Uh, similar situation for me. Went to a Glen Helen test, rode a uh, heart raft spike, did a Racer X test on his bike. Was thinking, oh, it's just another Suzuki test, whatever. Right. And I was pleasantly surprised. Like, wow, it's really fast. It handles decent. And I was surprised by it. So similar, I think Roxton o- already was kind of like, yeah, okay, I'll try it just for shits and giggles. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some money attached to that. Why not give it a try? And then was shocked by how well it worked. So his expectations were probably really low, which led to, oh, wow, this thing actually is pretty good, especially on a Supercross track. I know how good the engine is. So when I rode it, I was like, holy crap, this thing is very, very fast. Um, That chassis is something he already familiar with. It hasn't changed that much since he rode them. Um, He probably felt comfortable on it right away. It has ergos that make you feel that way, similar to a Honda where you sit on it. You're like, oh, yeah, this is right at home. And... Let's face it, a Suzuki corners like nobody's business. And with his settings that he likes to run his stuff soft, that enhances that corner ability. He can cut down. So I think along with that and the money, why not do it? Yeah, it's definitely, and, from and what I know, the, the best financial opportunity was yes. with Hep. Yeah. And one more I want to t- thing that I don't think anybody else kind of thought about. I don't know Kenny personally, but I know some people around him. And I feel like he's thinking, you know what? This bike's pretty good. Uh, I got a good chunk of money for this. No one's expecting me to win on this thing. So what if I go win on this? The upside is huge. The downside is like, yeah, of course he's not going to win. We already know that the it's a Suzuki. There's no way. So now let's say Kenny does come out and win. It just looks that much better for him. So it's all upside, I feel like. I I don't believe that. He can win on this bike. Oh, I know he can. Right. But I'm saying right. the general public. The general yeah, yeah, perception yeah. Right. is it's okay if he doesn't win because it's a Suzuki. I totally think he can win. He can win races. Yes. I, I, uh, Eric, do you have any doubt? I don't, th- I don't have any doubt that he yeah. can win. I am a little bit surprised with the move, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because uh, you know Chris talked about like it's a l- for a lot of money, but I don't think it's for a lot. I don't think it's for a lot of money, but, but it's the most money he can make. Yes, yeah. And uh, I know he likes the team structure. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a set team. If he liked the bike, and yeah, he's familiar with it. Because when was that? Twenty fifteen. Sixteen. Sixteen. I think was the last year. Yeah. So, but man, he looked good on that Honda. So then I'm like, yeah, keep one going, Paris, I keep right? going yeah. back and forth. Like, yep. I don't, you know. Um, it just creates a storyline. Mm-hmm. I'm sure his agent has thought about this. <laughs> like, holy shit, if you win on this bike, we can really blow this up. You know? Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, uh, I think the HEP guys are good, too. They run a good team, right? Yeah, like, yeah, of course. I think all of that's really good. They yeah. do a good job. We'll talk about Hartraff's injury and more when it comes to that. Um, and now Larry, yeah. Larry Brooks in there, too. Brooks is in there. Brooks is – Rox is going to love Brooks. Very mm-hmm. serious. Brooks will live, mm-hmm. eat, sleep, yes. breathe getting Ken Rox. Larry's a good um, guy. Yeah, know. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think he's going to end up doing that. Um, it should be interesting to see. But I I have no doubt that he can win races on, on the on the HEP Suzuki. I don't, I don't put him as a championship favorite. I wouldn't have put him as a championship favorite on a Honda. Right. You know, but, yes, he can win but races. But will it surprise you if he comes out and wins A1? Uh, well, probably not because it's Ken Roxon. Okay. But I do think, like, look, it's December fifth. Anaheim's a month away. Isn't Anaheim the fourth or fifth? Like, isn't it like yeah, I think a month? So. Yeah. I think it's just over. Yeah. So, I hundred percent expect Kenny for the first few rounds. When I go to talk to him after the races, he's going to tell us about how he's still getting used to the bike. He started late, all that. I hundred percent expect that. That's a built-in, and it's a legitimate excuse. Yeah, reason. But he could win and still say the same thing. Well, he, you know, when he won Paula last year, he was on this show, and he was like, I can't believe I won Paula. Right. I never thought I was good. You know, I wasn't ready, blah, blah. It just came so easy. Possum. Possum, yeah. yeah. He, he didn't like that. He did not like did the possum like comment. That. Um, but, yeah, so should be interesting to see what he does. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, how he does Look on at, this thing. Uh, not to bring this up again, but, like, Can, s- similar to thing, like, it downplays. Everything's, everything's mellow down. Him not feeling good, he goes out and wins Paula. The Suzuki thing, no one expects him to do anything. He's going to 
and if he does great, it looks that much better. Like yeah, it, yeah, there is. There's that. it's a low stress level. Yeah, it's low stress. Right, right. No, you're right. Can he take his 16 stuff and bolt it on? The bike's different. Uh, for the most part, yes. Yeah, like yes. like could he replicate? Like, I don't mean physically. He they can. won't, but he could. Right. Yes. But could he get? Hey, Showa, what did I run in 16? Oh yeah, I don't think they'll go that far back. No. 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 There's been advances. There's been all. Yes. That. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, all right. Chris, you said you rode a uh, heart wrap bike. Did you yeah. ever ride the 2016 version, like RCH, or have any experience with that? For I did not ride the RCH bike. No. I just wondered because I'm. You know, I would think that the motor is got to be better. I've ridden a factory Suzuki when there's a factory bike. I ridden a Leslie Suzuki when he was on one, and then. As far as past that, production was the only thing I rode up until HEP. So, but uh, I was just consi- I was just comparing the HEP bike to all these other support satellite factory bikes that I have ridden in the past. Mm-hmm. And for me, that at least, good, right? yeah, for me in the engine department, there's no lack of power there. As far as and I, when I say power, people think, oh, it must be crazy fast. No, there's a lot of it there, but it's usable. It's not out of control, right? Mm-hmm. And there has to be usable power that connects to the rear wheel, that drives you forward, that doesn't light up the rear end, that's not making you tired. Suzuki, what they did with that engine, has response but connectivity. I, I like the people that like, on social media that's like, well, first of all, I, I was told it was too heavy. Like, give me a break. Like, it's, it is the heaviest bike. When you bike. go to put it on the stand, it's heavy as a mother. <laughs> but it's not. It's the heaviest bike, it, but it it's a couple pounds over. It's fine. Yes. The HEP team will also get it lighter. And so he, that will work. And also, the the motor can be made as fast as you possibly want it. Yeah. You don't want it. HEP can make the bike a rocket ship. Yes. And, and Kenny won't want that. Correct. But so don't even talk about how the, the stock, the motor is not as good as a Yamaha. Kenny likes his power really smooth. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I hate the weight thing because with some weight comes stability. If you lighten the bike up too much... There are some issues that come along with that. Even on a Supercross track, a little bit of weight and how it's distributed on the bike is really good through whoops. Like, I've heard other factory riders say, hey, I want to make my bike a little bit heavier mm-hmm. in some areas to make it track through the whoops. So we could yeah. be on the, the, the minimum edge of the weight scale for AMA, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Um, just because it's light, sure, you can be able to corner better, right. lightweight turn down, but... People freak out on weight. It's not all about that. Yeah. Isn't it a little bit the deja vu, too, when Kenny went back to Suzuki and with RCH? I yeah. mean, I, you know yeah. he had a history with Suzuki yeah. back in right. the day, and yeah. he loved it. He always, always said that. I love my yep. Suzuki. And then he went to RCH. For me, it's a little bit of a deja vu. Like At he's home, going back kind of feel, right? Again, yeah. yeah. He's like, Could, oh, I'm just going back to an old comfy bed. You know? Couldn't you see him just coming out and winning? Not that Suzuki's like, comfy Winning at <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, it wouldn't. Like, people are like, oh, my God. Like, honestly, yeah. I'd be like, yep. Yep. No, I know. Yeah, he can uh, He can definitely win on this bike. Not a championship. Right. But I feel like he could win races. I, I 100% agree. I think yeah. Kenny could win races, like, on a couch. Yes. <laughs> on, but, a, on a beat but, down. But now <laughs> that – and, and we're part of – to blame the media is like the Suzuki beat down that everyone puts well, on this bike. The right? Electric start would be nice. But Correct. Yeah, right. But I'm just saying the bike is still capable. Right. You know? So. Yeah. hundred percent. No. So we'll look and see if that gets done. I think it will. And, uh, and that'll be interesting for sure. Would uh, you think not signing today or not hearing today is worrisome or no? No, 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 I don't think so. Okay. Uh, rental, by the way, the undisputed global leader in manufacturer design since 69 rental has become notorious for relentless obsession of detail and quality through their commitment to produce the finest products on the market today, Renthal.com. A fraction of a second, a few grams, a couple of millimeters, it all counts. Welcome to the winning world of Renthal. Super cool, uh, informative website over there in, uh, on Renthal.com as well. And uh, Renthal brings you our first guest of the night. This gentleman, he is back racing. Oh, now you want to talk about it. Okay. Zach Osborne. What's up, Zacho? Uh, chilling, listening to you boys rant about Kenny. How's Kenny going to do on the Suzuki? Uh, I'm I'm with you. Like if he shows up and wins, I'm not surprised, right? Right, right, right. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, hey well, Zach, real quick, I'll be, I'll be impressed but not surprised. Let's say right. That. How picky were you about weight on your bike, or did that even come up when you were on your factory bikes? I've never, never said a word about weight. Yeah. And Zach, do you have eight hundred dollars available on a credit card right now? <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. All right. So Zach's one of those lucky guys, I guess. Right. Did he did he do the poll? Did he? <laughs> I don't think he did the poll. <laughs> I don't think he did. I don't poll. think he did the poll. Yeah. Did you hear about how I saved Mr. Side's uh, life though in Paris? I'm pretty sure I did do the poll. Um and oh. yes, I did hear the story. Okay. Great. All right. Uh Zacho is Bacco at racing. Ampro Yamaha XC two G N C C ride. Uh what the hell? Zacho, what are you doing? Like, you got this cush Husky ambassador thing. You're going on dealer rides. You're doing some enduros. You're doing some moto. You're helping out Jelly Bean Chambers. Life is good. And now you're going into the woods in XC2? What's wrong with you? Um, nothing, actually. Doing pretty good about it. <laughs> um, why Why did you yeah. want to do this? Uh, I mean, it's just been always been one of my ambitions, right? It's one of the ones you've always hated on, but like I thought by doing Blue Crew, I could maybe win you over. So it was a little bit to satisfy you as well. <laughs> okay, all right, good, good to know. Uh, this is it's, no, listen for real though. Like, this is hard. This is these guys haul ass. I don't have to tell you that. Everybody knows that. Um, what, what was it? Did they come to you? Did you were you missing the adrenaline of racing? Like uh, your back got better. Why did you want to do this? Yeah, I mean, obviously my back's much better than when I had to pull the plug on things. Um, uh, they were looking for someone. Um, Ziggy from Factory Connection is actually the guy who really was kind of the driving force in hooking it up, I would say, um, between Randy and I. And then, um, yeah, just kind of all come together um, on my terms, and everything seemed to be what I was looking for. Um, I never felt done or like I was finished with, you know, with my career, with the way things went at the end. Um, mm -hmm. And it just felt like the right thing to do. I mean, that's what we're always trying to do, right, is make the right decision um, for ourselves and our family um, at the time and even what feels like long term. Um, so that was that was my what I felt Brittany and I came to was, was our best decision. Hmm. You know, a lot of motocrossers may want to do this and not understand what they're getting into. Zacho is not one of those guys. Yeah. Zacho, you absolutely know these guys haul ass, right? What's your expectations? Um, I don't know that I have expectations. Um, I really would like to just be in the hunt um, in the beginning of the season and just kind of see what happens. Um, I know, like, fitness-wise, I'm in a decent spot right now. I can be in a really good spot as long as everything goes good from now until the first race um i have like three i think three sprint enduros before the first round of the gncc a couple opportunities to race here in florida and like locally um to just to get some race hours in on the 250 and i feel like i can you know put it up up on the podium maybe that that would be the goal um and just try to see where where it goes you know there's a lot of learning to be done um mainly for the for the middle portion of the season when things get a little rocky and a little bit more, let's say off roady um, than some of the, the stuff in the beginning of the season really kind of, I feel like f favors my weaknesses or my um, inexperience. So I think there's, you know, there's going to be some different portions of the season. Like in the beginning, it's going to be getting started and getting off to, mm -hmm. you know, getting, getting in there healthy, getting off to some good races and, um, getting some good results and then you know a lot of learning to do there in the middle portion of the season and um yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to the whole thing now. you had the kush ambassador job kush life what, how much are you making what are we what are we making here Is, i'm not i'm not a kush life guy though you know this like wow well, yeah you slept in a the, tent in russia the, I know. that's true <laughs> you love the tent story like come on but but you, it's, this is so much are you making a lot of money is this why we're doing this no like, i mean it, it, it's you had such a good thing going. A little bit of money. I mean, um, it's it's good money. I'm I'm happy with all of that. It's more than I ever imagined I would make racing off road. Um, wow. But I'm I'm happy to be, you know, in a position to be able to continue my Jeez. career and um, hopefully be in this Yamaha game for a long time. Well, uh, welcome to Blue Crew. Your life's about to change, but um, it's, it's a lot of work. It's funny because I I used to work for Larry Rossler, being a sh shipper when he owned Stroker and. I ask him, I go, what's a good age for off-road guys? He's like, dude, early to mid-30s is like peak off-road years. Yeah. He's like, that's when I was at my best. Right. Um, you're calmer in your life. And he's like, dude, and you don't need to be so uh, gnarly as like a moto guy. 
So you transition yourself? Yeah. And, and he's yeah. like, yeah, those years are really good. Uh, Zacho, your choice for XC2, not XC1, the team's choice. Like what what, what, what came into that for that class? Um, that was mostly, I mean, agreed on. Like that was, for me, there's no way I'm going to step in at the deepest end, right? Like even stepping into XC2 is a big ask. I feel like, like I said, everything needs to go right over this little off-season period I've got here. Um to in order to be even competitive in that so um you know there's a lot of ins and outs and nicks and knacks that i don't know mm -hmm. um and then i'm only going to learn by going racing so for me it was just like look guys that's not realistic that you know you would expect me to go and race the, the best of the best that's like asking those guys to race 450 supercross right it's like it's not going to happen um so for well, me, i think it was Stu just, could do su mm -hmm. 450 supercross you think so? Yeah, I think Stu could air. <laughs> Stu would air it out. Probably learn that Ghost up, right? ride it. Do the Deegan. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, just um, learning the track, yep. learning learning the lay of the lay of the land, how things go, and um, strategy, and all the things that are behind you know doing good or being good at this. Um, I just felt like there was a lot for me to unpack to just step in at the deep end. Um, even though I'm I'm liking the six foot in, not not the eight eight foot in, but. Um, still going to be a, a big ask for me. Yeah, well, Zach Osborne on the show, brought to you by Renthal, Renthal.com. Please check him out. Uh, more championships and all the other brands combined. Um, you're, sticking, you're sticking in fly racing, right? Yep, sticking in fly racing. Um, Long-standing relationship there for me. That was a, a really big piece of things coming together um, on my side. So they were able to make it happen, and that was uh, really cool for me and, and for fly too, I think. Um, so you're going to ride for Randy Hawkins team there in Ampro Yamaha. They're based in South Carolina. Are you going to be based there? Or are you going to stay in Florida? No, I'm going to stay in Florida. Um, we're going to get a motor home. And, um, once the new baby gets a little bit older and, um, things settle down for the kids a little bit for school in the summer, we're going to travel some and do some riding up in South Carolina and, um, even, you know, a little bit further North for, like I said, some of the rock races and whatnot that I need to, to figure out. And then, um, also just kind of some sightseeing with the kids you know this this schedule allows for a lot more not downtime but just time where you're mm -hmm. it, it's it kind of feels more like what i had in europe where you know you would race on the weekends ride a little during the week and um you know we're going to travel mostly by, by motorhome so we'll, we'll do some sightseeing and you know just make some more memories and some more experiences with the kids i just this is gonna be a lot of work. He was making good money with ambassador, <laughs> being an ambassador. He was Here, crushing it. I'm sure. Here's my thing, Zach. How does your training differ, like, and two parter, I guess. How's your training different from Moto? And then, are these places that the GNCC races? It's something that where you can go and kind of ride the same terrain in those areas. Is that something you want to do, or can you do? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna try to simulate that stuff as much as possible. Um, Factory Connection's super committed to. Uh, what I'm doing and they want to make, you know, make it as good as possible. So for me, I'll, you know, have the, op the tools and the opportunities to have the right stuff and the right, right setups and everything. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot to it. A lot of it's kind of local ish to where I'm from in Virginia. Um, so I get to spend a little bit more time up there and, um, yeah, I mean, just enjoy racing and enjoy the whole, the whole experience again. Are what, you are, are you, you like are you bored? Well, no. you just bored? Like <laughs> No. <laughs> are you combining a moto track with some off road loops? How what are you doing? Like you riding right three now, hours? Are you doing thirty minutes? What are you what are you how are you riding? Yeah, back to your question. Um uh, yeah, screw right you, Steve. Now, <laughs> it's just it doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense. You're to not me. a racer, he's a racer. I like, am it's a racer, him. I just race world vets. <laughs> He won four. He won four Quebec titles, dude. <laughs> Quebec, <laughs> Manitoba. Nice, <laughs> asshole. I missed a fifth by two points too. Uh, he, he won four Nova Scotia titles. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, um, go ahead. But yeah, so back to the training. Like, uh, obviously, I've never really worked on any like mid zone, like three, four, uh, like what I would say, 150 to 170 heart rate stuff. Okay. So a lot of my training is based around that um, on the bicycle, whereas before it was mostly, well, it was pretty much all low-end stuff, like 120 to 135 or even lower than that. Um, but for me, like my heart rate's a lot lower um, when I'm riding in the woods. Obviously, it's going to go up whenever I race. 
uh, somewhat from, from just the practice tracks and stuff that I'm riding. But, um, that's been the biggest thing for me, which it's cool because like, I've never ever worked on that stuff. And, um, it's just something completely new in training as well. Not only the riding and everything, but the training is, is different too. So, um, right now I've been riding a ton at Croom, which is like, the local spot a local spot in florida we all know uh, where Croom is exactly well okay yeah. well maybe all your listeners don't see right. there's other people in the world than you okay right okay calm down listen yeah. do you have 800 dollars or not um do you uh what about caleb doesn't caleb has a has a facility can you go can or is he is he ktm he's the enemy he's ktm only so okay. um right. i right. can't go there obviously i'm good buddies with caleb i know him well and but i understand business yeah, yeah. too you know yeah, yeah for sure. right okay i didn't know that um Zach Osborne on show brought to you by Renthal. Going XC2 racing. It's a lot of work. Dude, those guys are gnarly. <laughs> they are. I rode with some of them last week, and they're gnarly. Yeah, you took some of these guys out in the high des? I mean, I, I, I didn't know a couple of the guys. I knew most of them. Yeah. But even the guys that I didn't really know or heard of are gnarly. <laughs> Dude. Gnarly, too. Yeah, and Zacho, like, he... Think about it. Zacho got paid all this money to go to these dealer rides and just get all the guys blowing him about all his titles and his wins, and you know, and like that's the cush life. That's what you want to do. You don't want to jump in the woods, even though uh, if you're. I mean, look, a, a Yamaha. I would probably do anything yeah. to race a Yamaha. Yeah, for, I'm fortunate that I get one. But I know. think it's too like it, it's it's kind of like our moto scene. You think XC2, XC1, but XC2 is like our 250 class here. Yeah, it's they're gnarly. just gnarly. Yeah. they're just still gnarly. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Side did the uh, Iron Man one. Maybe you can call him for some tips. Um, you've done GNCC before, right, Sacco? Yep. You've yep. done some. Yep. Um, have you have, have you done any well with them before? I don't, what were your results? What yeah. Did you do them? Um, I got four podiums in 2013. Uh, three podiums in 2013. I only did three races. Yep. Um, and then obviously I did the six days. I think I was yep. sixth overall um, in in the E1 class, which is the 250 class. Uh, in 2013 in Sardinia, and we got second overall as a team. And then in Argentina, my bike stopped on the first day in the second test, so we got second as a team, but not any part because of me. Um, I was out before it even really started. So, um, yeah, and then obviously I did the one race in 20 where it was a complete silt pit, and I was terrible. But, um, I mean, there was a little bit different focus at that time. Well, I was uh, I was saying that uh, you know once you stopped doing that off road stuff and focused on moto is when you started winning. I was using that line for a long time. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm well aware of this line. So Shorty was over last week. You all right, Zach? Your, your phone's no, you, off. You, What's going on with your phone? My phone? Yeah. yeah. It's clicking. You on Sorry, headphones or something? I am on headphones. Is it wig? Yeah, yeah it's, it's all, wigging out. It's a wigging out, dude. Um, good so, now. Uh, yeah, it's good. Zach, uh, Shorty was over the other day, uh, the great Andrew Short, and he stopped rally racing, right? And I'm like, well, what about GNCC? He's like, no. No, I don't, you know, like, no. Shorty, Too much like moto for him. Uh, he just, he's just like, those guys are gnarly. And Zacho knows that, and any motocrosser that does this stuff knows how fast those guys go in the woods. And yep. it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see. The, the, do you get 16? Can you be 16 again? What, what, what? Um, one sixteen. Okay, all right, fair enough. It's crazy. I yeah, saw Shorty I at the Caselli ride. Yep, ride day. Um, Did he mention he came by here? No. Oh. But we talked. I'm like, hey, you know, because little man is riding moto, and yeah. he's like, oh god, he likes moto. I'm, I don't want to ride moto. I'm like, do you guys should come out here and ride some desert. He's like, Kiefer, you're not riding what I want to ride. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he's like, you just want to ride moto all the time. He's like, do you want to ride something like this? And he goes in his van, rips out like an eight-gallon gas tank. Are you going to go with me and do this? I go, nope, not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> not doing eight-gallon gas tank yeah. rides. Right. I'm, I'm envious of Shorty's Dakar career, though, man. Dude's a bad dude. Yeah. He was always one of my like top like idols growing up. It was him and Brownie for me. That, those were the benchmark guys. <sighs> yeah. Brownie. Yeah, we're having Brownie on next after you to talk mostly He's about – legend. Talk mostly about how he beat Chris all summer and, and every, the World Vets and everything. So, uh, Go ahead, Andrew. Or Eric. Oh, hey, Zach. Hey, this is Eric Phipps from Works Connection. Uh, I didn't yeah, have a question, but uh, about three, four years ago, you came up to the shop. We did a live pulp show at yeah. the shop. And I just wanted to thank you again for doing that. But personally, uh, we're a sponsor of the, the Yamaha team you signed with, and I'm just excited to see you go out and, and tear it up, and it's something new, and it's going to be exciting. I mean, I'm, Thank you, man. I'm anxious I to, to watch it and see how it all shakes down. The, 
Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, obviously, I know it's a big challenge, and I see this stated no less than ten times in this twenty minutes. Um, well, your phone, your phone, your phone's buzzing. He doesn't now. have eight hundred dollars for his phone. That's no, for sure. yeah, your phone's buzzing now. Now it's clicking. All right, how about now? That's good. That's good. Okay, I'm sorry, my headphones must be messed up. Okay, so I have a um, question. What, yeah. XC2, do they start right behind the XC1? I, I know people are groaning right now at the radios. Like, when <laughs> does XC2 behind. go out there? A minute behind. A minute behind all the 450 guys. Yes. Yes. Same length race, though? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you're not on adjusted time, right? So your overall is your overall, correct? Correct. So, like, if you say the XC1 winner had a time of three hours and you had a time of three hours, you won. Or you you tied, whatever. Oh. So you fin- if you finish physically... Fourth overall, you still could win the overall. Well, if you finish physically fourth on the track, you could win the overall. Right. Yes. Okay, got right. it. Right. Okay. So Zach Osborne claimed tonight he's going to win the overall XC1 <laughs> racing tonight on the show. Has any XC2 <laughs> rider yes, won the overall? they have. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. Yes, they have. No. Caleb has. I'm positive Caleb did a few times. No, Caleb won from the front row on a 150, but he's never won. No one's ever won from the second row. Okay. Just because it's too hard to pass and all that, probably. Yeah, I think we need to check uh, on that. A, okay. I think we need to check on that. I think that's happening. There's got to be somebody out there listening right now that can call in and tell us. Well, I'm sure. I mean, if anybody knows, Steve knows. I mean, fuck, he's an epitome of an off-road guy. Like. Uh, excuse me, sir. I have a GNCC <laughs> plaque on the wall out here somewhere. Uh, industry class. Yeah, somewhere. Fifth, uh, he, fifth. Can't, he has his freaking ring on the desk. Can't even find a damn ring. So <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, so... That's what I'm. So, are you when you do your moto, Zach? Are you doing longer hour, hour and a half? Or I know you're not doing three hours, right? No, not yet. I mean, I, I plan to do some three hours. Like, I need to feel those feelings right before the season starts. Um, on Wednesday this week, I'm going to do two hours um, just by myself in the woods with my mechanic and see how that goes. Um, a lot of it, you know, is nutrition stuff, hydration stuff. There's just a lot to learn. So I'm trying to kind of stretch myself as much as I can um, during practice. And um, right now it's just like, it's been just like thirties and forties and some hours, but um, Wednesday I'm going to do, do two hours. Um, we got this sick little, there was a FTR, which is Florida trail riders enduro a couple, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month and a half ago now at, at Kroom. And there's um, some tests left over and there's one that's like, seven minutes long it's super gnarly it's kind of single tracky i would say um and just super rough so it'll be a good little test for me to get things going and uh you know see where i'm at fitness wise i mean i know that i'm not at three hours yet but um if i can hammer a good two hours and i still got you know basically the better part of 10 weeks until the first race um i think i'll be in a decent spot and well, you guys are on fx's not f's correct um, yeah, so we have the option, uh, but right now I'm riding a 450 uh, FX. Okay. How is I mean, I'm surprised. I can't Steve find my I, plaque, but it's around here somewhere. That's how important off road is. Industry too. class, right. fifth overall on a KTM 125. Hmm. Yeah. Dang. Fifth. Fifth. So maybe I need your tips. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank I a, you. <laughs> I have a plaque. Uh, Steve didn't talk about this, which I'm surprised because it's a Yamaha oh. question. Uh, how's your bike? What's it like? Is there. I mean, it's it's great. I, mean, I rode the FX with. Did uh, you even get to ride a 250 yet? Have you been on the 250? Yeah, I've ridden the 250. Um, we're supposed to have. We're gonna have a big test next week, um, as long as the weather holds out, and then I'll get like you know all my 250 practice material. Then, um, but if not, it'll be right after Christmas. Uh, but I'm really enjoying the 450. Man, the thing's so fast. Like you always think it's fast and you know whatnot, but it is fast. Like mine's just a a stock bike with a pipe and a GYTR head, but man, the thing rips, um, turns so good. And it's just been, you know, a little bit of a fresh, fun change for me to, to ride something different. I've been on Husky for eight years now and, um, to change it up to the Yamaha was a, a big change, but also, uh, I've really enjoyed it. I'm enjoying the bike. We haven't really made many changes. Um, and yeah, um, I'm having a good time. Uh, Zach Osborne on the show. Brought to you by Renthal. Do you see, like, obviously, look, this is way in the future, but you think you'd race another moto national ever? Like, do you think you'd step in and do something again moto-wise? I mean, I had the the opportunity last year with Star um, before I took the Husky Ambassador job, and mm-hmm. that that piqued my interest. But it just I just didn't feel like I was quite ready or right um, 
as far as my health went to, to kind of fill in when I was, you know, still not quite a hundred percent. So, I mean, yeah, if something happened, you know, everything's going great with my GNCC season and Mm -hmm. we get to the three months off in the summer and, you know, they're like, Hey, you want to ride a national? Then I'm going to be like, yeah, probably, probably going to hit that up. You know, um, I would love to Mm -hmm. mark my words. That's going to happen. He's going to kill it. Right. (laughs) Cause right now he's doing possum. He's doing the possum thing. I don't know if I'm going to do good. I'm not having a lot of expectations. He'll do good. Yep. He'll, he'll win. And then he'll be like, and then star will call the, Hey, do you want to ride a couple of nationals? Yep. And there he goes. And there he goes. Yep. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I mean, I hope you're right. I, I, I just, I, I think you're in for, yeah, it's, you're going to hate life here shortly. <laughs> no, he just, Dude, did, he was bred for this shit. I like know he, he loves it. I get it. But he's had a Kush ambassador job. That's not Kush. That drives insane. Like guys like him. Doing what he has been doing. Look, he's a family yeah, guy. No, I'm a family here's guy. The but problem. Here's being the, around it and just hanging out is he, not here, fun. No, that's the problem with Zach is he's so OCD. He's so goal-driven that he's probably been sitting around bugging the shit out of his wife, yes. not knowing what to do, <laughs> yes. and this gives him something to do and a focus. And, and helps under- her out. Gets you know, right. hit, And I understand that, and I appreciate it. But come July, when he's in bumfuck Virginia, and the mosquitoes are eating him, and he's grabbing his bike out of a 10-foot rut. That's and, my home, Steve. That's you know, he's going to be like, what am I doing? I'm a multimillionaire. What the hell am I doing? He but, won't have to do it by himself because he'll have 10 people get, help yeah, him get it out. I guess. We get half of June, all of July, all of August, and half of September completely off. Right. No oh, I, yeah, I know. That is a, it is a cush schedule for sure. So. Hey, Zach, I didn't know nothing about Johnny Drawer. Yeah. Bad dude. 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 And he comes from, uh, what's that series called? J-Day. J-Day. And yeah. the dude's gnarly, and he's like a squirrel on the trail. Like, he'll see something, squirrel, and he'll just go do this. And we <laughs> don't know where the hell he went. And I went with Timmy, and we were all riding, and he started jumping this. I showed him some cliffs, some doubles, and and uh, he was like the only one off-road guy that was jumping this this huge double-double that was man-made. And Timmy's like, hey, we got to get this guy the hell out of here because I don't want him hurt. He's going to get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <We can. laughs> Yeah, he's a savage. I mean, there's there's tons of um, off road guys from New England right now that are killing it. Johnny, um, Josh Toth, uh, Ben Kelly. I mean, the who's who of off road right now. Those guys are uh, northeastern. Is um, mostly like you said, bred from that J Day series. Yeah. Well, awesome, Zacho. Thanks for calling in and sharing the news and telling our listeners what's up. Um, good luck with everything. I, I know I'll, I'm in a group text with you and. JT and Weed, so I'll probably just talk to you tomorrow. Um, but, uh, yeah, awesome. Good times. You're back. XC2 and Pro Yamaha. Yeah, congrats. That's really cool. Zach Osborne. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support, Steve. I know you love off-road, too. I, just, I, I think it's cool. I think it's awesome, but I just, like, what are you doing? Like, you're, you're, you're rich. You got it made. You got an ambassador <laughs> role. It's cake. You could have just rolled this <laughs> thing in for a few years, you know? That's could've. all. Could have. That's, that's, yeah, yep. could have. Right. Hey, uh. Congrats on the newborn too. And now, the, and now those Austrian guys are probably super mad at him. They're not going to hire him back. You know, the, like, yeah, that's a question. Did they offer ahead. you anything when you wanted to do this? Um, no, that that was not an opportunity that was presented to me. Um, something I did ask about, but mm-hmm. you know, I'm grateful to Husky and everything that we accomplished together and all the opportunities that they gave me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just um, it's time for me to move on. Is it a one year, two year? What do we got? Uh, it's two years. Two years. Yeah. All right. Well. Maybe I'll come to a GNCC this year. Oh, boy. Support my uh, guy, Zach. I mean, yeah, boy. one after Daytona is super easy. Yeah, that's true. Let's get you to race one, industry class. I've done two of them. So what? You've done two vet well, nationals. You're still doing yeah. You just said he's got a plaque. I got no, a he, plaque. Doesn't, he doesn't have he it anymore. He can't find Mark's, it. Mark's, Mark's moved it. It's around <laughs> Pookie here Pookie fucking burned it. No, <laughs> Zach. she didn't. It's a KTM. <laughs> you know who's on the plaque? Shane Watts is on the plaque. And he had to, she had to burn that for firewood for the ceiling caught you. And I was I was <laughs> hanging out with Shane Watts when Watsy. I when, when I got that fifth. Watsy, Watsy sleeping under were, his car. Yeah, Watsy and I were tight back <laughs> in the day. All right, Zacho, <laughs> thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Later. Appreciate All it. Right. Thank you, Zach Osborne, everybody. GNCC racer. I mean, we saw that coming after his. Oh, totally. Yeah, but yeah. I still don't know what he's doing. Like, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, you got you, those guys all ass. Yeah, they it's do. It's gnarly. Yeah, and so it's not something he's going to step into and. You know, excel at. I don't think right away. Takes some time to learn. He sounds like he's got a great attitude and all that. But it almost seemed like the blisters would be probably one of the worst parts of the whole. I mean, just to get your hands yeah. in tough. condition yeah. to yeah. tough that. T- yeah. Uh, Firepower parts. Speaking of Ken Rocks, and he rode a Firepower Honda there to victory in Paris Supercross. Firepower parts. The batteries, Chris, fantastic. 
490-2532. They've changed the part. They superseded the part number. Oh, good. So if you're a YZ guy, that Thank is you. the part number. Uh, our buddy uh, Alex Ray has got a firepower battery in his new Yamaha. Wants to know if you're negative on that or – No, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. Okay, you are? Yeah. Because we're going to get into that later too. Oh, can't wait. Uh, I think he may call in. No way. Yep, he might. Swap moto. Uh, firepowerparts.com, batteries, uh, featherlight lithium batteries, uh, as well as chains made in Japan – firepowerparts.com please check them out really informative great website there thanks to those guys for coming on the show and uh, if you need a battery you need a chain uh, go to your local dealer check out the pricing that they have it's uh, it's super impressive also I want to thank the folks at OGO as well uh, power sport OGO power sports uh, email us using the contact form on pulpmex.com you're the one that told me it superseded right get your deal yeah yeah right yeah mm. oh here's an update from Talon Talon Br- brownie no brownie he forwarded my call twice, and then he okay. tried calling back, but it was just dead. So we'll we'll keep trying. Okay, <laughs> there it comes. He did confirm. <laughs> Come on, Brownie. He, no, he confirmed. <laughs> he confirmed. Uh, OGO Power Sports bringing you Mike Brown when he does come on, uh, whether it's the uh, layover bag or the 9800 that Kiefer checks for two nights on the road, uh, the rig <laughs> bag as well. OGO's got a bag that'll help you out. Backpacks are great too for traveling, and uh, laptop sleeves and pockets for all the chargers and everything else. OGO Power Sports, OGO.com. Please check them out for more. Thanks to those guys for uh, supporting us and bringing us Mike Brown here. Uh, I see your calls on the phone. Uh, we can go Dalton on one real quick. Dalton, what's up, man? What's your question for Kiefer? Uh, yes, sir. I got a question. Sure. Uh, early 2000s, Kawasaki had the shoulderless rims. What was their reason behind that, Kiefer? Uh, one was for they didn't want mud sticking to the rim. So I don't know if you have other – rims that you know you go ride some really deep wet track and then you have uh, mud stick to one side and all of a sudden your bike's shaking violently Um, which I came across last year I didn't know that if you have mud packed on one side of the rear rim because it has that dish in there it actually makes your front end shake violently in the air like it feels like your headset's gonna fall off and I pulled in thinking something was wrong with my front end when reality was it was just the mud packed on one side of the rim on the rear side. So that was the whole thing behind it and strength. They thought it was going to be stronger as well as keep mud off. So that was the purpose. Okay. Um, Well, how come they don't make them no more if it's to help keep mud and dirt off of them? Uh, Because they were the opposite of what they thought they were going to be. They weren't strong. (laughs) They weren't very strong rims. They they said they were for strength, and yes. I think they ended up they weren't that strong. Correct. Yeah. One of the things they talked about was, oh, it's stronger. It's strong, yeah. and then the, the mud, you know, repellent, yeah. and then uh, right. they were popping spokes left and right on those things. Ah, okay. Is why I asked is my brother rode for Team Green back in the day uh, when they had those, and I just remember him having those, mm-hmm. and I'm building a 1999 KX250, um, and I was going to try to put those original rims back on, but – now and I was just wanting to know what was the reason behind them versus a uh, ordinary rim. They looked cool, man. Like I really liked the way they looked. I thought it was different and cool. But yeah, even when I was testing for Dirt Rider magazine, we broke a couple of them just because of the strength issue. Okay. All right. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Well, hang on, Steve. I got one question for you. All right. Um, and then you can let me go. Um, where's Chad Watts, Ricky Carmichael's old factory Kawasaki mechanic? I think he's got a shop in North Carolina. Uh, he's on Facebook. I don't know anything. I haven't seen him forever. Uh, I was texting with him years ago, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't Still know called Watts Perfections, yeah, right? Yeah, is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. He's yeah. he's around, mm-hmm. yep, building bikes and fixing bikes in North Carolina. Well, it would be cool if you could get him on and just tell some old RC or old stories back in the day. Yeah, yeah, it would be. I, I know I tried for a while, and it didn't really work out. But I'll try. I'll, I'll, I think it's, it's better now. It's good, good, good point. I'll try yeah. again. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, y'all boys have a good night. Later. Thank you, man. All right, let's get to our next guest here. The gentleman uh, is a former 125 national champion, and he just spent the summer kicking Kiefer's ass all over America. <laughs> Welcoming Mike Brown to the show. What's up, Brownie? How are you? Good, and you all? We're good, man. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. Uh, Suck it, Brownie. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go, Brownie. Yeah, we have, dude. Give me time. Wow. It, the, I mean, honestly, the Loretta's thing was bad enough, Kiefer. I mean, it was Tennessee. We all expected Brownie to win. He's, you know, next level there. Jesus. But what we when he came out to Glen Helen, I mean, what happened? Nothing. You're looking at Brownie like it's Brownie. There's nothing to be said. Like a legend 
uh, yeah. national champion, still a badass. He's a freak of nature. So the, it is what it is. The, the two years earlier when you beat him. He wasn't riding. I even said that on a podium. He wasn't riding that much. Okay. He gets arm pump. Yeah. I had a strategy for Brownie this year. <laughs> okay. It did not work. <laughs> uh, so that was the only reason I even remotely, and it was a mud race. So, look, it, I'm happy that I did it, yeah. but I also know why I did it. it, it and there's some, no. There's some asterisks so, in Brownie, there. Brownie, you were a lot more prepared for this year? Uh, it was dry. I didn't get arm pump as bad, but no, I was a little bit, but just coming off of, um, Loretta's and I did a few races in Europe in between there and then I didn't ride very much, but I was more prepared than I was the year that, yeah, a little yeah. bit better. Okay. For All sure. right. A lot more. He's just not saying and that. And then mini yeah. O's Brownie went to mini O's racked up. Did you do a burnout after you won <laughs> Brownie and mini O's? Did you do a burnout? No, I didn't. No, okay. uh, no. <laughs> Because I, I saw certain people that. did, and I just was shaking my head at that. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it was good. Good week there. It was fun. It was nice are, weather and uh, it, rough tracks. Are we getting shit still for in these older classes? Are people freaking out? Or are we? Are uh, everyone to kind of calm down now? I don't know. I never get on there and read very much. You know, I'm with social media and looking at <laughs> stuff. But no, I do see it. It's bad. Like it's it's. It's bad and sad and everything else. I understand people like we shouldn't be in there. Like you're a former Supercross racer. I would say half the classes either did nationals. And for sure, I'd say all the classes, the guys in my class, rides pray 10 times more than I do a year now. So they think I ride every day. I train every day. I don't, I don't do that. I ride my bicycle and I go to the gym. That's about it. But and everybody gets so mad. They should be a pro class. I don't know. Bring a pro class. Well, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, but. like – so guys like Brown, like, look, I agree. There should be 40 fast X pros that, that, that have a class, but there isn't. There's not. There's right. not. No. Right. So, so, so just Mike Brown doesn't get to race a motorcycle. Like he can't enjoy himself. He right. just like, there's no class for him other than what he's in. Like, I don't, these fucking whiners, man, the complainers and whiners of the world. Uh, you'd think they'd, you know, understand that like, look, man, he's not breaking any rules. This is how it works. He qualified through the system. He's not getting in the back door. That's the class he's supposed to ride. So because you can't beat him, Mike Brown can't race? Is that That's the attitude? Like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? Like, I don't get – and also, by the way, breaking news, you're not getting a factory ride from this race. Right, we're old. Nobody's going to – if you beat Mike Brown or finish second, the coster's not calling you for a ride. This is all <laughs> people who are plumbers and carpenters. Yes. Like, I, I don't – I'll be in a 50-plus class at, uh, down there, and people will be asking me, and they're older than me, most of them, and I know, and I don't know names, but, hey, man, when are you quitting? Like, it's like, dude, I love racing motorcycles just like you. <laughs> yeah, like, when are you not, quitting? Like, I don't I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe I'll quit tomorrow, but, like, I, love, I still like ri riding and yeah. racing and the whole thing, being around it, but – it's kind of it's just sad, really. Like it's, I, I, I don't enjoy going racing. I it, do not go and enjoy racing one bit now, but just because I know people say stuff, I feel embarrassed out there racing the 50-plus class because people don't want me out there. Like I'm 50 years old. I should be able to race whatever class well, I want. But that, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Here, here's, here's, my, here's my point. We should be happy that guys like Mike Brown at his level still love to go do it, and we get to see him ride. I, I, I'm because with you. there's not very many of Mike Brown. There's how many guys that Mike Brown level are still racing and want to go do it? Two, right. three? Right, right. That's it. I just I don't get the hate, man. Again, it would be awesome if there was like an ex-pro class at Loretta's mm -hmm. with it'd be, 40. There'd be three dudes. No, I know. That's what I mean. Right. There's, yeah. there's not enough guys. So there's not enough guys, and Mike Brown still wants to enjoy racing his motorcycle and doesn't get – you know, a backdoor entry has to go through areas and qualify. You know, do the right every, what everyone has to do. Then what? What the fuck's yeah. the problem? Oh, here's another. Here's another caveat. Uh, Brownie showed up Loretta, the year I won Loretta's. He was an alternate because he signed up late, right. so there was no special treatment. He had to go <laughs> through the same shit everyone else had yeah. to go through, and he didn't get in. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Brownie, we just had Zacho on earlier, and you know he's got the XC2 ride now, right? Now you yeah, yeah. you did a lot of off road. You went to ISDE. I think you did some GNCCs. You maybe did some work stuff. There was a, a point in time, Brownie, where you were doing more off-road stuff and doing that. Last few years, you're sticking to moto, it looks like, from the outside. Did you not enjoy that stuff? Did you did you just always go back to your motocross roots? It seems like you have you went that way for a little bit. Yeah, no, I did like it. When I came from Europe uh, 2017 or 18, my last year over there, 
I was coming back. I wouldn't been racing. I'd have been. I was planning on being done racing, and then Kurt Nicole called me for the off road stuff for the works. Mm-hmm. So I went with KTM and did the work series for I don't know, probably did five years of that stuff, and I ended up winning that work series in nineteen or. or I can't even remember what year it was, 10, 9 or 10. But anyways, I, I, I enjoyed the off-road. It's more laid back. It was fun. I enjoyed the works races because Kiefer knows like you can run. It's half motocross, half off-road, half desert, yep. whatever you want to call it. But it was enjoyable. And I did a few. I didn't do the whole series of GNCC, but I did selected races each year with KTM or Husqvarna, which winter bike I was on. And, and then the, the Enduro Cross, I did that for yep. probably five years. But I never did a, a complete year of GNCC, which I, I enjoyed a lot, but I just never had the opportunity to really just do that. Um, so, but so it was more like just because people wanted you to do like, like you didn't you enjoyed it, but you didn't like dig it that much. Is that kind of where I'm at? You were just getting paid it's to do it. So, yeah. Stuff? yeah. I, I no, I did when I when I stopped racing. I was just I was yeah on my way out, and I didn't enjoy. Enduro cost is hard for me. Like, and all the trials guys came in and kind of took over, or you know, my side of the sport. I wasn't good as those guys, and I mean, I, they were they were better, and it was I wasn't a top kid in that no more. So I yep. stopped doing that, and then uh, then I went back home. I just did did my own thing there for a while, ran the track, and but I enjoyed the off road, but still, my heart was motocross mm-hmm. and stuff like supercross. It, it was in fun. It was laid back. It was it was a, it's a good time for sure, especially if you're older. Like Zach is me now. It's laid back. You can spend time with the family, go and race right. three hours and be done. Uh, Mike Brown on the show brought to you by OGO Power Sports. Uh, don't travel without it. Makes it, it makes it easier, that's for sure, for traveling. Uh, Brownie, like a lot of people are like, oh, Brownie, you're faster than ever now. A- and you are. You haul ass. I don't think you're faster than ever because you're a former national champion. But for real, Brownie, you seem better. Kiefer, are you with me? He seems better in the last few years than he was, say, four years ago or five like i think mike is a little like i think uh, maybe more prep or something but. no i just think you know mike's been at the baker's factory for a little bit and i think there were certain things implemented there that he had to pay attention to and he didn't get to ride as much you okay. know and now that you know i'm sure he's been there for has some seniority he can kind of do the exact thing that alden wants him to do but maybe have some freedom as well for himself and mm-hmm. he gets to go ride and race his dirt bike when he when he can so so so, so my question for you mike is like like how far off are you? Like obviously your endurance maybe wasn't where it once was. It's probably not far off though. How far off are you of your like peak speed? Are you or do you feel like super slow or do you still in your mind be like, dude, I'm not far off at, at 50 years old. <laughs> no, I, that's what I was when I was at the vet race in England this year with Villapoto and we're on the 252 trucks and I can always remember when I was a kid, even riding for pro circuit on the 250 West Coast. I wasn't a good 250 rider because I was scared of them, and mm-hmm. it was fast. I would never rode them much. Uh-huh. And then when I get to over the Fox Hills, we're on the, I don't know, it was a, what, what your model, 02, 03, whatever it is, the bikes you're riding, and they're fast. They're good bikes, and we're riding them. as as feel like I'm going wide open on the bike. And it's like, man, I can't remember doing that back when I was <laughs> 30 years old. There's no way. I feel like I'm, I would go faster now. Yeah. For sure, I'd be going on the 250 faster now than I would have. 15, 20 years, 20 years How ago. How funny is that? <laughs> yeah, just riding uh, newer technology, and you have something faster, right? Yes. Well, he's riding yeah. 450s or yeah. 350s, right? I think yeah. the 450 thing is a thing. You yeah. ride the 450, the torque, the power, and then you get back to a 250, and it feels like going from a 250 to a 125, it's a difference. Yeah. So I think that that's it for sure. But it's, yeah, it's crazy to realize, like, I'm over there at Fox Hills, and it, it's just fast. It's a fast track, hard pack, and you're wide open thinking, man, I can't go any faster. I need a, you need more bike, but... I just can remember the days I could never do that before. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Because, yeah, Villapoto was like, dude, I had nothing for Brownie. Oh, he said that. He's like, <laughs> nothing for Brownie. Brownie's the guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, uh, Mike, also at the World Vets, and I don't know the mini O's, you've been riding the 350 more than a 450. You, you is, that, yeah. is that your bike of choice? Is it, You enjoy that 350? It's fun. I do enjoy it more. The 450 is a good bike. I, at the World Vet, I rode the, the new 450s. Oh, did you? Oh, I thought, I, thought you I, kicked, did I thought you kicked Chris's ass on the 350. Does that Loretta's. <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry. Get your but ass no, kicked. Loretta's yeah. and many others. I did ride the 350. It's fun. I enjoy it. It's, I enjoy it. Like the 450, and everybody knows they're a handful, and if you – and I feel like at my my riding ability now that I don't ride so much, I do mm-hmm. train, like I said, and do that. But I, I feel safer on a 350 than a 450. 
and I think I have more fun on it just because I can ride it harder and the way I like to ride, like rev the bike yeah, and yeah. get through the bumps and the corners and all that. It's it's really nice. His bike at Loretta's sounded really good. Like yeah. um, Andrew built that motor, yes, Brown? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. and it was sounded really healthy. So I get Andrew, a lot of questions. Andrew, of pe- Andrew, Andrew Langston. Oh, Andrew, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. And people always ask me, hey, what's the difference between like a built 350 and just say you're like a production 450 that you rode at Glen Helen? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's for sure not as torquey, but I think it's, for me, it is the bumps in the corners. Getting in and out of the corners is better for me. That's where I notice my biggest, especially the red is when it's tight and it's too really tight for a 450. The, I can turn, I can charge into the corners a little bit more aggressive than I can on a 450. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, Helen, I, 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 for sure, I think a 450 there. And even it was on the verge, don't, I, I, I did good at mini on the, the 350, but I think I could have probably rode a little better if I was on that 450, but I didn't have as much fun if I wouldn't have as much fun on a 450 as I did the 350 there. I heard the Gainesville track's a lot better than it used to be in your day. Brownie, I've heard that. That, 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 yeah, this year it was rough because it stayed overcast all week and, yep. it, and it stayed really soft and it got bumpy. It was like almost a mini uh, Loretta's for sure. It was last year I was there and it was more hard packed. This year stayed soft, mm-hmm. got more bumps, and it was it was. When I watched Deegan and race the pro class at the end of the day, it was like a five o'clock race, and it was bad. It was rough. I heard it looked like I watched some on on Racer TV. It looked like there was just chop everywhere in the in the ruts and everything. Everything the whole track was. I went out probably four races, five races before that, and it was rough. But when them guys were out there, it was it looked miserable. It was it was a technical track. It was good for them kids to be riding though. Like it was it was good to see. Uh, so we all know you're working with uh, Baker's Factory there, working on the 250 side, helping those guys out. You've been doing that for a number mm-hmm. of years. How's that going? How's it How's it working out? Good, good this year. It's uh, slimmed down a lot on my side. I still have four four riders and four to five three to four just depends on who's in west coast or who's there mm-hmm. this good tom's there now the new tom vial he's he's overriding and he's doing really good for a month and a half he's been here and he's not far off the pace of the guys i mean he's there rj's still he's he's the top guy on the 250 there and mm-hmm. you know in some days he's not really far off he's pretty close actually he is and in, in the whoops like everybody oh, he's going to heat the whoops He's actually really good in the whoops. He's got good technique. He's super smooth. I mean, I, everybody's impressed. Everybody sees him. He's impressed, impressive for right now. So I'm not going to say he's going to win the Supercross, right. but he's 90% better than I what, ever thought he would be. So I'm looking oh. forward to seeing – and he's strong. Like, he's a worker. He's He doesn't say much. He gets his head down and, and does the laps, does the whatever it says, and he's he's doing good. I'm impressed with the, the kid for sure. Well, if Brownie says that, then – that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, you know that he <laughs> that he is impressed. Yeah. He, uh, he's riding good. So it's, and the other guys, Jalik, he's picked it up. You know, everybody's he's struggled the last few years in the whoops, and, and from day one, starting boot camp a few weeks ago is even from first day, um, he's so much better than he was last year. Mm-hmm. He's committed in the whoops. He's and you know, that's been his struggle, and I think this year he's going to have to prove himself, and I think that's that's going to be a big thing for him the way he's riding now, and if he can carry that over to the supercross races and hitting the whoops where he's going right now it's that'll be a big changer for him and that's what he lacks because on the track jaleek i would he's probably one of the best corner guys i've ever seen on a motorcycle like and supercross like he can corner and and, and you guys don't see that as much because at a supercross race where he's not riding really good in the, in the whoops he just rides the rest of the track good and, yeah. Kiefer, and you know how that is if yeah. you don't hit the whoops then you're stressed and you can't do nothing but here he's getting to the whoops better now and the corner speed and everything else he's just carrying around the track is it's I, pretty amazing what he can do if he can just keep his head down and get through that do I, that there. I wrote that this year. I'm like, I don't look look, he doesn't need to like crush the whoops. Like I get it, that's Christian Craig and that's a that's a mm. that's a one on one thing. But he yeah. was so bad. I'm like, how is a guy on a factory motorcycle mm. with all the people standing around yeah. to set up the bike yep. and whoop pads all day long and all these yep. teacher how can you be like he's in the lower thirty percent of riders in the whoops, right? It's that bad. For sure. And I could For never sure. understand that. Like he couldn't even hold his own in whoops. And I'm like, I don't get that. I'm not saying he needs to be a Christian Craig, but it, it blew my mind, Brownie, that he couldn't like just be as just be average in the whoops. 
you know? No, and we work and we work yeah. after before we go and we and it's like you can you can only tell some people so much what you got the right technique, but you're not gonna get hold of throttle, you know, you almost need like an R C setup on it where you can just like twist the throttle for him because <laughs> as soon as he looks at that first loop, the throttle goes the wrong way. And <laughs> but now he's got that dialed in a little better. Yep. It's helping but like yeah, it's hard to say, Oh man, hit the whoops. I heard somebody say the other day they were somewhere and it's like Hit the whoops, close your eyes, hit the whoops wide open in second gear. And they were doing that. Today, and that's like, Probably A Ray. <laughs> I never do that. And I've seen the videos of it, and I, there's no way you can close your eyes and hit the whoops second no. gear wide open. <laughs> oh, Maybe no. you can, but I don't know. Like, but it's it'll be good. I think it, uh, everybody's good. excited to to see what's going on here because it's they, they're doing a lot better than they have been for sure. Him, good. Max. Good to hear. Uh, OGO Power Sports bringing you Mike Brown on the on the show. Mini O's uh, winner. Um, we Weege and I were kicking around story ideas about a month ago, Brownie, about for Racer X Online and for Racer X Magazine, yeah. and and we were talking about the Rockstar Energy team that you were on with Hamlin and Mills and J Law, and, you. <laughs> and we were like, dude, what if we could get oh my God. like an oral history of that team? First of all, good luck getting a hold of any of those guys outside of Brownie, but. Mike, what was the, what was the biggest like time that you were shaking your head? I just was there one moment or two where you were like, "What the hell did I get myself into?" Uh, for sure, you know what? Too Jeff and Bill, Bill's Popper, probably the nicest people ever, and I felt bad for them because I think they got kind of thrown in on the deep end on that whole thing, and you know it all sounded like it was going to be good and great, and then he got in and. It was more than what they thought, and they didn't get the engines running. A lot of problems with the engines mm-hmm. breaking, and yeah, the bike wasn't very good to start with, anyways. Yeah, no, yeah. no, and I guess the best part of the year is being around J Law. I think Ryan Mills. That was that was the entertainment. It wasn't a bike so much as the, <laughs> as the entertainment from them guys. Like it was always an ever dull moment for sure with those, but. Brownie yeah, must have just was, been like, "What the hell did, am I doing?" Did they ever go train with you at all? Did they ever go do anything with you? Never, never seen. Uh, no, I said back to you, but I was in and never. I don't think I rode none of the guys. <laughs> just, just <laughs> never seen. Happen. Just show up and there's dudes in the semi. Right, right. right. There, yeah, Hamlin would show up, but that was. I think that was just me and him and J Law was fighting with cold grass, so it was <laughs> somewhere for sure. Just, but, uh, we and I are like Hamlin, J Law, Mills, Mike Brown. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, we got these guys, but we got we got to have one guy that shows up. Mike Brown will show up. Let's just hire him. <laughs> I feel like Sean would ride. I feel like Sean yeah, would Sean, ride. He would. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, I did. I, I would meet him like a Lapagus, and yeah. he's the really only one I rode with much. And now Sean was good for it. He was. He did try hard. That's for sure. Good stuff. Uh, any more questions for Mike Brown? I don't got any questions for this guy. No. No. Here's the thing. I here's the thing. I will say. Uh, Brownie, what? Brownie, were you surprised uh, at Kiefer's lack of competitiveness at World Vets? <laughs> here we go. Were you? No, be honest. It's Glenn Helen. We all know he holds no, ass for there. Sure. Yeah. I mean, not that his lack of competitive, but I went there with more pressure, feeling nervous than yep. any race probably ever done in my life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And then He's this. Going there with Kiefer. And then <laughs> and then he just. He just shits the bed. I did. Sh- I was closer to him at Glen Helen. I was at Loretta's. <laughs> okay, so great yeah, job, yeah, Brownie. <laughs> you want to hear what I tried to do? Here's me. Here was my here was my theory, Brownie. And I didn't tell you this, by the way. <laughs> so I know you, right? We go back. I know you have problem with arm pump. So I go, okay. Here's my plan. <laughs> my plan is it's a twenty plus one moto. At some point, I know Brownie's gonna get arm pump. So I need to be at least up near him, near the start, and just pressure him a little to make his arms blow up. And mm-hmm. then I'm just gonna sit back and just and just. I'll I'll ride it out and I'll possum. I'll be able to, yeah I'll play possum I'll be able to get you on the end because you got blown up arms well I can't see the son of a bitch yeah. after the first lap right he's gone yeah yeah so I'm like okay he's it's gonna it's gonna happen like he's gonna get arm pump at some point nope yeah my plan went to shit yeah Brownie was impressive the opening laps both motos yeah yeah so yeah. son of a bitch Brownie did you see What's the uh, is that new bike. <laughs> Brownie, did you see the alien butt patch that he Chris had? <laughs> yeah, I got it on my phone now. I had to, Carson sent it to me. I have my knee braces painted like that. <laughs> nice, nice. I yeah, like so people don't know, like at Loretta's, uh, here's what, oh, I didn't tell you this too. So Carson or someone, Andy talked to, uh, 
the brownie before the race. And they said, hey, man, Kiefer's going to come for you. And Brownie goes, if Kiefer beats me, I'm fucking quitting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at Loretta's, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, okay, so on the podium, I go, hey, man, my goal is to, to retire Brownie here. I got to beat him one moto so he's quits, right? right? right. And <laughs> I go, but I can't. The son of a bitch is like an alien. I don't know. Someone's living inside this dude. All someone, the guys in the 50 plus would be happy if he, yeah. quit. you know, they're someone, all pulling for you. Someone yeah. asked me, do you think he can be? I'm like, not at Loretta. No. He's not. Chris is not beating. <laughs> only reason why I won that year because his ass was an alternate. Right, right. That's the only reason. Right, right. But, but right. Glenn Helen, I thought you'd be, you'd be, if he beat you, fine, but I thought you'd be closer. Look it. Give me some credit. First moto, I wasn't that far back. Eh. It's five no. seconds, six seconds. Eh. That's not bad. Uh, I wasn't. The second yeah. moto, I, I can't say anything about right, second moto. Right. I, okay. I screwed the pooch on right. that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Look at you don't think Brownie, being old as he is, would have sprint speed. The yeah, dude's got sprint he did. speed. He did. Yeah, he had sprint speed. And then what happens is I see the guy across the track, and then he stays the same as me for the rest of the race. Mm -hmm. Like, he knows what he's doing, right? It's not like a guy's never rode a dirt bike in his life. Uh, nope. So it's, yeah, it's it pisses me off. <laughs> Uh, awesome, Brownie. I'm calling, Kiefer, I'm calling Kiefer during the week. Hey, man, what kind of pipe should I be using and asking him tips? Should tell him there's some piece of shit pipes. What <laughs> yeah, I should have yeah, said. Exactly what you should have done. <laughs> yeah, 100. It is. It is cool to see. Like I'm. I'm 46 now. Brownie, what you 50? 51? Mm -hmm. Uh, he. I went to Alden's last December. Yep. And did a a few days of training with the guys and just see what they do. You know. Can you imagine people right now listening, you're 50 years old and you got to get up and train with the young kids every single day and then go to the track and do work and help them. And this guy is doing it every single day, right? Yeah, so it no, takes yeah. a special type of person. And not only that is he's a past champion and he still wants to be around it. Yeah. That's fucking yeah. rare. Yeah. Like it's super rare. I'm with you. And this is why I'm a fan of him because even though I hate him, I love him because this is what he's built like. like Let's not forget, Brownie <laughs> did quit like 92 Right, Brownie? Mm. He went dirt track racing for like six months. Yep. Worked in a motorcycle shop. Yep. For dirt track racing? Yeah, roundy round. Like he did? Go -kart. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Yeah, I did that go-karts. I started in go-karts into the late model dirt, and then, yeah, I did that for all of 93 almost. What did you do? Yeah, go work at gyms? Stuff. Yeah. You work at yeah, gyms? Yeah, you work at the gyms. Oh, be shit. Five or six months. He quit. Yeah. He, he, Mitch Mitch let him go. He was number 54, peak, pro, peak team. Mitch let him go. Yeah. He He quit. <laughs> He was out of the sport, and then he's like, ah, I guess I'll try again. And then there's a whole fucking yeah. 30 years later. Yeah, right. I got a mountain bike. I won a Scott mountain bike probably back in 89 when I did the amateur supercrosses here in Florida. Uh -huh. And I won a Scott mountain bike, and it sit there in my dad's garage forever. And I started when I got lost Mitch's ride. I think I probably should start training if I'm ever going to do anything. So I got the mountain bike, got with the friends, started riding mountain bikes, got into road bikes. And then started racing again. I could that thing. I could tell a big difference in the riding now. So this uh, carried on from there. <laughs> wow, bicycling! I got in shape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How funny is that? Well, yeah, just a, like right, like yeah. Just, uh, Travis Preston quit. Right, won a lottery, got bikes. Yeah, like, th these fucking things. Happen. And I, I was around him when he was learning enduro cross. He would come up to the desert and ride at Ty Davis's mm -hmm. house and ride with Gary Sutherland and right. and yeah. you just see him ride different kinds of shit all the time. It was, yeah. it was cool. No, he's an alien. Yeah, he's an alien. Uh, Thanks, Brownie. Thanks for the time, man. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, guys. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. All right. That's Mike Brown, everybody. OGO Power Sports bringing you Brownie. What a guy. He is. He's a nice guy. Uh, Chris Kiefer brought to you by the folks at Decal Works. Oh. What? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Did you see the Decal Works in my – you haven't been in my garage? Uh, no, The guys I at Decal Works got me a whole graphic kit for my 23. Did you put it on? Well, no, because certain people took parts from my bike. Did you get it back yet? I just got all the stuff back. Because you got the seat back? I got everything back. The other guy brought back the other stuff. Did I get him a cover? What? Did I get a cover? You? Yeah. No, I got a cover. How? The, I d started this whole thing. I couldn't ride my bike because you had lent the, the parts oh, out to that's, people. Oh, that's why you couldn't ride your bike. Bullshit. This guy takes a bunch of stuff. The other guy takes a bunch of stuff. He took stuff too? Yeah. I didn't uh, take stuff. stuff. I was what offered we're stuff. Yeah. Stuff that we're doing? Or no. talking about? No. Different. Different. Yeah, oh, 23 so, stuff. Yeah. Bikes just in pieces. But anyway, it's still dirty by the way. No, it's ask. not. It's, it's dirty. Oh. It's stop not. It. It, I didn't say anything earlier, it's but not that dirty. bike it's it is not, not it's not dirty dirty, but it's not it's a brand new bike. You got one rider on that thing is point no, zero. No. That thing is, it has Glen Helen he, dirt on it. He is worst connection is fake news. It no. is clean. I believe Eric. Let's go look at it. I believe Eric. Let's go look at it. Yeah, on we a commercial will. break. No problem. Did you 
Uh, never mind. Decal works. <laughs> Pulpamex is the code to save. Decalmx.com. Proud Loud sponsor noises. of Kiefer Ink Testing as well. Yes. The guys Official graphic works. of Kiefer Ink Testing. Uh, they're officially licensed with all the OEMs. The expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. Sean there is uh, really, really great at Decal Works. And please check him out. If you need something, they'll, they'll custom make you graphics, including 2023 YZ450 stuff as well. And, uh, yep, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, talking about Decal Works. Yeah. I deal with Nick. Right there, and he's okay. an awesome guy. He well, I deal with Sean. Custom I deal with Sean. stand decals for us, so <laughs> I don't decal about works. Nick. Top. Oh, no, I'm just Nick's agreeing. The, it's Nick top is the designer. Yeah. Well, I deal with Sean. Okay. I'm just, a, <laughs> I'm kidding. just saying hi to <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Promo code PULPAMAX. It gets 20% so, yeah, off custom grab. Really well, you started, you started with me with the... He's mad uh, about the do, dirty do, bike, do, yeah. too. Do, yeah. do, do, buttons. Look at all these buttons. Do, do, do. What were you going to say before? Uh, I was going to say about Brownie. Like, yeah. He's such a different dude. Like He comes over the house... Hangs out, mellow, calm, and then at the vet dude. race, it's a vet race. He got in it with a dude, yelling at him yeah. after the race. Yeah. Just eat. Janky sent me a video. Chewing his ass. And so the guy didn't speak English. <laughs> and he was going to rip him off. And he was yelling at him. Body. He told Brownie, no comprehende. And Brownie told me that he I told, know what you're saying. I know you comprehende. <laughs> 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 he said the guy passed him. Brownie passed him. It fell over. The guy got Brad Brownie again. Brownie caught him again. And then he tried to take him out. And then he tried to take him up before yeah. the finish because it was the last lap, last turn or whatever. And Brownie's like, I know you comprehend me. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, all right, everybody. X-Brown goggles, tear-off segment. Let's do this. It's the x brand tear-off segment. 15-second rapid-fire Q&A. The lucid goggle, second to none. Aiden Kiefer, there's a rumor that Aiden Kiefer may be running the X Brown goggles. We're not sure yet. The Lucid <laughs> goggle, fantastic goggle. Official goggle of Eric Phipps. Absolutely. As well. Yep. Myself, of course. Uh, EKSbrand.com. Uh, Still haven't gotten EKS. any. We all know why. Stop Still it. Still haven't we gotten know any. Why. I'm we just trying why. to do a test no, on No, you're not. Yes, no, I am. No, you're not. Why not? You're taking it and giving it to your competitors. That's what you're doing. False. We We all know that. Uh, Pulp Show 22 is the code to save with XBrand, EKSBrand.com. Speaking of GNCC, Josh Strang, Ricky Russell, EKSBrand, guys. New team for Chiz. Ricky Russell. Chiz, XBrand. Chiz, can we say what he's on? He's on hip. Okay. He's leaving us. I think they have a goggle deal, so he's out. Dude. So leaving before Yamaha, this started, X. before this started, he yeah. called me. He's like, I, I, can you give me some advice? Like, I need your opinion. He talked to me about Suzuki or staying with Yamaha. Yeah. And originally... Well, dude, it was going to stay with Yamaha, but then obviously. I think it's so much work to do, stay on Yamaha. They support him, right? But he's got to get his bike to the truck. He's yeah. for the races. He's got to figure out his deals. Mm -hmm. Like you know, make more money that way, though. I, I think so, but it's a lot of work. Yeah, uh, it's the whole thing. Like, uh, who was just talking about it as a privateer? Like, I, I said, I said, do the Starling thing, and they're like, dude, oh, Cade. Yeah, Cade's like, I could do the Starling thing or the car now thing. But it's so much time on the phone, so much emails, you know. And Chiz has so, done it for quite a few years, so he's yeah. probably, yeah. These questions are submitted by Corey Moser. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. Don't know. 30 mm -hmm. seconds on the clock. Reap it fire. Let's go, Marks. Reap. Steve, past Supercross and Motocross champs are sitting at a bar drinking beer. Which generation has bragging rights for having the most competition and whose championship was the most badass? Mm. Oh, that is a... That is a. That's actually one of the best questions I've ever heard. This. This week. is not Moser's question. There's, there's no got to be someone um, else. Well, dude, I feel like if you're Ricky and you beat Chad and James, mm -hmm. you know you didn't beat Jeremy, but, but what about Wardy, Stanton, John? All those years. Uh, well, if you and if you look at those titles, there was way more winners back then. It wasn't as easy for the top rise to win, so the depth was greater, maybe. Bailey Johnson Ward. I know. Omara. I know. I'm, I'm going because if you look at the win list, it's 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 Jeremy, it's Stu, it's Ricky, it's Chad, and Ricky beat them all at one point. Beat Jeremy, you know, 01. Beat Stu. So is he the best Supercross racer ever? No, I would put Stu on that level, but Ricky beat him. So better than MC. Uh, I think so. Yeah, like as Supercross. Just because of techniques and bikes and everything else changed. Four strokes, all of that. Jeremy was next level to the guys he raced, for sure. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. And I know that, obviously, Stu was faster than MC. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. All right. Keeper, what's the biggest disadvantage Roxon would have on the Suzuki? Uh, probably 
access to new age parts, I would think. So development parts. All right. 11 seconds. Eric, what's Steve Lamson doing now? He is actually, he's living in Arizona, and he works uh, at a place that trains, um, like, military. They teach guys how to drive UTVs and different things like that. Um, he's been doing that actually quite a while, and he's he really enjoys it. He used to do it with GOAT, right? He used to do yeah. it with, he started yeah. with GOAT, oh and yeah. then, yeah, uh, he switched off and did his own, I mean, not his own thing, but, uh, but no, he absolutely loves it. And he's doing good. And he's doing good. L uh, yeah. Lampson really broke Works Connection, didn't he? He oh. was a huge, yeah. huge part 100%, of your success. Like yeah. you, yep. you go back. We started in '89, but you go back, and everything is tied in with Lammy. Yeah, Lammy got yeah. us in the door with Peak for you know on Pro Circuit, and then when he went to Suzuki, he got yeah. us in the door at Suzuki. And I mean, it's just. And then when he went to Honda, we we had nothing to do with Honda. And he ran our, you know, visor sticker. Right. He just was always, he yeah. always liked our stuff. Oh, we had, we're good friends. And did you hear that pot I did with a hooker? And, uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, and he was talking about Lammy. Just, he oh, got yeah. Lammy the ride, right? He was right. like, let's just yeah. hire this Lampson yeah, kid. Yeah, so. no, he's, Steve is, was gold for us. And, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Goat Brecker, I called him one time. Hey, Goat, it's Steve Mathis uh, from Racer X. I didn't know uh, who you were. I, I said, Steve Mathis from Racer X. Like, I do this podcast show. I think you'd be, you know, super interested. Nobody cares. All right, cool, goat. Uh, well, I think it'd be interesting. You had a factory rider. You were really good. Nah, I don't. I don't care. All right. I met goat right. back. Nice talking know, to your goat when he was back in his Hung day. And he's actually what? a really good dude. Yeah, interesting didn't seem guy. like it on the phone. Like no. not into doing a podcast. <laughs> I know, but I think it's more of like not. I don't want to type of thing. I just don't. I honestly think what he said to you. I don't think it. No one cares. Like yeah, no one yeah. cares about like when we used to go in Randsburg and do testing. Goat would was caring would talk to more about the, the, the town and the things that he does within the town versus yeah. any motorcycle yeah, he, stuff. He was not into doing a podcast, even though I told him it would be really interesting. He's he not having it. All right, next question. Steve, who's flying at the test track right now? Honestly, uh, I haven't heard too much. Uh, I heard a J-Mart thing. I heard a J-Mart thing every year. Um, yeah, I haven't heard, honestly. I haven't checked up. I probably need to be more on it. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah, I I'll I'll answer. Wait, yeah, please do. I heard Jason is his times and everything and uh, Jason what Anderson? he yes, yes what he's doing is uh, really good. So okay, Kiefer, has your riding slash racing level peaked, or when do you think you were riding at your highest level? I think just like what Brownie was talking, about, I think I ride better now than when I was racing full time and Supercross and all these things, just because a technology is better. B I ride more now versus back then. Um, so I think I've peaked, obviously I'm not going to get any better than what I am, but I, I feel like I need to hang on with what I got. So that's probably why I ride so much on my off time when I don't have to ride just so I can keep what I got. All right. 26 seconds. Good job. Eric, with all the supply chain problems, what materials have you had issues getting or what's something that skyrocketed in cost? This is going to take way more than 30 seconds. No. Um, don't every, piss them everything. Off. Everything. Everything. I mean, <laughs> from aluminum, uh, I don't even know where to get started. Aluminum product, you know, anything. We built a lot of aluminum stuff. So we were having to pre-stock aluminum just so we could get it. Stuff that we could normally get in two to three weeks is three to four months. Jeez. Mm. So we we made a you know we adapted to it, but it's it was been really tough, and we're still digging out of it as we speak. But we're we're making strides. So thirty point two. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Uh, it's close. Good job. That's it's on the money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Steve, which new rider trainer combo do you think has the most potential? Well, I think this is old, but Nick Way started working with Schmoda, right? And Schmoda was really good last summer. I mean, Jet's gonna win whatever coast he's on, so I don't know where they're putting Schmoda, but either he's gonna challenge Jet or win the other coast with Nick Way. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Schmode is the guy. He just – he had a terrible Supercross last Who's year. Who's Forkner with now? I don't know. Okay. Who? Robbie. I think still Robbie. He was with him last summer. Tickle? Oh. Oh, okay. Tick. Tick. Scoops over here in the corner. Yeah. Keeper. Next brand athlete. <laughs> What's a track on your bucket list that you haven't ridden? Ooh. That's a good question. Um, 
Lomo. <laughs> Jesus. You don't want any part of Lomo. I think Lomo's like the Glen Helen, you know, like. Oh, all the locals? Yeah. 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 So here's my thing. Like, I want to go ride Lomo. But I bet you people over there go, oh, dude, why the hell do you want to ride here? Yeah. It's like people come, I want to ride Glen Helen. I'm like, dude, really? We, Glen we, Helen? We went there before the Disney Nations in 03 with Red Dog, and uh-huh. he was a good sand rider. I mean, he was good at Southwick. Dude's blue by him with, like, lumberjacks on. That's what I want. Yeah, I want yeah, the full yeah, experience. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want anything to do with it. All right, last one. Eric, which of your products has been the most shamelessly copied? Ooh. Oh, shamelessly copied. I would have to say definitely the clutch perch. We have there's I mean we came out with it in like ninety eight and were the first by ones by to have something like that? Yeah, actually yeah. um I got the idea actually we're not the first. Um I bought the I paid licensing rights to a guy named Oscar Azevedo. Okay. He had the first ones. I saw it in a the was it racing paper before mm-hmm. it was Racer X. Yep. I saw an ad and I called him, just cold call him. He owned nine one one MX shop. Hmm. And we hit it, you know, I was just going to buy it from him. And it turned out, he goes, hey, I'm, I'm not really a manufacturer. Do you want to just take this on? And so we worked out a licensing mm-hmm. agreement and we produced them. And, but moving forward after that, yeah, it was the most ripped off yeah. part by far. It went to say. China and, I mean, still to this day, there's yep. multiple companies that sell the same one. It looks just like our original, yep. but yep. it's not. Yeah, it's got the top mount. Like the original? Right. The, with the bolts yep. coming from the top? From the top. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that one's out there everywhere. Oh, yeah. 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 The perch is amazing. It's one of the best things you make, for sure. It's, it works awesome. Thanks. I'm excited to try the new lever, you know, uh, the new one you gave yeah. me. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, this guy over here might have had something to do with it. Oh. And it's not new, new, but oh. it's... Yeah, it's new for me. I was about my, to go. What? No, my... my <laughs> I was telling Eric, because I am such a, I am such a thought-provoking um, uh, user... That yeah. I just transferred that perch on my 22 is from 21, yeah, absolutely. and I just moved it because I'm yes. like it's still good. Yes. So it's an older style lever. It's more blocky. It's more square. See, I'm the opposite of you, but I understand what you do. Transfer the good stuff. Yeah, over. I'm not yes. gonna just you know not. I'm not gonna be lazy and I'm gonna take it off my bike and put it on my new bike because yep. it's still good. Yep. However, for the 23, I insisted for the new one. For the fresh. Yeah, it's been yeah. two years. You need something new and shiny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. X Brown Goggles, choice of champions everywhere. Uh, all right, we're going to take a commercial break here. Uh, and we are going to go look at my bike for this for this dirt. <coughs> Dirty. And uh, we'll be right back. We got Robbie McQuarrie coming on, uh, DV as well. We got some more talking about some off road stuff. Uh, we want to talk about your uh, Moto Demption story. Yep. You did. Lots more coming up here on the show. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Eric Phipps, Chris Kiefer, and myself, Steve Mathis. See you in a little bit. God bless. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Hey, in case you didn't know, Racetech is the world's largest aftermarket suspension modification company. All Racetech products include award-winning goal valves and settings are 100% guaranteed and made right here in the U.S. of A. Racetech also offers state-of-the-art precision engine services and parts to all engine builders. The staff has over 65 years of championship winning experience. It's so good that many of the top privateer teams such as SGB Honda, Team Solitaire Nuclear Blast Yamaha, and Motul AJE Gas Gas, as well as Jerry Robin, Kevin Morans, and many more, choose Racetech for their superior performance, reliability, and their customer service. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Kate Clayson, and I choose Racetech because I love their desire to strive for perfection. I think we all know that perfection isn't possible, but 
getting to perfection is always the goal and I think that is something that both myself and Race Tech have always worked towards and I think they can help you get there too. Hey guys, this is Alex Ray. I use Race Tech components in my SGD suspension and also the Race Tech engine. The reason I like it is just because uh, the engine is super reliable, tons of torque, and also on the suspension side, it just gives it that flush, nice feeling. Hey, it's your boys over at Team Solitaire. If you don't run Race Tech, here's what you do. Put your hands behind your back and run your face into a f***ing wall. Racetech.com. What's up, guys? This is Kevin Moranz, and I choose Race Tech because of their convenience of having Race Tech centers all around the United States. Obviously, within my Decker Performance Suspension, works really well. They're very high-quality performance products. Definitely check them out. Hey, guys, this is Jerry Robin, uh, and I choose Race Tech because of uh, the reliable motors, good power, good suspension, and obviously, it's great people around, and I've uh, been there for a long time, and they're awesome. Visit Racetech.com and use code PULP22 to save. Love the guys at Works Connection. They continue as a 10-year sponsor of this show because, yeah, just like you, they're committed to the sport. For 33 years, they've been designing and distributing leading-edge performance products like the Elite Axle Blocks, Elite Clutch Perch, Pro Launch Start Device for performance, radiator braces and skid plates for protection, along with a shock pump, attack, hour meter, and more for maintenance. Works Connection, great guys up there in NorCal, and super cool company. I'm more stoked to be uh, associated with them. When you take a look around the AMA pitch, you'll see Worst Connection proving ground for products under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, and other top teams. And they, the best part of this whole deal is if you use a code PULPAMX20, you get 20% off your order. Visit your local dealer, check out motorsport.com, and uh, ask them to see the Worst Connection product line for 2022. Great company, great products. Check it out. Thanks to Worst Connection for coming on the show. PULPAMX20, the code to save. With 80 years of experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, Weisco has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, Weisco has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite series. Weisco has recently expanded our Racer Elite line with SX and MX proven USA-made connecting rods. Now adding to the Garage Buddy Re build kits, clutch and valve train components, and our CV4 thermal protection line. This makes Weisco your single stop performance name. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or Weisco.com to find products for your machine. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2022 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Hi, it's Tomek.
Max Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires. This added value is great news. The new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, also too make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all-new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time, and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. For over 30 years, Decal Works has led the industry in quality and customer service by offering the best custom motocross graphics, plastics, seat covers, and rider ID products. Decal Works is officially licensed with Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas. Their expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. Decal Works is a proud sponsor of Red Bull KTM Factory Racing and the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Off-Road Team. Visit decalmx.com and be sure to use promo code PULPMX at checkout. Quality, service, and knowledge is what makes Decal Works stand out. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. At motorsport.com, our ride started in 1999 with a commitment to making your next ride your best ride. We take pride in having a huge selection of gear, accessories, and OEM parts for moto, street, off-road, ATV, and UTV. Riding is what connects us and makes us a family. From the track to the trail, tarmac to open roads, we're all connected because we ride. And that's what motorsport.com is all about. We've got your back. Our unrivaled and dedicated team of gearheads are willing to go that extra mile. 
No gimmicks, just high quality parts, the best customer service in the industry, and free shipping on all orders over $79. Our passion at motorsport.com is to ensure your next ride is your best ride. This is our invitation to you from riders for riders. Visit us at motorsport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win... Whoa, wait, Dylan. Sorry to cut you off like Steve does his callers and guests, but a lot has changed. Similar to your favorite rider being on a new team, the new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range provides significantly improved performance and durability. Designed to win. The new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range offers up to 16% more traction when new and up to 19% more traction when worn in comparison to the previous generation. This means consumers will not only benefit from improved performance on their first few rides, but that this performance increase will continue throughout the extended life of the tire. Michelin is a legendary innovator in motorcycle tire technology, and thanks to Michelin Silica technology, the Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range provides up to 11% more durability than the previous generation. This means consumers will enjoy the significantly improved performance throughout the increased life of the tire. Take it from me as I too have to buy my own tires. This added value is great news. The new Michelin Star Cross 6 tire range is available in six versions, specifically sand, mud, medium soft, medium hard, and hard versions with the naming designation corresponding to the type of terrains and conditions where the tires were designed to win. Another innovation is the Michelin adaptive design with specific positioning of the tread blocks in three zones, central, intermediate, and lateral zones with the single goal to offer exceptional grip for the front tire and exceptional grip, traction, and longevity for the rear. To learn more about the new Michelin Starcross 6 tire line and all the quality products that Michelin offers for motorcycle segments that Steve cares nothing about, visit michelinman.com slash motorcycle. And then visit your local dealer or online retailer to choose Michelin product to maximize your riding experiences. Also, too, also too make sure to follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Love the guys at Works Connection. They continue as a 10-year sponsor of this show because, yeah, just like you, they're committed to the sport. For 33 years, they've been designing and distributing leading-edge performance products like the Elite Axle Blocks, Elite Clutch Perch, Pro Launch Start Device for performance, radiator braces and skid plates for protection, along with a shock pump, a tack, hour meter, and more for maintenance. Works Connection, great guys up there in NorCal, and super cool company. I'm more stoked to be uh, associated with them. When you take a look around the AMA pitch, you'll see Worst Connection proving ground for products under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, and other top teams. And they, the best part of this whole deal is if you use a code PULPAMX20, you get 20% off your order. Visit your local dealer, check out motorsport.com, and uh, ask them to see the Worst Connection product line for 2022. Great company, great products. Check it out. Thanks to Worst Connection for coming on the show. PULPAMX20, the code to save. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000-square-foot, state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhaust, 100% in the USA, under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years.
Hey, in case you didn't know, Racetech is the world's largest aftermarket suspension modification company. All Racetech products include award-winning goal valves and settings are 100% guaranteed and made right here in the U.S. of A. Racetech also offers state-of-the-art precision engine services and parts to all engine builders. The staff has over 65 years of championship winning experience. It's so good that many of the top privateer teams such as SGB Honda, Team Solitaire Nuclear Blast Yamaha, and Motul AJE Gas Gas, as well as Jerry Robin, Kevin Morans, and many more, choose Racetech for their superior performance, reliability, and their customer service. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Kate Clayson, and I choose Racetech because I love their desire to strive for perfection. I think we all know that perfection isn't possible, but getting to perfection is always the goal, and I think that is something that both myself and Racetech have always worked towards, and I think they can help you get there too. Hey guys, this is Alex Ray. I use Racetech components in my SGD suspension and also the Racetech engine. The reason I like it is just because uh, the engine is super reliable, tons of torque, and also on the suspension side, it just gives it that flush, nice feeling. Hey, it's your boys over at Team Solitaire. If you don't run Racetech, here's what you do. Put your hands behind your back and run your face into a f***ing wall. Racetech.com. What's up, guys? This is Kevin Morans, and I choose Racetech because of their convenience of having Racetech centers all around the United States. Obviously, within my Decker Performance Suspension, works really well. They're very high-quality performance product. Definitely check them out. Hey, guys. This is Jerry Robin, uh, and I choose Racetech because of uh, the reliable motors, good power, good suspension, and obviously, it's great people around, and I've uh, been there for a long time, and they're awesome. Visit Racetech.com and use code PULP22 to save. With 80 years of experience manufacturing power sports pistons right here in the USA, Weisco has evolved into a full range of performance components for dirt bikes and other power sports machines. Whether you ride a two-stroke or a four-stroke, Weisco has a variety of pistons from reliable forged replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite series. Weisco has recently expanded our Racer Elite line with SX and MX proven USA-made connecting rods. Now adding to the Garage Buddy rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, and our CV4 thermal protection line. This makes Weisco your single stop performance name. Visit your favorite online or local dealer or Weisco.com to find products for your machine. For over 30 years, Decal Works has led the industry in quality and customer service by offering the best custom motocross graphics, plastics, seat covers, and rider ID products. Decal Works is officially licensed with Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas. Their expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. Decal Works is a proud sponsor of Red Bull KTM Factory Racing and the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Off-Road Team. Visit decalmx.com and be sure to use promo code PULPMX at checkout. Quality, service, and knowledge is what makes Decal Works stand out. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. In 1990, my dad, Jamie Gregg, started Guts Racing. Guts stands for Gregg's Ultra Trick Seats, because I was just a little kid that wanted a trick seat. And if you're out there looking for a trick seat, go to GutsRacing.com, your local dealer, or Motosport and place your order. Support the people that support Pulp MX. You can use Pulp 2022 for 20% off at GutsRacing.com. Attention riders, welcome aboard the all new Atlas Vision. We hope you enjoy the added mobility, quicker flight time and additional views. Please follow along as we outline the safety features of this revolutionary device. The first thing you will notice is the added headroom. The fore and aft positions no longer come with annoying restrictions, so feel free to move about the cabin. Quicker flight times can be achieved by unmatched comforts and unencumbered movements. Yes, we're built for speed and comfort. And now available to all customers is a 360 panoramic view. Go ahead and look around the cabin. These new angles are available at no additional charge. Located on the underside of the frame is the gold standard of impact absorption, D3O. 
In the event we accidentally take a trip to Indonesia, we suggest that you remain with your neck in the underextended position and allow this proven material to do its job by reducing the forces over 50% better than ever before. Although the Atlas Vision will not be noticeable, it will be there when you need it. If you are riding with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your vision first and then assist the other person with a prodigy, type, or brawl. We ask that you keep your brace on until your moto is finished. We remind you that Atlas makes flexible neck protection. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the product is prohibited by the limited lifetime warranty. You will find this and all other safety information in the user manual located online at atlasbrace.com. At this time, we ask that you remain standing with throttles in the wide open position with your elbows up and hips fully unlocked. Whatever that means. On behalf of the captain and entire crew, thank you for flying Atlas Vision. Enjoy the views. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you to Zach Osborne, Mike Brown, for calling in earlier. Appreciate it. Uh, also coming up with Robbie McQuarrie and uh, the great David Villeman as well. Uh, Motorcycle Industry Jobs, Job of the Week. Upload your resume for free today. It's the first and only job board it's built specifically for the motorcycle industry. Upload your resume for free today. As I said, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. And if you're a company looking for some good people to hire, which is, uh, as from what I understand, harder and harder to do these days, uh, try MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Put your, post your job up and uh, take a look. And uh, the job of the week this week, our guys at FXR in, uh, in Minnesota, they're looking for a graphic designer, a marketing guy, full-time job. So if you're in Minnesota or you're willing to move to Minnesota, FXR Racing is uh, looking for a marketing guy and uh, as well a graphic designer. Go to MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. They're in Forest Lake, Minnesota. So if you want to go there, you can get a, go on F- MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com, see if FXR will hire you. Good company. Great company. Good company. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Uh, Eric, do you, can you vouch for the fact that it's harder and harder to hire people these days? I can vouch for that. <laughs> Luckily, we have a good crew right now, but uh, it's not easy. Right. Yeah. Uh, sure. Cherubies as well, industry leader in aftermarket dirt bike plastics and accessories with over 40 years of experience. And input from current riders like Cooper Webb, Adam C. Cirillo, Barsha, Anderson, and more. A Cherubies is fine-tuned to products to offer the highest level of performance and protection in the industry. Bring your bike back to life with frame guards, fork lug protectors, Stop. discards, chain block slider kits, and more at CherubiesUSA.com or at CherubiesUSA on social media as well. Thanks to those companies for coming on board with us. Uh, Robbie McQuarrie is coming up next from uh, AMA Arena Cross. Um, so the commercial break, we have uh, gone outside. The 2023 Yamaha YZ450 in my garage that Eric falsely accused me of being dirty. Talon, you saw it. No problems. Keeper says I don't count because I'm off road, but yeah. it was it was cleaned. It just wasn't like buffed and okay. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, oh it's a dirt gosh. bike. It's a dirt bike. It was hose. It was rinsed it's off. A, it's a maybe. dirt bike. A, for you people at home, when you spray underneath your bike and your rear fender, like it's dirty underneath there. The outside is clean. There's no mud on it. It's that, got some. That is a mud stain. There was like a diarrhea little bit of dirt came on down on your rear fender. Diarrhea. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's well, a good. Yeah. Is there a picture? No, I mean, don't get that far. Things are settled with poles these days. It's real easy to fix. Go take a picture of that. Say, Come yeah. back. Can we, uh... Hold on. Uh, Hold no, on. I, I like a picture. Is he just going to take a picture of the back underneath the back fender? Because that, that'll be just judged as, as being dirty. In the back. But, that's, it, it is but can we just get the rest of the bike in it, too? The, the... Well, we can get the back side of the front fender, too. And then get the frame, because he doesn't scotch brought his frame or anything. It's the very yeah. anti-pole the, now. The, the, yeah. The, the poles, well, the poles can, don't The pole people will tell us. Absolutely. But can we give the pole people the right options? Sure, we got you. I don't mind. We're going to take a, a photo of the underneath the rear fender, but we also need a photo of the bike itself. Listen, we're going to take of all the pictures of the parts that are dirty, and they can add it up themselves. Well, it's going to look dirty then if you don't see any parts of the clean. If it looks dirty with five pictures that are dirty, that means it's a dirty bike. Can this, we, let's just pull this room. Well, my my guy Talon said this fine. Marks, you wouldn't. Have, he didn't, didn't go out I there. Didn't, I didn't see. It. I was walking. I'm going to say dirty. 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 Brock says Brock no. Brock says dirty. No, Brock. Brock's no. doing Brock's you can't, Brock's doing this. Try, it's his first time in studio. He's trying to be Don't nice. be JT. He, yes he, Yes or no. Brock's my guy. He wants he to knows. be back. You know, he wants he, to come he back. He absolutely knows. This ain't Waffle House. Uh, <laughs> no. Waffle when you fried. guys said dirty, I was expecting like still mud from World Vets. Like he cleaned it. He just didn't. Let's face he it. He didn't do a perfect job. He only it, cleaned his other bike before I came up for the last time. He cleaned it because I was coming up. If I don't come up. That thing is dirty. Sir, it doesn't matter. It got cleaned. Okay? Oh That's it. God. That's all that matters. Objection. How many people got eight minutes to clean their motorcycle? 
I just wanted to pull that. Question. Eight minutes. That's about how long it will take. What you don't understand is that I'm a former factory mechanic, and I know how to properly wash a motorcycle. <laughs> and when you properly wash a motorcycle, sometimes you get a little underspray uh, underneath your fender. Where is that mud coming from then? The ground, because the bike is leaned over. Where so you? when you're when you're rinsing, so what I do, Chris, is I'm not just a gorilla who does lives in the high desert and pours <laughs> race fuel all over the ground. I don't do that. <laughs> After I wash your bike, Chris. I rinse my driveway with the power washer to get the Glen Helen dirt. Yes, that's after off you remove your bike. You remove your bike and then rinse off your yep. driveway. Text those to Marks. Yes. Or no. Just, so, just airdrop them to Marks. I, I don't know. He I was a tiebreaker, too, by the way. He says dirty. Who, Aiden? Yeah. Aiden's not going to say. He didn't vote. Aiden's not going to do anything different than what Chris said. That's false. See, that, that, you think Heather and Aiden are always team me. That's not true. Fuck you, you're fired. Right. All right, we got lots to talk about more <laughs> uh, tonight on the show. Pulp MX20 is the code to save. With a works connection as well, so please check that out. Jason Thomas coming up, of course. Uh, we have five minutes here. Um, life swap. Yeah. It's decided. Yes. It's been a year and a half in the making. <laughs> yes. We couldn't quite figure out the dates, but you think what I do is easy. I think what you do is easy. Mm -hmm. So we've agreed to change lives yes. for one week. We're going to do a pulp show on Monday. Yep. We're going to go our separate ways. I'm yes. going to go to the high days. You're going to stay here. <laughs> You're going to do all my shows. Oh, my God. Fantasy. Yeah. Privateer. Yep. You're going to the Supercross race. Yep. Dallas. You're, Dallas. You're going to talk to riders afterwards. You're going to write observations. The main event riders. You're going to write observations. <laughs> okay. You're going to do whatever Ray, Wygant wants at Racer X. Yeah, no problem. With all the pulp stuff. No problem. And then we're going to reconvene Monday after Dallas, and I will come back up, and I will go down, and I will ride my dirt bike. You're going to ride your dirt bike. You're going to answer every email that I get, okay? You're going to do my show because I have a show during my week, and it's going to be tech-related, yeah. dirt bike-related. Yeah, no problem. Okay? Yeah, no problem. And then you have to take Aiden riding. Yep. And after every day that you ride, could be anywhere in Southern California, you have to come home. You can't yeah. stay where you're at. That's fine. That's just called have, driving. It's called family. Yep. you got to be home for the family. No problem. Okay? Yep. There's a lot going on. You have on. to walk Augie. No Twice problem. Twice a day. I walk Oreo. No you problem. have to go on an e-bike ride. Oh, oh, pull my leg to go on an e-bike ride. Okay, yep, yep. no problem. And Aiden will be bought and paid for, bribed. You can't. Trust uh, me, I try. To not go riding. The, you uh, have no idea the shitstorm you're about to walk into. The tech video should not be how to wash a bike either, by the way. And what people saying. don't understand. Aiden, we need one more shot of the bike from the side, okay? These are not good photos. Oh, these because are. of they're <laughs> dirty, that's why. <laughs> Just do a shot of the bike from the side, okay? Just that's uh, all. Oh, my Thanks. God. Thanks. Put the seat on. Well, so he's going to want you to turn the light off next before you take it. Yeah, the turn the light down. Yeah. So. yeah. so, all right. Um, what people don't understand as well is that week – I have a test that requires durability riding. So he has to ride five days Listen. on top of everything else that I have to do when you get home. You can't just go to sleep because you're the, tired. Listen, <laughs> I can't ride a motorcycle as good as you. No one says you have to. Okay. No one so says you have to. I, I'm not going to injure myself. No problem. Trying to ride like you. No problem. I just will do my laps. At my speed. But there is okay? a requirement of time that you have to put in. No problem. It may be slow. <laughs> it may be slow, but there will be put in. What kind of time are you talking? How much? How, it, I'll how give long? him the criteria before. Oh, okay. And, okay. and you have to come up enough. here. You have to do all my sponsor <laughs> reads. I got I to gotta push some buttons. All right, cool. You got to do all my sponsor reads. All the proper sponsors need to be read. Yep. Who sponsors what I show. I can read off paper. No problem. All of that. Yep. You have to... You have to make your I own gotta content. Push, I push the server on. Big deal. Oh, okay. All right. And Marks, you are not allowed to help him. No. No. I'm I'm Steve. No. If I call him for help, no. he has well, to help. Well, then, if I call Jenky to take Aiden riding, there we go. I just called Jenky for help. Okay, good luck. What's call the Jenky difference? for riding. Go ahead. What's the difference? Call Jenky all you want. I'll call Vosh. He's going to fly <laughs> down. Vosh, <laughs> Vosh is going to come down. down. The ghost of Vosh <laughs> will come down to the high desk. You're going to see it real quick. Of all these people that come to my house are going to be scarce James, when you need them. James will help out. <laughs> James will help out. James will help out. Yeah. I'll get James to do a James lot. James will be over every day, by the way. <laughs> every day. Uh, we had Alex Martin on the show last week. Troll training is an online training program for riders of all skill and fitness levels looking to get fit and go fast. 
Alex Martin's super smart about this stuff, as you heard him last week. Uh, so please check it out. They help vet riders. They help pro riders. Whether you're an up-and-coming amateur racer or a vet rider trying to beat your buddies or an off-road racing, preparing for a three-hour race, Alex Martin and John Westling at Troll Training will prepare you for the best season yet. All aboard the Troll Train, they uh, they absolutely know the right things to do, the wrong things to do. they got experience uh, on and off the bike with uh, Alex Martin and uh, John Westling, and you can pick your course, pick your uh, level that you want to do, and trolltraining.com for more information on that. Please check it out. Thanks to those guys for coming on board, and uh, super smart dudes, of course, uh, that know what's going on. Uh, our next guest brought to you by the folks at Skosh. Pulp 2022 is a code to save with Skosh, celebrating over 40 years in business. Visit skosh.com to get a 20% discount on their lineup of phone mounts, chargers, and cables. Uh, and use the code PULP22 at Skosh, S-C-O-S-C-H-E. Um, I got to do the show. Skosh.com. Uh, boom bottles, too. Love the boom bottles. Uh, to, yeah, good. where's mine at? I gotta, I'm, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. I, 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 had get, I had to get somebody else one, too. And I, I, oh, that's just a look of defeat. Man, I got nothing for you. I'm just trying. <laughs> I'm fucking working on it, all right? I can't just snap my hands. And <laughs> I know you're busy with all your mountain bike rides and stuff. Yeah. I, I was a mountain bike ride today, Eric. The mountain bike ride was fun. It was a good time. Any, any rocks out there? I saw a couple. Yeah. Just not too many. I don't though. know what you're talking no, about. No, it wasn't too bad. No. no. It was a fun ride. I went, it was we, a fun ride. We, Thanks for taking We did some climbing. Yeah. We did some downhills. Where'd you go? Where from? Uh, uh, we went up to uh, off Town Center, Bears Best, uh, up the long concrete. Yep. Mm -hmm. That one, that way. So you know that. How many miles? 17? Yeah. No, that's yeah. good. It's like an hour. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. 17 miles on an e-bike? Hour and a half? It was half? an hour and 30 minutes okay. uh, of riding time. Yeah. yeah. But we had a good time. Nice. We had a great time. Yeah. Thanks again. Thanks for supporting and my midlife crisis as well. We'll uh, talk about that. Oh, yep. oh yeah. Race Tech yeah, Rant's yeah. coming soon. Yep. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, so thanks to the folks at Scouse for bringing you our next guest on the show. AMA uh, Arena Cross is back. There's been two rounds down. I've always been on the uh, on the the um, uh, on the fence or not on the fence on the uh, bandwagon on the bandwagon. Let's say of having an Arena Cross series. I think it's very vital to the sport. Uh, and um, looks like we're we're getting this AMA Arena Cross one going. And Kyle Peters has been doing it. And uh, yeah, interested to learn more about it. So let's uh, let's welcome Robbie McQuarrie to the show. What's up, Robbie? How are you, man? Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. You're two rounds down in the uh, in the series. Uh, how's it going? What uh, what's it been like to do it? You strangely enough, they went to Albany, Georgia, and Albany, New York. Oh wow, <laughs> Robbie, your first two stops. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, we thought we'd save some money with the opening ceremonies and just do one. You know, <laughs> welcome to Albany. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I like that. Uh, how's it been going? It's good. The show is. Um, it's just. I, I feel like the format and the racing has just been fantastic. Um, you know, we changed a lot of things with uh, what you're seeing and the way that the event is flowing throughout the night. And um, it, I feel like the, the response has been great. The racing has just been, I mean, heated the entire time. Uh, you know, basically we took it back to kind of the old way of having a pro night with a pro track and, um, some of the things that are a little bit different, though, is we're having two main events. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're standalone. The purse money, the points are all paid individually, but we're uh, inverting the gate pick for that second main event. So your your top guys are ending up on the back row and having to come through, and it's just it's made for some great racing throughout the entire night. I like that. Have uh, Now, of course, the pros aren't going to be too happy, but what's been their response <clears throat> to that format? You know, um, I mean, KP, uh, Kyle, he's, he's not a big fan of the, the, the inversion. Um, I think he gets what we're trying to do, though. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think everybody's coming around. To, he was probably the most vocal about, you know, not liking the change. But I think after giving it a, a couple of weeks, um, you know, I think people are realizing, like, we're trying to do what's best for the, the sport and what's best for the racing and that's ultimately what's going to be best for the riders. And, you know, we made a slight change in between the first two uh, rounds. Um, we moved it down instead of taking 16 to that main event, we mm -hmm. took 12. And then we uh, we added a, 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 a B main for those, you know, next 12 in qualifying. And something that kind of came out of that, which we knew it would help the racing in the, in the future main events, but the B main ended up being – you know, extremely exciting because you had guys that were typically just making it into the main kind of 
getting out of people's way. Mm-hmm. Um, now they're battling. I mean, they like eight of those guys think they can win that thing, and it's just made for some excellent, you know, racing. So yeah, some um, some big names at the first two. Kyle Peters, like you mentioned, the Phoenix guys support it. Uh, Braswell was there, right? The guy who won the Horizon Award. He won the Horizon Award. He won something. He won the yeah. Loretta Lynn. Loretta Lynn thing. Yeah. Uh, you've Thanks. had uh, uh, Isaiah Clark. Well, some award at Loretta's. Yeah. Um, Natsuki showed up. The, Luke Nice. You've had some good guys. But, hey, what what is KP talking about? He, he still won the second moto, uh, the opener, yeah. like even from the from the reverse order. So calm down, KP. Uh, absolutely. And even in Albany, New York, the second round, he actually finished, he finished third in the second race and got fourth in the first one mm-hmm. from the front row. Yeah. So, I mean, it's worked out. Um, Caden Braswell rode amazing in Albany, New York, and got his first win, and so did uh, Isaiah Clark. They both uh, – Isaiah came in just hungry. I mean, you could tell from the first lap of practice he was motivated. So, I mean, it's setting up, it's setting up for a great season, and um, we've got some, you know, exciting things coming out for the January events. Uh, the app will be out where – fans can actually vote for a head-to-head race. Um, oh, that's cool. Oh, I like that. And it, Yeah, and then one of the big features, which I knew you would like, everybody's like, you got to talk to Mathis about this. you got to talk to Mathis. <laughs> um, you know, within the, the app, they can actually, fans can support the riders directly. So they'll have profiles. You can do, you can sponsor the rider directly. You can do what we call motivate. So you can make it performance-based. So if you want to see, you know, Kyle – come from the second row and you want to put some money on it for him to make it to, you know, first mm-hmm. place or top three, you can do that and motivate those riders in that way. So. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's something they, yeah. something they could see before the main event then? Um, yeah, so there'll be a back end where they can kind of see, you know, what they're racing for. And um, it should be exciting. Um, that was really what kind of motivated us to get involved was just kind of, okay, how do we bring the um, – financial game back to these riders you know it, back when i was racing it 20 years ago there was a lot more at stake a lot more up for grabs and um you know just kind of falling off over the years and you know thinking about okay how do we get this back without just you know going to the same wells every time with the industry and so kind of developing this format to where the fans and making it crowd-based and crowd-sourced um that's kind of the direction we're trying. And I hope it pays off. I hope it works out. I hope it changes the way the riders um, earn, you know, their winnings. And uh, it really elevates the sport. Uh, it's what. really cool. January 6th, Loveland, Colorado, the next one. Uh, ArenaCrossUSA.com to learn more about the series. And, yeah, I mean, there's there 100% needs to be an Arena Cross series in America. Um, there's two of them as we go right now, Robbie. Obviously, you guys are the AMA ones. And Phoenix is the one doing your series. There's also a, a general tire one or Je- outlaw tire or I, I, something. Another series. I that's something that I don't like. Obviously, look, everybody wants to make money, just like there's other podcast shows. So I'm, I'm not the one saying that there should just be one podcast show. But I would love it, Robbie, if you guys could somehow just we we need one arena cross series to get everyone at it, like the old days, like when you raced it. I don't know what the answer is to be, but in my opinion, to to throw the thing forward in arena cross, we got to get one thing going here for everybody. Well, yeah, I think, um, I, I don't know. I think there is only one, you know, nationwide series that, um, you know, is, is racing for the AMA number one plate in arena cross. And, uh, that's, you know, mm-hmm. our series, I I'm all for, you know, there's probably half a dozen, a little arena crosses out there that, you know, hey, it, anything that's good for the riders is good for the sport. So if there's a way a guy mm-hmm. can go pick up a little bit of money on the on a weekend, you know, great. I'm all for it. But I think that's one thing. I think after this year, when you see like how we've elevated it, mm-hmm. I don't think there's any. I don't think there'll be any question of like what the premier series is. You know, so, Raw. Well, I think it, um, it, what you got the, the talent level you have now and Phoenix Honda supporting it, it does seem like it's the premier one for sure. Yeah. Uh, in my and, eyes, but yeah, I, I'd love to get it in the fall before the Supercross season. Obviously, um, you know that wasn't you guys weren't able to make that happen, but uh, and then I'd love to for it just be one. And we got we can, there's a there's a market there in my eyes to make this thing killer for everybody, promoters well, and you riders. know, 
you know, one thing we've done, uh, Steve, was you know we moved our pro day to Friday, mm-hmm. and we're gonna be we're gonna be live on Mav uh, starting in January. So, and we really did that with the fans in mind. So you can follow the series on Fridays. You're not competing with Supercross, and mm-hmm. not you know they're True. not overlapping. Yep. So I mean that was a that was a strategic move that we made as a as a group, and you know saying okay, we're gonna try to develop this thing. Um, or standalone, not conflicting with Supercross, even though, you know, we might be on the same weekend. You don't have to choose to watch one or the other. Sure. We're, yep. We know we're not Supercross. We're not trying to be, you know. Right, right. I think I think when Arena Cross was at its best is when, you know, you had guys leaving Supercross towards the end of their career and finishing it out, mm-hmm. you know, in Supercross. I and mean, you had those, you know, guys starting out in Arena Cross. And that intersection there was just, to me, in my opinion – is when the racing was the best. And so um, I really think if we can prove the concept of, you know, this more fan base, fan interaction event, um, you know, I'm optimistic that we can prove the concept and, and draw back some of those guys that, you know, still want to go racing and, and, and make a living. Um, you know, if we can yeah. prove the concept with Arena Cross and get them over there, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. Nice. Yeah, some of the concepts you're talking about are really, really cool, real interesting. And is that app out yet, or when can people get that app? Uh, it'll be out before January. We're kind of in the testing phase right okay. now. All right. Um, I mean, the staff kind of has it on, you know, has it downloaded, and mm-hmm. we're working through it, just kind of fine-tuning it. But um, it'll be out before the Colorado uh, January 6th event. Cool. Would have been awesome if he would have said Friday. Like where Mark's going to get his. Uh, I met Robbie at a regional before Loretta's, and I didn't know anything about this. And then uh, he was my neighbor at Loretta's, and then I found out that he was, you know, he purchased the series, Mm. he started the series. So my question to you is, and I didn't ask you this while we're we're parked next to him, what made you want to do this? Why did you want to to create all this and, and make this happen? You know, I ask myself every day now that I've done it. <laughs> no, um, funny funny enough, so, you know, my son took an interest in riding again. That got me back into the sport a couple of years ago. And uh, we were on our way home from a race. And my wife was, like, looking at the payout. And she was like, this is all these guys are racing for. And she was like, is this how this was when you were racing? And I said, no. I said, you know, I explained to her kind of what it once was. And and how far it come and she goes she, she told me she said you need to do something about this and so that kind of like planted the idea and then over the next few months i just kind of like developed this plan in my mind and put it down on paper and um i've got some partners involved uh, jack Brassville and wayne saboa um jack had had an interest in doing something and uh wayne is a business partner i've had on other ventures in the past and he comes from a music background so you know, just we all kind of got together and, you know, it'll that's what really motivated us was just they're seeing all these guys training, working so hard and not having really a place to go outside of Supercross and, and, and dealing with, you know, the budgets and everything that they're dealing with. Obviously, um, I just see a need and a void that needs to be filled. And so that was the motivation and, and kind of how it came about and, you know. Well, time will tell. I think if the industry will get behind it again, and then and then the uh, fan base connects with the event, I mean, I think it'll take off. And if not, you know, we've uh, we're making an effort, you know, 100 percent effort to, to see that that happens. How's been the industry support for you? I mean, again, like you know, we we're we're post COVID. Uh, the the companies I talk to, sales are down. They're not where they once were, and that's fine because we were booming for a while. So how's the support been, Robbie, from the industry and the and the and your partners and things like that? Um, the support's it's good. It's not um, great. I think with anything new in this industry, as you guys know, like everybody wants to kind of see, are you going to deliver? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think this is this is our proving year, and I think we are delivering. I mean, guys that came to the first couple rounds are like, you know, wow, it's back. You know, like cool, even just yeah. the level of production and and everything that we're bringing um, is really back to what it once was. And, you know, so I, I'm confident, uh, you know, from sponsors, I think there was a lot that are just on the sideline kind of watching, and there's already been a few that have contacted us that will probably get involved before Jan- <laughs> January. Yep. So that, that's um, that's been kind of the response. I'm 
I think next year it'll just continue to, to grow because there is a lot of excitement. People want this. They just wanted to know, like, are we going to, you know, live up to our side that, yeah, we're, yeah. that, we're, that we're telling people. So, huh. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Again, arenacrossusa.com for the schedule. Amateurs on Saturday, pro race on, on Friday. KP right now continuing, although he didn't win the last round, but he's coming back from pretty good injury. Injury, yeah. Yeah, and, and so to see him, like, winning races is, is cool because, yeah, he was hurt pretty good. So that's awesome. And, yeah. Yeah, a lot of respect for KP. And I, I didn't really know him and got to know him a little bit before the season. We did some promo things. And, I mean, he's an awesome rider and um, super talented. And you can just tell he puts the work in. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's, uh, I'm glad to have him as a, you know, for, uh, the champion of the series and kind of a spokesperson. He's, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah, w- well-spoken guy. and uh, Yeah, a great champion to, to represent it. Have you had anybody, like, so you had the first two rounds, Anybody showing up in January that you know of, rider wise or team wise? Anybody like coming in? Um, I know there's some young guy. I know like Chandler Baker. Um, he was doing really well in the amateur stuff, um, and he he was planning on being at all of them. He's going to be popping. In. He broke his collarbones okay. in uh, Freestone, so he'll be in. And then um, I know some of the there's been some of the West Coast guys that um, I know will be coming out for our, our Reno event. And uh, that's for, that's in February. And then, um, you know, I'm trying to – we have two dates um, in Guthrie, which if you're familiar with Arena Cross, like Guthrie is always one of the best tracks. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a huge arena. The dirt's just, you know, phenomenal. And those are the last two weekends before Houston. So we're working on trying to get some of those East oh, Coast yeah. teams to, to come and use that as a warm-up because sure. it really is more like a Supercross. So, I mean, it's – you're definitely into the 40-second, 45-second lap time there. So The whoops are big, too, dude. They're back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that was one thing. I uh, I sent uh, Denny Stevenson and Bud Man pictures of those whoops before the uh, first round, and you know, everybody's pumped. So. Yeah. yeah. There, remember, I mean, like, I look at Arena Cross when, like, Hayes, Blows. Yeah. Bowers. Those got about yeah. like the, yeah. I mean the whoops were big. Right. I got to do some <laughs> arena cross bike testing at Dirt Rider when the whoops were huge and I went to Ontario and I was like right. these looks like jumps. Uh, they look big again. No, it's good. Good to see. Robbie, how was the attendance the first two rounds? Were you happy? Um, Albany was soft. We knew it would uh, Albany, Georgia was soft. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> we we chose that venue. We we were up against um many O's. Okay. Um the right the rider tennis was fine. The pro turnout was great. Um, spectator was a little down, which it wasn't really a demographic. One challenge that we had this year was uh, venues. I mean, at, coming out of COVID, every comedian, every conference, everybody's touring. So getting dates was difficult, mm-hmm. to say the least. And so we we just kind of bit the bullet, even though it wasn't necessarily the ideal market. Um, it was a great event to start off and, and really run through the show and and know that the format's going to work for live television in January, right. and and all those things were were great and checked all the boxes. So uh, the fans that were there, um, I would say eighty five percent stayed to the very last checkered, which is always a good sign that you have a good format and a good show. So um, yeah, it, all the New York was good. Um, it was on Black Friday, so um, you know we had we had a good crowd. It wasn't uh, wasn't you know, massive, but yeah. it wasn't. It was definitely respectable, and uh, we look forward to growing from there. Did I did I read you had Ping and GL doing the TV coverage for you? Yeah, so we got Budman. Oh, uh, Budman too. Bud, nice, well, that's cool. But Buddy full time, and then Ping and uh, GL are going to bounce in and out um, and kind of switch off. So. Okay. Oh yeah. And, and those guys, those guys have been awesome. I mean, you know, I I told them, you know, kind of the feel that we want is is more like you know racers talking about racing you know like i wasn't worried about being as necessarily structured as yeah as other events you know i think people were on a motorsports network like these are people get it people don't understand it right yeah you know i don't need to try to appeal to the one percent like let's just you know feed into the, mm-hmm. the our market so they've been doing great and um you know they look like they're having fun and that's what we want so well cool man uh well thanks for calling in i appreciate it uh let's Let's check in down the road a little bit again. Maybe have KP call in or yourself and 
follow up and see how everything's going. Robbie's uh, Robbie's part of the basement husband club too. By oh, the way. he is. Yeah, he's basement husband. He's basement. Does he know what that means? I or? probably doesn't know, but okay. I I, I have no idea, but uh, I'm in. So basement <laughs> husband club is when you're a questionable looking gentleman, mm -hmm. but you have a very hot wife. Oh, okay, yes, I'm definitely Robbie's basement. I'm definitely that club. <laughs> so uh, Robbie was my neighbor at Loretta's. Yeah. See the rig pull up. Yeah. I've met Robbie. I'm like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Then I see a blonde, and I'm like, wow. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, they're married. And then oh. nicest woman. I mean, you don't expect to have a lady that beautiful be that nice, super nice, yep. talkative, like very helpful. In Robbie's like, basement. Excellent job, Robbie. Excellent job. Great job. Th thank you. And it, everybody can thank her for arena cross. That, she <laughs> yeah, was, she sounds was really like she was the, the uh, one. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, that's that's awesome. Uh, thanks for calling in, man. Appreciate it. Good luck with everything. And like I said, let's check in down the road if we can. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having See us. See you, Robbie. No it. problem. Thanks, man. Thanks, Appreciate man. it. Uh, ArenaCrossUSA.com for more information on that series. And yeah, like I said, we need an Arena Cross series, man. We need a strong one. And one where these guys can make some money. And what's cool, it's on TV. Yep. Like, I'm here for racing. Yep. I love it. Uh, absolutely. Uh, thanks to the folks at Skosh. Pulp 2022 is the code to save. 7 o'clock hour brought to you by OffRoadWarehouse.com. Uh, Eric, we drove by the ORW place Me today too. on the way to mountain biking. And uh, whether it's Jeep, Overland, UTV, Jeep, truck stuff, uh, get in and check out the industry's leading brands. Off-Road Warehouse stores are staffed by a knowledgeable, experienced team. Plus, they install everything they sell, from suspension kits, tires, and wheels, the steps, bed accessories, and more. they got stores throughout the USA, but the best place to go is offroadwarehouse.com. This is the ORW butt patch on the back of uh, Phil and Enzo and everybody, J. Martin, those guys. Uh, Pulpamex is the code to save with those guys. Please check it out. Pulpamex code at offroadwarehouse.com. Uh, thank you to uh, them, those guys for bringing you the 7 o'clock hour. We got Jason Thomas coming up as well. Um, the poll is up, mm. and it's a bullshit poll. Now it's a bullshit poll. Because the photos are not correct. Like, the photos are... A photo is a photo. Do you Photoshop it? It's not Photoshop. I even had him go back for an extra photo to thank make you it for look... For no, look, thank it, you for that. That was the best photo for thank you. Thank you for that. I mean, I could show the you... What's the score? Fake news. Uh, I don't know what the... What the what it's 60% dirty, 40% mm. clean. Mm. So I feel like it's going pretty good for Steve, and he's still talking Honestly, shit. Honestly, that's, that's yeah, not and, bad. And, well, I didn't see the results, so yeah, that's fine. Thank you, everybody, for doing the right thing, the 40% of us. <laughs> Thank you for that. 60% uh, is the right um, percentage. Mm. Those people are wrong. The 60% are just wrong. So the poll <laughs> people have not spoken. Poll people are really not friendly to uh, you, are they? <laughs> uh, Chris, what about uh, something you did on Racer X? Uh, Moto Demption. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, Davey Gonzalez uh, founded Moto Demption, and it's for um, injured riders that have a spinal cord injury um, that can no longer ride motorcycles. So... He has several adaptive bikes that um, can allow a rider to get back on a motorcycle, have a good experience. And I knew about this for a little bit. He had a ride day in Colorado. I wasn't able to go. And then I got a call the week before the Kurt Caselli uh, Foundation ride day at Fox Raceway, and I was more than happy to help out. So uh, basically went out to Fox Raceway and just basically helped Davey and the guys over at Moto Demption with about four to five adaptive riders. And I was assigned... Um, one kid, Anthony, that had a spinal cord injury last year at Mini O's, and it was his first ride back on a motorcycle since his injury. Okay. Um, so it was it was pretty it was a pretty uh, moving experience for me. Um, it it was it was cool to see what Davies created as his nonprofit organization. Everybody's volunteered. No one's getting paid from this nonprofit. This is a fully like everything goes back into the business. Um, no one's looking to make money. It, this is just a straight up, um, a gold star. I have a big heart type of, of nonprofit. And uh, for me, as much as I love dirt bikes and you know how dangerous our sport is, to see these riders getting to ride a dirt bike again and their eyes and, and the smiles that they have is, is pretty amazing for me. Um, the, so the whole experience for me was learning how to get the rider on and off the bike, some safety measures. I actually got to strap in and ride an adaptive bike just like how those guys would, and that was a really... You did, really? Yeah, so uh, my thighs are still sore from how from tight the they strap yeah, you the in. Strap is, yeah. um, and so then I met Anthony and his family, and we got Anthony on the bike for the first time. He was a little bit nervous. I mean, I was probably more nervous than him because I wanted to make sure he had a good experience, and... Uh, 
dude, it was really, 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 really cool to see Anthony take off on the bike, and we were hooting and hollering. And, yeah. How, um, how was he? He was uh, – He we had one little test run around the parking lot area just to get him familiar with the bike because it's different. You shift with buttons and mm -hmm. has an auto clutch. Um, but, dude, he took off, did great, and then we put him on the motocross track. There is a lead rider in front of Anthony, and then there's Anthony and then two guys in the back. So um, we had Connor Olson. He races professional motocross. Yeah. He was the lead guy. And uh, we kind of warned him about some spots on the track. Anthony went in the rut, and he just kind of tipped over, but – which freaks me out because we were trained that yeah. morning to how to pick him up. Yeah. But until you pick up a rider on a bike that ha can't help it's you, it's, can't. it's a whole different thing. I bet. Um, so it took two of us to get him back on the bike, but uh, we were laughing about it. It's like he wanted that to get out. And that he got it out of the way. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, he rode the rest of the time, had a great time. So it well, was, On the it was, line is, uh, is his brother, Dominic. Dominic? Hello, what's up? What's up, man? Thanks for calling. Well, first off, I want to say thanks to uh, Kiefer, but really I wanted to call to detail a traumatizing experience that I had with like... <laughs> Uh, yes, go ahead. So yeah, I, hold yeah. on. Before he's okay. talked, Dom, I met Dom at Loretta Lens in 2020, and I'll let him take it from there. Okay. Go ahead, Dom. Well, um, I'll, let me set the stage here. I was 15 in high school. I took a journalism class, mm -hmm. and they said, you got to write a paper on a good journalist. Now I'm thinking, <laughs> now Steve's always bitching about how he's a real journalist. So I should write this paper on Steve and, and say, you know, this is why he's a good journalist. So I was pumped right. on the paper, went to Unadilla, and then I got completely cool guide by, you know, this was 10 <laughs> years ago, so you were probably like 65 at this point. Um, <laughs> 10, I got completely okay. cool right. guide. How did you get cool guide, Don? Like what happened? Give us the play-by-play. I went up to Steve and I was like, yo, this is the paper that I wrote. Um, do you want to read it or whatever? And he basically was like, cool, and just walked away. I was like, basically, basically <laughs> a, fuck, a big fuck off. To me. Arm armadillo. <laughs> That's awesome. He fucking armadillo so hard on you, Dom. Hold on, Dom. Hold on. Like. Okay, I'm not disputing <laughs> that I did that. It sounds like I did. Doesn't but, sound familiar at all. No, but but Dom, <laughs> are you dead serious? I could I hear did. you properly, and you said I wrote this paper on you. Can you read it? And I still did that. Like he probably was nervous. Like, did you did you elaborate that fact? Or was there noise in the background? Was the thirty second card about to to go sideways? Like. Was there no, any way that I didn't hear you say, can you read my letter? No chance. And I didn't say, can you read it? I figured you'd be so excited <laughs> by a, a fan to come up and be like, hey, Steve, here's here's a paper I wrote about you. Five. And it was just done from there. I didn't even get the chance to say, can you read it? <laughs> you, you said, Steve, you're such a fucking <laughs> asshole, dude. I, listen, I don't think this happened. No. Here, okay. Are oh you sure God. you're not getting me mistaken with Anton or 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 or, or anybody I else? Remember, I've met Weege a thousand times. Yeah. This guy he is. He's a great guy. <laughs> Steve Mathis, terrible person. <laughs> so, hey. Okay, I mean, so in 2020, Heather, me, Greg, Aiden, we're floating down the river at Loretta's, and we're in the back. It's yeah. quiet, serene, yeah. just chill. I hear Kiefer, I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, fuck Mathis, and then just kept floating. That's it. And then I got <laughs> to talk to him, and he kind of told me the story, but I just thought it was awesome that we're in the river, and that's all he had to say. <laughs> Wait, that was Dom? In the that river? was okay, Dom. Right, so I was thinking, was there another one? No, no. Um, <laughs> like, listen, I, can, I have positive interactions with plenty of fans <laughs> in a year. At times. All of them. Oh, my God. So I don't know what happened with this Dom and this letter. This seems you must have, it wasn't a letter, it was a full on paper that I wrote for a journalism <laughs> class about you. Dom, do you still have it by chance? I can look for it. <laughs> if I'll, you I'll can find it, can we somehow get that? Because I would love to have this. I'm gonna try to find it. I think it's on an old computer. Okay. But I'm gonna try to so I mean, like, like, okay, so did I, you just want me to read it? Is, I'm, just want me to blow myself while I read it? Like, No, but he wrote you know, it about I, you. Well, that's awesome, but I, did you I, communicate like I need you to read this? Like, No, I just was excited about it. I was well, like, okay, so I probably said to you, awesome, man, thanks, right? No, 
It sounds like a lot of excuses is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is I'm not whole after this experience. After this experience, I had nightmares about cargo shorts. And okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. So now we know Dom's just this is a ha-ha. Dom's no, not it's serious. not. This is serious. This can't he, be serious, Dom. He told me the same shit three years ago. All right. New poll. <laughs> oh, this is not good for you. Poll people do not poll. like you right I'm now. I'm down with this. Give it to me. You New suck, poll. Man. If you have met Steve oh, at a race, be careful. Well, careful. No, listen, and, the, and, the, and guys like Mr. Side could fuck this poll up and whatever. But Goggle if you cock. if you've met Steve at a race, has he been friendly? Okay. <laughs> what is Whoa. this? What is this? Uh, friendly? Like, what is that? Is, that, is, is, that a, is that prop? He's what, trying to sprinkle what some is magic the definition into there. Of friendly in Canada, though, it could be completely different. Well, tell me, Dom. What what should I put? What should be the poll question? The 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 poll question should be: Did Steve cool guy you at the race, <laughs> or or was he nice to you? Have you, you personally if, been victimized? If, or cool guy, <laughs> no, <Steve>? Arthur Draper. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Arthur Draper. If you have met Steve at a race, <laughs> has he cool guide you? Yes or no? I'm no, gonna... because cool guy could be a broad term. That's a, that's not a good that's one. That's what your friend Dom said in this tra trap phone call you set <laughs> me up for. Trap. Right here. Here's what I'll say. My dad had a good – he phrased it good earlier. There's one guy on this show that – he's got two sons. My dad's got two kids. One guy on this show tonight, Chris Kiefer, li literally picked up one of his sons. The other guy on the show, Steve Mathis, stepped on his other <laughs> oh my God. Yes. on the, the paper. Hey, Dom, <laughs> have you been listening to the Pulp Show for a long time? Uh, pretty long, I would say. So how much free entertainment have I given your ass? A lot. A hours years, and was... hours and hours of entertainment. And what has Chris done for you? Nothing. <laughs> He picked up my brother off the can, ground. And can, his time can, you, can we run this poll? Yeah, I'm writing it right now. Okay. okay, don't say cool guy, though. Just say what you said that last one. Has he good. been friendly? Yes. Yes or no? Right. Okay. Yeah, I'll write it just like that. So anyway, I it was it was pretty. It sounds cool. I didn't know great, Anthony and Dom great were related. Great work, Chris. Great work. No, I did not know this. This right. wasn't planned. You get a Noble Prize, I guess. This isn't a Randy Richardson. New thing. poll. Should he get a, no, a no, Noble no. Prize? No. What I'm saying is, I just it was really crazy that Dom popped up last weekend, and I didn't never right. because he looked. Hey, do you remember me? And I'm like, no, man, I he don't. Said, remember. I'm the guy who said fuck Mathis. He floating. was like, remember a float in the river, and yeah. immediately I knew who he right, was. Right. Right. Uh, but overall, well, the experience it sounds was like really it cool. was a great thing, Chris. Yes. I'm glad you and Dom could have a great time tonight <laughs> shitting on me. Hey, I'm glad we could at least shit on you when I'm around. I'd shit on you in, for, in person. I, all, um, all of that Yamaha LCQ money just that I'd given away. Look, at we're not saying that you're not a nice guy, but you just weren't nice. I think Dom's story is a little off. I feel like there's no reason why he would make up, embellish a story. Oh, Dom it's seems pretty great to be made up. I, I mean, it seems like Dom. Here's how it went. Dom. Oh, you're going to tell it, us yeah. now how here's it went. How it yeah. went. Okay. Dom's 15 years old, right? Yeah. Right, Dom? You said you were 15-ish? 15. It sounds like whatever you're about to say is probably victim blaming. <laughs> he's 15. He's at Unadilla. He's like, hey, Mathis, I wrote a paper about you uh, as, a, as a feature journalist or something. Right? I wrote a paper on you uh, for a journalist I admire. And I went, oh. What's up, man? That's cool. Thanks. And then I walked away. I didn't know that the transaction involved more. Dom didn't say, can you read this? Dom didn't hold it up in his in my face, right? Yeah, this I is, am a shitty media guy. Dom, no you admit that it. you didn't hold it up in my face. You didn't ask me to read it. Those are facts, Your Honor, that have been laid out there. And then I just said thank you and went on with my life. I was not but asked to read a letter or asked to take the letter. And therefore, in my experience, I was as being as, a, as an adult. Yeah. You look at a 15 year old and you would say, OK, maybe he's nervous to talk to me because you're somewhat known in the industry. And if he wrote something on you, I would at least as an adult me, I'm not saying you. Yeah. I would have looked at him like, OK, hey, thanks a lot. What was it about? It's like one question to give him something. You did not even ask him a question. Uh, I'm, Dom, did I ask you a question? I think you just said it was either nice or cool, and that was it. Yeah, simple away. transaction. I'm a man of few words. <laughs> you know? I'm just saying, if some kid, a 15 year old, wrote something about me, I would be a little bit curious. That's all. That's it. I was. That's all. <laughs> 
Dom was waiting on hold for over two hours. <laughs> right. So like, and I thought he was waiting on hold to talk about his brother and the struggles he's had <laughs> and how Chris helped him. But oh no, <laughs> D- Dom is getting his revenge. Good Dom. Good on you, Dom. <laughs> Ten years later, Good. I admire Dom. Do you want a T-shirt? Well, whatever. I think that would make me whole at this point. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you a T-shirt. Can we get him like a swag? Pack. Yeah, I'll throw some shit in there Thank and you. then promise me the next time you write a letter about me, you tell me I wrote the letter here. Can you just promise me that, Dom? Yeah, well I'm gonna I'll do my best to, to find the, the yes. five pair paper I wrote on. Please do, because uh, this would be this would do. actually really be cool for, to put in the the well, studio, I gr- feel like. Great work, Kiefer. Helping yeah. out uh Anthony, right? You said Anthony. Anthony, yeah. great work helping out Anthony Kiefer. Oh, not what a guy I, you are. No, it's what Moto Demption. It's not me. It's Moto Demption and everything that they're yeah. doing for okay. these guys. It's nothing right. about me. Anthony's right here next to me. If I think he wants to say thanks to you. If or, that's okay. Yeah, no problem. No! <laughs> hey, buddy. I'd just like to thank you again for picking me off the ground two days ago. Uh, Kiefer's the hero here, everybody. <laughs> the big <laughs> hero. There we go. No. No. Yeah, you did good. Yeah, I was really proud of you, man. You did a great job. Like you inspired a lot of people that day, so that was really cool. Thank you very much. That's it. That's that, Steve. See how quick and easy that is? You don't have to be a dick. Yeah, it was quick and easy with Dom. Quick and easy. Thanks, man. <laughs> Gotta go. Uh Dom, you there? I'm here. Okay, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> You can hear it in his voice. We're gonna, we're gonna... He's still <laughs> fucked up, dude. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> Dom, we're gonna put you on hold. Oh. Town will get your address, your shirt size. I'll send you something. I can make you whole in your life. All right. That Maybe you really could write him a letter. All right. I'm I not going to write you a letter. I think he needs to read the letter on air. We need him to call in yeah, more because Dom's hilarious. Dom is great. Yeah. Find the letter mm-hmm. and uh, don't email me, but email Kiefer with the letter. Yeah, don't email it because you know that's going to get anywhere with Steve. <laughs> He'll just fucking delete it and move on with his life. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, what I'll do is when I get the when I find the letter, then I'll go talk to Kiefer. This way we can get our story straight right. before we talk to you about exactly. it. Exactly. All right. Stay on hold. All right, Dom. Thanks, man. See you guys. Thanks, thanks, right. Keeper again. Let, later, brother. Thanks, Dom. <laughs> Fucking Dom's awesome, dude. I was glad I was sitting in I don't on think, that one. That was I, great. I don't think that's a true <laughs> this story. Is, so you see how but, dry he is? Yeah. This is how dry he was in the creek when we're floating around. Yeah. And he was just telling me this. This was great for me. Fly Racing, flyracing.com. <laughs> Check it out, motorsport.com, or your local dealer. Exciting things coming from Fly Racing, JT. What do you got? Uh, what, are you gonna, just... <laughs> what are you going to drop on us? Well, you know... <laughs> You know, I know. Okay, all right, fair enough. <laughs> okay, uh, after the after the show, tell me. That's so why um, we're on the so, same page. Dom says he wrote a letter ten years ago about his favorite journalist, and and it was me. And he okay. said at the races at Unadilla, he came up to me and he was like, "Hey, I wrote a letter about you." And it I, was an essay. An essay about you because you're my favorite journalist. And he says, "I just went, okay, cool, thanks, man," and I walked away. Does that sound yeah, like that was, me? That's totally what you would do. <laughs> 100%. I need a poll on JT. <laughs> we need another poll. It's bullshit. All right. Hey, that's what you do. No, it's not. Yes, no, it's not. this it is, is what you no, do. No, I'm a busy guy sometimes. You are, and there's no doubt about it. And you're a, you're a giving person, Thank but you. the times that you're not, it's pretty bad. <laughs> the Stop. average fan interaction is not your thing. What's the, right What's the poll at right now? What's the poll at right now? 29 votes, uh, 52% for nice guy, 48% for not friendly. Oh, wow. It's that close. It's well, I, I, w- I will, say, right I will say that after our uh, the Fly Racing Radio show we do at, uh, at Supercross, uh-huh. you, are very, you are very gracious to fans after that show. Yep. Yes, uh, JT is not. JT is one of what? the first ones <laughs> out of there <laughs> he is. on those, on those live shows. I have a lot going on, so it's not it's not because I don't want to talk to anybody. I gotta go. Mm-hmm. But, well, Run a poll. New poll for JT. New poll. <laughs> poll. <laughs> poll on JT. Hold on, Keeper. You're not even talking about the right thing. I'm talking about at the races. Oh, okay. At the races. What are you thinking not, about? Not live shows. Oh, After the live, live shows. shows. Yeah. Live shows are past his bedtime. Yeah, he's out. He's out. He's, he's out. gotta go. Ah, uh, JT. Yeah, that's Seriously, Roxon and Fly. Where are we at? Uh, I don't know of anything that's happened. Um, I mean, we, we have definitely yep. have been in discussions with them. Okay. Uh, but as far as I know, nothing has come to fruition in, on any front there. So. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, I, I would assume he has he had several offers, um, and and I believe that we were one of those. So you're not. It's not looking positive as far as it happening. Well, I think with everybody, it's just we don't know a lot. You know, I, I think Kenny is enjoying the uncertainty from everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we certainly try to make the best offer possible, and then it's up to Kenny and his team uh, as to how they see his future. So um, I, I think anybody would be fortunate to have Ken Roxon representing their brand or team or, you know, what in, in any capacity. Um, I think that's pretty, be pretty we- easy to figure out. It so. would be weird to see him in anything other Dude, than Fox. That's weird. for sure. That would be weird. Weird. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think he's going to do the HEP deal. We all agree, JT, that he can win. Uh, you do you agree with us, or do you think that he can't win? Oh, I think he can win races. Right. No question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah so yeah. you're on you're on our page. That's, okay. That's for sure. I, I didn't know yeah. where you were at, but that's what I figured. So, um, I do think it'll be tough, though. I think I think he's pretty far behind. The, I, I think if he went to Firepower Honda, he, that would be the path of least resistance as far as being prepared. Mm-hmm. I don't know if resource wise that would be the easiest path. But I think if he goes to, if he does the Hep Suzuki deal, like he's got to start. I don't want to say start from zero because he's already ridden the bike, but yeah, I mean pretty close. It's hard to pretty see close. him being ready for uh, being peak Ken Roxon at A one if he starts right now. I agree. I agree. That's that's really challenging. And for anyone, well, I guess if he if he continues to wear Fox and stays there, that's even for them they have a lot to work through with marketing materials. If he does, you know, he's obviously changing teams. So you have to get everything like photo shoots and everything done. If he were to end up wearing fly racing, that's challenging as well. Like we have to do, we need to measure him and, and build gear to his tastes and specifications Mm -hmm. and go through that whole process. Like there's a lot and it's really late. I mean, it's December. Like we're a month away. (laughs) That is not a lot of time. No, if it was, if it was three or four years ago, it would be a lot easier to get something done that quickly. That's not the case anymore. I'll be interesting to see what, uh, what happens. It's been really interesting. The entire, the entire process uh, on our end has been interesting. And, And I, we're very fortunate to even be in the conversation. Um, I, I think had this been several years ago, I don't think Kenny or Steve Aspen or anybody associated with it would have given us an opportunity. Mm-hmm. So um, if nothing else, it's just another stepping stone towards where we want to be as a brand. That brings me to my next thing that I was going to talk to you about. Uh, so obviously we know about Ken Roxon not being happy about a, uh, well, Ken Roxon's agent, Steve Aspen, not being happy about Kenny not getting drug tested over in Australia. Uh, he did take the test which you can't refuse a test. If you refuse a test, it's the same as failing. And then you know Steve better than I do. He's a Chad Reed agent forever. You know Steve very well. I know him a little bit. That interview he gave Racer X was insane. (laughs) That was insane. Insane, right? (laughs) Like, Uh, I mean, I'm not going to use the word insane. Okay, what word would you use? I don't know. I think, (laughs) you know, (laughs) <laughs> no, I think Steve just got in a situation where he was really uncomfortable with the way things went down. Um, I don't necessarily think he was entirely in the right. You know, and in, it's it's always challenging when you're speaking off the cuff and you don't get to prepare statements. So did everything come across exactly the way he wanted it to? I would say probably not. I, I think that's fair to assume. But in the end, I don't think they were trying to do anything nefarious. And – you always wonder, you know, people ask why everybody wants to have pre-written statements to come out. I think when interviews go sideways and you don't exactly have it come out the way you want, that's your reasoning why. That's why people are like, no, we'll just, we'll put out a press release because you get to comb over every word and there's never any room for interpretation. It's, it's short and sweet and to the point. And anytime you try to expound on anything, it's, yeah, it, it can go sideways. I just... To you know, he got a lot of money to go to two races, and he's saying he didn't know there'd be an FIM series. And FIM, it was out of it was out of competition. This is this is an FIM series. He called it a off season races. It's strange. It, the yeah, whole thing, I mean, like, don't, don't what, do you, I, Steve? You you took the, these, these people's money. 
and you just know nothing about the race? Like nothing? Really? I, yeah, I don't. I don't really have an answer to that because it, all along it's been. I mean, that was the whole FIM thing. It's, it's you know they they must have said world championship eight hundred and fifty times at Cardiff. Yeah, minimum. You know. Yeah. So I I don't I can't speak for Steve. I don't know what he did know or didn't know. But yeah, I think I would have guessed everybody involved knew that you know FIM and WADA and all those things were subject hey. to hey. what you know. Okay. And I and I and I know from talking to people close to the situation, Ken's pill bottle was labeled because they were able to take a look at the ingredients and Google it. Steve said there's yep. unlabeled there's pills in an unlabeled bottle. Like, hold on, Steve, Steve, you're representing Kenny here, right? You're not going after him because again, it, it you know, it's immune system stuff is from what I've been told. Like I just like Steve, stop talking. Well and, yeah, and- I mean Steve Steve will vehemently defend his guy. That is the fact. I've seen him do it for multiple mm-hmm. guys. Yeah. And I just don't think he got that one right. You know, I think his heart was in the right place. He was trying to defend Kenny and make sure that nothing was out of line. But I think in this case, they had every right to test him. You know, this, this what they would call a World Supercross Championship. Do I believe it's, you know, the ultimate championship? No. But I understand the, what the rules say. The rules say it's, you know, FIM and you're – you're subject to anything that comes along with that. I just yeah. think it's weird, like out of competition supplements. Like, what is that? Like, I don't understand that. Well, I think, I think he thought it was like a, like an outlaw race, which I don't know where that <laughs> thought would come from. But that, to me, I mean, is he, that is that how you guys read it too? Like, yeah, it would be yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He if just you went, if you went to like a local fair race, Montreal, yeah. Montreal, yeah. Right? He like, that would be kind of how I thought he approached it, but that's not that's not what this is at all. I you know I heard from good people that when Kenny agreed to the deal, he had no idea he had to be on a team. Like Steve didn't know that or explain that or I mean that's not rock. I, and I, I think in the early days that's probably true. I mean when Ken, remember when Kenny rumors of Kenny signing this deal came out, we didn't know much. There right. were not a lot of details out there like the structure, how this was working. I didn't even know who Rick Ware was. You know like there was so much that I didn't know at that time. So I, I can understand it then, but to all the lead up and all the press releases and all the build up, you would have thought that that would have gotten ironed out at some point. I just, uh, I, if I'm Ken and it was a great Cor- read, Courtney, I am like Steve. Oh my God. Like, you know, yeah. So, and so, uh, another media, Definitely was, head scratching. A, Give you that. another media source said that KTM passed on Kenny because of he wouldn't take the test, which he did take the test, and all KTM would need to do is make one phone call, Roger, to anybody at the FIM who he knows as his buddies, and find out what was happening. And they, I, where does this stuff come from nowadays? Like, where does where does something like that even happen? YouTube. I mean, I feel like I'm plugged into what's going on. I've I have some close sources to this situation, and I've never heard that. I, I not once. Nobody's mentioned you know, and, that. And, 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 Obviously, with us wanting to retain Kenny services, we were given some insight as to what potential options were because that's obviously a huge part. You know, if, right. if we need to kind of know, we don't have to know the full answers, but we need to know what's possible. Um, and I, I can say I never was told that. Whether it was true or not, I right. can't say. But yeah. we were never told that that. Red Bull KTM was an option. There was some talk of trying to do something with TLD, uh, even wearing Fox. You know, Red Bull, like, it never went anywhere. It wasn't, you know, they didn't, nobody passed on them because of a drug test. I just, I don't know where And that's what I'm saying. From. Like, it wasn't presented to us no. as a real option. No, right? so no, I don't think it ever was. That's all I can attest to. Hmm. It's just crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I don't know where this stuff comes from. It's, uh, yeah, YouTube, right, I guess. Uh, you know, I, you just. I, I mean, mean, all you have to do is hear one rumor. Like, if you're hearing that TLD was even in the mix, People will run with that. Yeah, so, I mean, this, that's what YouTube is. They just run with whatever. Goes on vital. That starts a shitstorm. Then it just flows yeah, downhill. Yeah, I mean, I heard about the – I've said this on Twitter, and I, I heard that Kenny didn't take the test like two or three days after the race. I'm like, oh, he – that's – first of all – I mean, you can't not take the test. Well, that's worse. what I mean. Yeah. Like, logically, yeah. you can't refuse a test. It is the same as failure. Yeah. So knowing that, knowing the FIM – doesn't fool around. You just look at Brock Tickle, K. Clayson, James, any of these other guys. So you know they, they mean business. You know you can't refuse a test. 
I was immediately skeptical, but I had to fool. I had to ask because I was told he didn't take the test. I took. I talked to two people close to the situation. They're like, "Nope, he did take the test." Okay, and knowing that he has to take, he can't refuse it. I'm like, you know, to me, my sources were really good, and I'm like, okay, nothing there. He took a test. Was Steve yelling at people and freaking out? Yes, every both people told me that. Steve was not very professional, yelling at random WADA drug testing people who don't know Ken Roxon from, you right, know, right. Michael Jackson, right? They're just there to collect. What do they care? They right. don't care. And they're just there to collect pee, right? That's it. And Steve was yeah. apparently yelling at these people. And they're like. I mean, these people tested Lance Armstrong like 100 times a year. You know, like they, they could care less who they're testing. No, no. So I did hear all of that. But, but that doesn't mean just because Steve was out of line doesn't mean Kenny didn't take the test and he did and I went and I so I didn't even report it. Why would I report that Kenny took the test? Like of course right. he took the test. There was random testing and he yeah. and he took it, right? Cuz I think they tested two or three podium guys and they pulled another random guy. That's what I heard. So anyway, so yeah, it was uh quite a story there for a little so bit. So we don't know if he passed or not because that won't come out for a bit. W- it won't come out for a bit. Yeah. yeah. W- w- we will assume he did. Uh I heard the drugs in the unmarked pill bottle were actually marked and they were for his immune system. He takes drugs that like cancer people take mm-hmm. to help the immune system because what it's, you know, that's how bad he's from his surgeries. Wow. So yeah, he does take that stuff. He's on a lot of stuff, right? Um, but nothing illegal and and everything else. So what a story I that mean, was. The not, the not the not taking the test was really the story, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Once you take the test, then you're subject to it, just like everybody else. But yeah. yeah. The the not taking it was was the that was the hot story, and it, I I, just, I think it was incorrect i would say that's fair. yeah i mean again was i in the room when kenny pissed in the bottle no but neither were the people who said he didn't piss in the yeah. bottle so you know uh if you just go logically it makes sense that he took the test so uh all right what's the poll at right now what are we at please hold okay what's the poll on the dirty bike too you're gonna lose that yeah you're losing that one bad yep. bad thank you yeah. <clears throat> yeah thank you uh friendly or not it's still at 50 50. 50 50. Yeah, it's uh-huh. gone up and down a little bit, but it's 50%, 50 of those people are jackasses. And that's out of 112 votes. 112 votes. Okay. Uh, dirty bike, 61% say dirty out of 370. Oh, gaining votes. momentum. So yeah. the that's friendly right. one is what? 50? 50 50. 50. Mm. Yeah. Still, right. still not a. Listen, a I take photos there. and meet people yes. every single weekend. I talk to people, I bro them down. Yep. That was I've the 50%. Seen it. And then fifty percent. I've seen it all, but that's what I'm saying. You're right. you have no problem sharing everything. Like you're a friendly guy, you help people, all of that, right? Uh, but when you do, or when you don't do something, it's almost as bad as when you how much you do help. Well, it's the same. I hope JT doesn't help you at all for <laughs> life swap. Is, is JT it? Dallas Supercross is the week of life swap, and uh, oh wow! So keep you guys it a little are really bit. doing this. Keeper yeah, is it's filling, gonna be so easy. Keeper is JT. filling my role. So I, you, no, know, you know, the he last has, time I sent him to a race, he, JT, he's, he's doing what? He's filling my role. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I sent him to a race, that's my kind of humor. That's what yeah, I'm here I for. Know, I know, I know where he was going. <laughs> the last time I sent him to a race, JT, he interviewed dudes who didn't make the triple crown as his post race. Yeah, podcast. that's interesting. He just was like, "Hey, man, Lane Shaw, how's it going? You didn't make the Fast Twenty Two. <laughs> hey. <laughs> So Who's the guy in the van that drives in the van it. all the time? Your guy. You love him. What? Travels in the van, sleeps in the van. Nagy. Nagy. I met Nagy through that. Awesome guy. I can, I can promise you if you came over and tried to talk to me after I didn't make it, it wouldn't go up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, JT. Thanks for calling in. Fly Racing, flyracing.com. Big things coming from Fly Racing. Big. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're going to knock that little company that you deal with right out of the water. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, easy. Oh, yeah. Easy. Well, I had to give it to Kiefer. He changed <laughs> yeah. his shirt for the show uh, for tonight. They're doing a great job. They are. We know. All right. Thanks, JT. All right. See you guys. See Later. You. That's Jason Thomas, everybody. Hey, I got a question on that poll. Yeah. Which poll, sir? So the friendly. Oh, yeah. The friendly poll. Yeah. So <laughs> normally, if you have a bad outing, outing yeah. or you know you have a bad experience like yelp or something you're mm. mo- way more likely yeah to go on that yeah because you, but, if you're nice and if you're so that could actually lean his in his favor because then maybe if it, if you're you know happy with the experience then you're not likely objection maybe 
Objection. With the reviews, I would say that those are unsolicited. So, yes, people are more... Uh, are they bots? They'll go on there and do it because they're upset. But this one, we are soliciting the votes. So I think you're uh, more likely to get an even score there. Okay. Uh, you all, you're going to help yeah. 50 people. And out of those 50 people, you'll get more like you did shitty versus you did good because you're expected to be good, right? Well, right. I mean, you, listen, I don't expect to, this the poll, that the nice guy poll to be, you know, 90-10 because like everyone's in, idea of an interaction is – you know, I'm busy at the races. So when I'm running around trying to get post-race audio and I'm sitting there and I see uh, Ken Roxon walking away when I could go talk to him, but this other fan wants to talk to me about Toronto Maple Leafs or Pookie or Basset Hounds, I do talk to them. But at the end of time, I always tell these, I'm like, hey, I got to go. I've told people, hey, I got to go. Like, because now is the time where I need to interview yep. riders about this night. And when I interview riders about their night, it helps with the show out. It helps my post-race reviews, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. So sometimes I'll tell people, like, hey, I got to go, man. Like, nice to, nice to meet you. Thank you. I got to go. And But that could piss people off when I yep. feel like I'm doing it the nicest possible way. I, I have no problem with right. that. Now, I, I guarantee you if he ran the poll for Mr. Side, it would be 90% he was a jerk. <laughs> I doubt that. What if there was a monster girl nearby? Or a wife. Oh, then he's not talking to anybody. That's what I mean. Yeah, he's a jerk now. Right, that's what I mean. He'll just head nod you. Head nod. Yep. And that's Out. it. Just just go on. Yep. So, um, listen, I don't even know if... Uh-oh. <sighs> oh, boy. Here's the Michelin read, all right? Michelinman.com forward slash motorcycle. Why are you so bummed out about it? Because uh, our guy, Randy, <laughs> yeah. we, we love FMIP, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. They got sand, mud, medium, soft, medium. I got Starcross 6s on my bike. I really like the front. It's an improvement over the Starcross 5. You've actually told me this off of air, too. I did. I, yeah. I think it's a better tire than the 5. The yep. front is. I act, a rear on a 450, I don't notice that right. much. I'm okay. not probably like you, like good enough to notice. But You the better front, learn because why are going to have to learn. Right. But, you know, there was this whole Michelin scoop Scoops. controversy for the World Vets. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. And I made it right. Yes, you did. I made it right. Yes, you did. And I have not seen... And, okay, so... Oh, really? The man... Really? The man who makes a production out of everything... Mm. Has not made a production... Out of what you did. Out of what I did. Did he get it? <laughs> yes. And he didn't know it was from me. But then I informed him. Okay. And that was a while ago. Mm -hmm. And there's been no production. Wow. This is riveting. And, you know, so... Were you hoping for some kind of production on this one? Well, don't you feel like, you know, the amount of money that I spent to make this right? You, you would expect something. And he took the lovely Brooke with the sushi gift card mm -hmm. when I really wanted him to take Robbie so I can get one of the Robbie's bikes. Mm. So, so he double... Kinda. Yeah, right. I really wanted Robbie to get the free sushi, mm -hmm. therefore I can get the Kajiva. <laughs> okay. That the is that the one that runs or the one that doesn't? Well, gonna, I'm trying to get the one that runs. I'm trying to, well, I'm trying, I'm Robbie sure. was all over the place, right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, he was, was, was all over the place. I'm trying to get you by my Alta. One at a time, all right. Oh, okay. I got right. I got Mr. Sides Yamaha coming. All right. All right. I got a Kajiva, I hope, coming. You're gonna but need a bigger garage. Listen, Michelin's great. Michelin's <laughs> awesome. I don't want to take it's not so much the Michelin thing. It's more of a Randy problem. It's it's a Randy problem. Yes. So 11% more durability than the previous generation. <laughs> you know, 16% <laughs> more traction. Right. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Michelin Star Cross Michelin, 6. Yeah, get some. Just not going to make a production out of it. <laughs> I'm just not going to, you know. <sighs> Yee, that was good. I like that. Wisco Pistons as well. Two-stroke, four-stroke Pistons. They support the uh, Club MX team. Factory Honda as well. Uh, Weiss goes a variety of pistons from reliable forge replacements to the performance-focused Racer Elite Series. Weiss goes even expanded that line now through the USA-made Racer Elite connecting rods, Garage Buddy rebuild kits, clutch and valve train components, and more. Weissco.com to find products for your machine uh, or go to uh, uh, Pulp Mech Show sponsor deals. What's wrong? Uh, excuse me, line, line one. Uh, Mr. Richardson's on the phone. <laughs> line one, Mr. <laughs> he's, no, he's, it's too late for him, I guess. Ah, uh, so Weisco is proud to bring, pleased to bring you our next guest. This gentleman uh, has won. Did he win? He's currently my favorite um, cast member on a show that I'm watching. Yeah, we got to talk to him about that. Did he? Uh, he's gonna hate me. Oh boy. About this. 
You're going to get yelled at. Okay, he won 125 Supercross. He won 450 Supercross. He won. He never won. Did he win 250 GPs? Yes. He did? I thought he did. I should know this, and that's what I'm going to ask him, and then he's going to get all mad at me. He's going to get mad. He's going to get mad at me. David Villeman, brought to you by Wiseco. Wiseco (laughs) Wiseco.com. Coming up on the show, 702-586-7857. We're going to talk to Eric Phipps or myself. Uh, We're talking to our buddy, Le Cobra. Now he's not going to answer because he heard you. He's pissed. (sighs) Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Are you there? Hold on a second. Hello. 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 Okay, back here. David Villeman on the Pulp Mix Show. Hello. Bonjour. Can, Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Bonjour. Yeah, I know. My, my headphones are not working for some reason. I don't know why. Can we just announce him as Mr. Reality of Speed, DV? Oh, boy. So. Uh, you already stop. <laughs> you, you know. I want it to be nice tonight, and then you already <laughs> freaking start, and I, and I have faith in you, Kiefer, that will not get pissed at you tonight. I told him, DV, that you you had to clear the co-host with yeah. me, and Kiefer was fine. I'm fine. I'm no yeah, right. Kiefer is always fine. Yeah, thank Unless you. he show up with the one, uh, big ball 125, but right. yeah, otherwise right. it's fine. But reality is speed. DV, so honestly, though, okay, uh, Colton, uh, Colton, no, Christian no, Craig. You, you can't. Christian Craig. You can't greet me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's greet him with the other. Ask him the question okay, first. Okay, so hold on. You can't start with me like that, dude. Okay, Come I'll on. get into it in a little bit here. All right, so DV, forgive me if I am I was introducing you on the show and I couldn't remember if you had won 250 outdoor GPs in your career. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I got actually, that, yeah, one. Actually, I don't know. I mean, yeah, one. I think I won four. Oh, shit. Three, okay. Yeah. Three or four, and I, I got DQ'd once, and I didn't win. So I don't know. I remember I won my first one in Greece, 99. I only raced one year. So Greece, right. I won. I won um, France, uh, Saint-Jean-d'Angélie. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe only two then. So And I won in uh, Czech Republic, but I got DQ'd. Uh, what would you do? I got a, a, a minute penalty, second moto. Because my bike was too loud. Oh. And I get maybe second or third overall instead of winning the GP. So the only thing you didn't win literally in your career was a 125 U.S. National. You never raced them. But that's the only thing you uh, never uh, yeah, yeah, I couldn't have won one. Right. Because, right. Yeah. But that's the only thing you're missing from winning everything on both sides of the Atlantic. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. I guess 500 GPs, but they weren't right. even. They were done by then. Anyway. Yeah. So. All right. So. Uh, you're working with Marvin Muscan, but first of all, Seth Rarick and Christian Craig have been texting me about reality of speed. And then Kiefer came over today, and now that we buttered him up by saying Yeah, now we're going to get it. Here Kiefer came over and started talking about reality of speed. Is this, is this somewhere recently? Because why would It's Craig... posted on YouTube now recently. Oh, so Craig, Rarick, and you brought it. Literally, I haven't heard about reality of speed with DV or anybody forever, and then in the span of one week. Three people have mentioned it to me. Yeah. No, nah, because somebody posted on uh Vital. Okay. On, on uh Vital. Uh, Vital. Everybody, everybody like uh, once a year, every two years, somebody posts something and that comes back. Okay. But you know, but that's the only thing I get remembered uh, from is very speed or good writing. Uh, good writing. <laughs> Uh, only the crappy things. Only the, crappy, the, good, the good things I've done, nobody remember. Only like the shitty stuff. No, nah, yeah. because I bring up Phoenix all the time when you come in here. Yeah, and I'm over Phoenix also. Okay, but I do bring it up. But <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but so, biggest regret, DV, signing with Buku, of your career? Uh, no, 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 no. No, it's not a regret because at that at that point. Um, I thought that was the best thing for me. So it was Supercross only, which was new, kind of new mm-hmm. then. Yep. And um, uh, and the, the, in my head, it'd be two years and done retirement. So 06, 07, and then I'd be done at 30 years old. Mm-hmm. I was done. But um, 
when uh, I was excited, actually, I would, I, nobody put a gun on my head to sign the deal. So it didn't work out, didn't work out. You know, sometimes right. stuff don't work out. You know, right. uh, Baker Mayfield is going to get released or is getting released from the Panthers, you know. So yep. it didn't work out. Um, but at that, at that time, I thought it was the best thing for me. It was good money. It was easier schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was like... Um, you know, the last two years and try to do something like that. And what people don't understand is I, I wasn't, um, it's not like I didn't have a deal. I turned down. Uh, I just moved a yeah, couple yeah, months Yamaha months wanted ago. you, right? Yamaha wanted you back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I moved a few months ago and I I went to boxes and I have a filing cabinet and I found the offer for 2006 that I never signed. Mm-hmm. I have it. I still have it. So I could have stayed uh so at that point i thought it was the best thing for me to do that it was a two-year deal instead of one it was uh two times the money and um and uh and that's it it yeah. work out no uh, i remember end of, I remember. end of story i rebounded uh with uh uh yamaha 450 national uh, i got a top privateer uh, yeah motor world I with, yeah yeah yeah. Um, so I remember talking to you. Out. I remember talking to you at Glen Helen, and we're like, "Why don't? Why are you leaving?" And you're like, "To me in Gothic, I, I can." Rem- you were sitting on the tailgate of your truck with the white box fan there, and you were like, "You guys, it's double the money, half the work." <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, "I mean, yeah, I, I mean, guess I, so, yeah." We're like, "I guess, like, we get it." But the, you, you were yelling at it, Gothic and I. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I wanted to work. I wanted it to work. But, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but that's it. It's it's you know well, it a bump on the road, I guess. And I had it's, uh, I had a shitty good. business dealing with Michael Holligan also, so I can I can relate. So I, I, it was the same. Is way. he still around? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. The reality show was definitely not a great thing for sure, and you know how those guys can make you look. But pe- but you know. no, but people loved it. They did. You know? They did love and, it, and I, I was too too much DV. I was too much French, too much DV, <laughs> and, and you know, and you know, it, it made for good TV. A lot of people to this day still talk about it. Oh, about, yeah. oh they loved it, and then uh, so I guess something was uh, was good, you know. But we, we, I I told I told Steve that today when I came and I go I I never got to watch it, so I just caught up on all this just recently. We would DVR it. And all watch it at Yamaha and uh-huh. reconvene at the shop uh-huh. in the next day and have a have a field have day. a field day on the reality <laughs> speed and DV. We loved it. Uh, I honestly think if it was in today's age, it would still hold up because it was it was interesting. You know, like even for a guy that's in the sport, I like think, I think the the concept is great. Yeah, you know, I think uh, uh, it's good to be. Uh, it was on TV. Um, you know, I think the concept is. Uh, uh, was ahead of its time, and uh, and it could be good uh, even today. It'd be great today with the the platform we have, and uh, um, it could be great to follow a race team around and and get in the inside of it. Right now, we know what's going on kind of from the outside, and you guys kind of speculate of what's going on on the inside, mm-hmm. but you're not 100 percent sure. Right, you got sources you don't really know. But let's say you have something like. Uh, uh you take star racing for example because there's a lot of stuff going on two teams you know like a lot of a lot of riders and Deegans. you put like a yeah uh, some yeah the Deegans and think about like having a reality show like every week like people would watch it you know like oh, 100%. Uh, uh, yeah yeah so i think uh, the, the concept is very good and uh um somebody should do it seriously yeah yeah we should we should key for ink testing should do it yeah just do uh, it. How's how's it going with Marvin? You're working with Marvin Muscan again. Uh, how's it going? Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, just getting ready. Kind of, uh, you know, he's he's gonna he's gonna be a dad in ten days. He's gonna be uh, thirty three in a few weeks. So, you know, it's it it can be complicated. It's gonna be complicated a little bit. Mm-hmm. But he's writing well. He's always been writing good, and then mm-hmm. we try to. Uh, to make the best of it, um, and uh, yeah, he's writing uh, really well. I'm really happy. I'm, Good. Um, and then the it's he's a easy guy to work with. 
you know. So he's 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 old, but he doesn't have the the state of mind of an old rider. Mm-hmm. More like of a, when he's at the track or working, it's like he's 22 years old. He's still young, you know. Like um, so, it's pretty interesting. It's going well. Good. Smoothly, don't. Uh, so that's that's pretty good. Let me ask you something, DV. You're be a perfect guy to ask this. Um, everyone's talking about the bike and the whoops, and you know, obviously, we know Marv um, is maybe not the best in the whoops. But do you think it is the bike more so than the riders, or do you has that been talked about? Where where are we at with the new bike and the frame and all these things in your eyes? I don't know if I'm the one that uh, I might, might not be the best uh, guy to answer this because I'm kind of uh, I'm halfway inside, halfway outside of it. Um, but yeah, you know, today the, the, the East guys, um, the Baker's guy were at the track and, uh, you know, even Marv, like, whoops were fine. You know, like, uh, uh, Malcolm and Christian, obviously they're good. They were good. And Marvin has been, uh, in my eyes, been improving. So he's, he's been really fast at the track. Uh, um, it's, it seems fine. Um, I think it was more like uh, I I did not really like the bike uh, uh, when Coop was um, uh, was champion the second time. Mm-hmm. I don't think the bike was very good in the woods, like or his setup. Uh, he made it work somehow, um, but um, I think it's it's whoops. It's it's uh, it's a lot that has to do with the rider, though. You know, you can you can give uh, Christian Craig or whatever bike you want. Uh, you, you can give him Matt's bike that's in, in in his garage right now. He's gonna go through the woods fine. It's not you even know, dirty. He doesn't need. He doesn't. Need, he doesn't. Need, did you wash it? Yeah. No. I heard. I heard you don't wash your bike. It's no, not, no, it's no, fuck it's fine. It's not. It's fine. Yeah, um, I heard so you're you're, the, you're a slob with your bikes. Yes. The only thing that I would say, DV, I generally agree with you on a lot of things is, you know, I was just in Paris. The whoops were big. And both Coop and Marv were off the pace compared to the other three no, guys. No, but they're, they're not good. They're, they're not as good as the two, two of the guys. That's it. I think you, you put a Kenny on a Coop's bike, you would be fine. Okay. You know, it's, look at the entrance. You only have to look at the first two whoops. Mm-hmm. And then you look at where the front wheel hit the first whoops and where is the real wheel hits the first whoop on uh, either – Tomac and Roxanne, were, they were the two best ones. Or even Brighton, that was very good too. Yep. And then you look at um, the other guys, and you, you look at where they hit the whoops the first ones. And that's not the bike right there. It's not. You know, a whoop is, uh, is kind of steep and round on top, right? Mm-hmm. So if you hit the, your both wheels where the – the whoops are steep, the bike's going to stop and it's going to go up and down. It's going to rock. It has to. But if you get in and you get on top with the speed, the technique, your legs, and then you bring the bike up to hit with your wheels when the the whoops are flatter, it's like going on a straight line. It's easy. It's just the fact of having the technique to commit with the speed and do like a... You see what they do? They they do like a bunny hop, like a mm-hmm. BMX thing, just yeah, before they... it to get on top. Like if you you do that, you can have whatever bike. You know, you can have Jessica Patterson uh, uh, two fifty RMZ with no helmet, with no and helmet and flip flops, right? Yeah, and then it's be good, <laughs> right? Do you right. understand? Yeah, you I know, get it. So... No, I understand it. Well, we we even we yeah. Steve and I are on a group message with with Christian, and we just asked him straight up, "How is it?" And he said, "Look." I have no problem. It's no problem. He says yeah. he's, you, he's fine. You, yeah. Listen, you, you can give him but, any bike yeah. out of the crate, uh, out of the stock suspension, he's going to go to the roof just fine. Yeah, I think because Christian isn't, rider, isn't a great. He, Christian is. I've, it, yeah. I've done it. I've done it 20 years ago. I, I've went through the roofs with a stock bike. It's fine. You know, you don't want to race it, but you can go through it just fine. I mean, tennis shoes and no helmet. It's been done. Yes, it's been done. That picture's great. Um, I, I've done it with, the, with the, yeah, no gear, with right. a, a girl's bike. 
know. Yeah. So Jessica's bike. Can, can we get can we get DV work with Aiden? He needs it because Aiden just skip a whoop right there. Skip the whoop and broke his wrist. Yeah, that's not Look, good. Uh, did he get hurt? Yeah, he broke his scaphoid. Scaphoid. Oh, that's a that's a bad bone to break. Yeah. But oh. look at um, uh, I don't watch any of uh, uh, I don't listen to podcasts, I don't watch videos. But I was uh, kind of like uh, browsing um, Instagram, and I um, I got a clip from uh, Gypsy Tales. I don't know if uh, I. I, I can mention it on this show, but a clip of uh, Gypsy Tales and uh, Dean Wilson. It was a clip about um, uh, him talking about Baker's Factory and Julie Swole. I don't know if you've seen that, I that didn't clip. Know. No. Okay. Uh, you should look at it, and people uh, listening, I'm sure I've, I've seen it go through, uh, like, uh, go by on social media. And um, he said, like, he. It's all about like the training, you know, so, uh, and, and Gene said it. They were doing laps, doing laps, doing laps. And he felt bad for Julique because he was struggling in the woofs, but he was doing only motos. He never worked on, on doing like uh, a week only technique whoops and, mm -hmm. and maybe like all those things uh, because they wanted to do their laps in, laps in, laps in. And I think it's, it's, it's like that. Just, Just uh, yeah. learn the proper technique go through it have somebody that knows what he's talking about that explain to you how to do it and what it has to be done and do some videos and show all the guys what they do and yeah. uh the, the the guys like uh, let's say we take Marv, it's my guy uh, you take Marv out of uh, paris was not as good as uh roxanne and tomac and you can see uh, there's there's a video shot on instagram too there's a there's three it's a story or a reel or something with the, the three guys. There's uh, Tomac, Roxanne, and Marvin. And then if you look at it, you see exactly why. And that's not the bike. It's just Ryder. Yeah, he's not on top and, of it. Right? Uh, it's, yeah. It's, it, and then if you want to be better in hoops, so just stop doing laps. Just yeah. work on the one yeah. section at a time and, and, and understand what you're supposed to be doing. You can watch the best one. Don't watch Bubba because he's... Is maybe the best, but that's <laughs> right. not a good example. Yeah. Uh, but watch other guys. Watch uh, uh, Sexton. Watch yeah. Roxon. Yeah, we, um, we just had Brownie on here, and I said the same thing. I don't understand how Jaleek can be bad at whoops. It seems physically impossible when you're on a factory bike with factory suspension people and whoop pads at yeah, the Baker's factory. The factory, just, the you know. factory bike don't make you good. No, 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 but I'm just saying like. This is don't and, don't feed this to your listeners. <laughs> don't feed this bullshit. No, what this I'm is saying is fake news. This is fake no. news. <laughs> don't. It's not because you jump on the f factory bike you're going to go through the world. Well, you didn't it's let me finish not. the rest of the sentence. It's 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 the suspension people, the bike, the whoop pads, the Mike Brown facility, facility. Like you should just do whoops all day long. No, nah, but I understand. But yeah. some people have a block. You know, it's tough. I'm working with Marvin, so obviously everybody knows that's his weakness. Uh, and he's already, he's, he knows, you don't have to tell him, he knows, yeah. you know, like, yeah. and there's this block where you got, uh, you know, whoops are dangerous, so you cannot go and, and pin it and see what happens because you're gonna eat shit. Mm -hmm. You have to understand what to do, so you have to go slow. You know, sometimes you have to, to, uh, to work on them like backwards because it is your backwards. So you kind of have the feel of going backwards and see. That's what I did with Dylan for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought when I started with working with him, he was sketching the wolves. He was not scared, but he, he, he was very sketchy. I'm, and I'm like, you're going to eat shit if you keep doing this. Don't do that. <laughs> so what I did is I said, you know what? We're going to do uh, something different. We're going to go backwards. You know, you're going to find the, the timing and the technique with your feet, where to hit the, the height of uh, um, how you have to hit, hit them. And backwards, they they way safer. So we worked like this at the beginning just to find the timing. And you can it's way easier. And then when you're ready and then you can kind of understand how it works, then you can go, you know, the right way. But it, it's don't. I've seen, I read some uh, 
message board like uh, Vital and stuff like this. So, and um, everybody said, oh, yeah, factory bike, factory suspension, factory this. It's not. It has nothing to do with it. It's just, uh, it's just rider, like how to feel and what to do. If, if the rider come from amateur, never blissed whoops, supercross whoops, um, it's not because he's going to go in fast. Uh, going fast is like uh, everybody's, everybody's going to say that. Like, uh, oh, yeah, just commit. No, it's not about commitment. It's about how, to, where to put your front wheel, where to put your rear wheel, where to put your, your feet. And then also some riders nowadays, which I don't like, they don't ride with the, the clutch. Uh, you, you see Roxanne, uh, he goes to the was very good, but his hand is closed on the balls. He doesn't, doesn't even have, um, uh, he doesn't even have like a finger on his clutch, which I don't really like that because you're not really in control. Right. If something happened, you can't really, uh, uh, it's not very safe. If you're good, if, uh, if you're good and nothing happened, it's fine. But if something happened or you want, um, change something or get a, a squat the bike down uh, or if you get out of control, if you don't have the finger on the clutch, it's tough to be safe and to control it. Um, so there's a lot of good guys. Blister was very good with end on the balls, which is it's okay because they're good. But if you're not that good, it's maybe not a good idea to do. Yeah, I didn't but think about all this oh. stuff. All, all this stuff. You have to work on it and, and get the feel of it. I was talking to Brayton uh, about whoops, I think in Paris, maybe somewhere else. And he, I didn't really think about it, but he's like, oh, no, like I, I use that clutch and I'm pulling the clutch. Yeah, you have to modulate it with modulate it. Modulate yeah. it. I'm like, yes, I, I know you have, have your to. finger on it. Yeah. But he goes, oh, no, I'm I'm going in and out in the course of a whoops. I'm like, really? Because I just thought it was about finding your throttle, making sure your front end hit. No, no. because and, yeah. if, if, if you're good, your throttle – is your, is your clutch right you, you, you can manage the power yep. with the clutch if you go too fast you can pull the clutch instead of shutting the throttle off. Uh, if you shut the throttle the front end's gonna drop mm -hmm. but if you keep the throttle on and then just just feather with the uh, with the clutch then you can make the bike slow down a That's, little bit without yeah. the front end dro dropping and also if you wanna uh, sometimes you get kicked you know, like, uh, especially when they they kind of like um, get cupped. The square edges, yeah. Uh, yeah, cupped. You can use the clutch to, so the bike doesn't rebound that much. You make it squat with the clutch, with with yeah. throttle on and clutch, and then you make the the bike squat down. Kind of like if you go on a, a long sweeper that's kind of rough in outdoors, and then you you push on the rear brake to. To make the bike squat and stable right in a whoops you do that with your clutch you, you cannot do that with your real brake right so you do it with the clutch to make the bike to squat down um so all of this is is if you don't know if you don't work on it and you get out of the amateur and you say yeah yeah do some light and do some laps so we do a 15 and uh just commit in in, in the whoops no you're gonna eat shit and get hurt you know <laughs> Uh, so, so are you gonna keep, are you gonna work with A Ray this year then to try to smooth him out? Uh, dude, I saw a uh, Marvin uh, uh, show me a video today. He was at Pala, like a reel on Instagram, uh -huh. and uh, and Marv said it was like, dude, look at A Ray go in uh, into the roof so fast, and I was like, wow, <laughs> yeah, he was like pinning it. <laughs> but, yeah. but I know A Ray's. Uh, uh, it's a rough one. I don't watch. I don't watch Harry anymore. Every no, time I watch him, he eats shit. Yeah, so. yeah. You can't. You can't. You can't watch it. Uh, you mentioned Dylan. You're not working with him anymore. Uh, take us through that a little bit and what happened. And you guys had a lot of success together. Did a good thing. Uh, what was the what was the reason the breakup for the breakup there? Uh, I, I I think Dylan didn't really like that. I I went back and and worked with Mal. First okay. Of all, yeah. For last year. So he was like uh, irritated about this, and um, obviously he wanted to, maybe someone that's with him, that maybe not someone. He wanted me to be more present, maybe in Florida. Um, I spent four weeks there last uh, winter, but uh, out of three months, which is maybe, maybe not enough. 
uh but you know i have also life and uh, i live in california i have kids uh, i have stuff to do here so it's uh, i'm not going to move to tallahassee right so <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and um uh, and then he kind of wanted to do his own thing and uh and that's it okay. so that was it so that was kind of that was kind of it but still, um, still friends and everything, right? Like no, no, nothing personal. Well, I, haven't, I haven't talked to him in a while, but okay. you know, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I don't get emotional about this kind of, kind of stuff. Um, uh, if we can do it, we can do it. If you don't want to work with me, or, or if it's not, if it's not enough, what I've done, I think, for me, um, I, I've done the, the maximum possible, um, logistically possible. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but if it's not enough, you know, I'm not moving there. So, <laughs> and I'm not staying, I'm not getting Airbnb for three months and, and staying over there. So, yeah. um, and I told him like, uh, you know, I'm okay with it and, uh, yeah. uh, I wish him the best. I think he has a lot of potential. Uh, uh same thing. He needs to work, uh, on, on his, uh, uh, technique in supercross a little bit to be a little more successful. Uh, just to ride with the, the best guys like the Sextons and, and, uh, Maybe Eli Anderson, all those guys. Um, I think he's a little bit behind technically. Um, the rest, he has the speed, the corner speed, the the the, the, the fitness, everything else he has. He just have to get a, to, to be a little better at um, riding supercross. He, uh, Did you? Uh... Uh, sorry, so hold on. Uh, I was doing the commentary for Paris uh, with Paul Malin, and Malin was like, "Why do you think Ferrandez isn't here?" And I'm like. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe the check just wasn't big enough for him, right? I just made like an offhand comment. Dylan texts me like two minutes later. Oh, shit. He's like, I don't care about the money, but they wouldn't let me ride the 23 Yamaha, so I'm not riding my 22 in Supercross anymore. And the money doesn't matter. And I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> yeah, but he's not going there for free. Don't don't worry about it. No, I know. But, I, but I, I mean, I just as an offhanded joke. Like, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> but I think the check was big because they had to – he was the first guy they called when the Lawrence brothers um, right. um, couldn't up. go. Right. So, yeah. So, he was the first call they made. Yeah, I just thought and, it was funny. Uh, for, <laughs> and from what I've heard, like, they did not even know, they did not have enough parts or they couldn't build a, a 23. Yeah, yeah, so, star guy said yeah. they couldn't, couldn't do it. Uh, hey, DV, yeah. I was there in Florida last month watching Dylan ride a little bit, and I noticed his bar specs different. It's not as tall. Did you notice that at all? Uh, uh, he changed in uh, halfway through Supercross last year, I think. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember yeah, he ran he's, pretty he's, tall, he's a, tall, tall bars before. Yeah, he was on a Wyndham ball, so which that's what he used in Europe, a 998, a rental 998, which is like a, win, a pro taper Wyndham. Um, when he first got to the US to start racing. He rode the bike with whatever balls were on there. Mm. And uh there was like the nine the nine 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 like super straight and low. And I didn't really like the way he ride like he was riding with it. I'm like, did you did you use those balls in uh in uh in Europe? He says, No, I am just riding what they put on the bike. I, I, <laughs> and, and um uh so I I put a we measure, we change like uh, ball mounts, we put like lower ball mounts to compensate. And um, uh, basically the 999 is the Carmichael really flat and low. Yeah. But yeah, like a 15 millimeter um, uh, risers on the ball mount. Uh, we took them out and then we put the, the wind down, which is a 998, um, uh, the bend uh, with no spacers and and we measured the height the overall height and it was a few millimeters lower with the high balls than mm. it was with the low balls so on the, with the naked eye you say oh yeah those balls are too high but uh the ball mass were really really low so it was actually lower than the other balls and th that's the same thing people see that oh those balls are too high and they're not too high they're lower so people don't know shit. That's one. <laughs> uh, DV, did you get a Tesla? No, uh, I rode my friend's Tesla to oh. go to dinner. Okay. Kiefer loves Tesla. Uh, that's, it's amazing. It's really fun to drive. 
Yeah. I uh, I loved it. I, yeah. I might go buy one this week. Yeah. Screw it. <laughs> Screw fun. the Ridge Line. I'm gonna go to CarMax, sell the Ridge Line, and go oh, buy. Oh come on! Go buy a Tesla. Come on. Did uh, what kind did you drive, DB? Uh, uh, it's the Long Range Model uh, Three. Yeah. Model Three, three series. Long Range. Yeah. What do you think yeah, of the new Corvettes, DB? Oh boy. Uh, they're great. They look they're good, great. right? Yeah, and they're very um. You know those uh, exotic racing and all those yeah. uh, places where you can rent uh, right. and do a few laps with all those uh, luxury cars? Mm -hmm. um, that car is the the car that has the best lap times with um, uh, regular guys. Regular mm -hmm. people have the better lap times than, than Lambos and Ferraris and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it, it's a great buy from, uh, from people from what I've heard people in this uh, industry, it's uh, quality and price can beat it. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard too. Yeah, God. yeah. Yep. and performance. Performance, yep. quality, price, can't, whatever. Can't beat it. it well, we'll it's a very good combo. Yes. Talk about that later, I guess. But uh... So who's who doesn't like the Corvette? Kiefer? No, it's not if I don't like it. DV, uh, I can't talk about it right now. But we're gonna get it. Let's, why, let's, why let's focus on. It? Let's why? focus on more DV specific stuff. Okay, go ahead and ask DV something. Uh, what do you got for him? DV? I'm gonna co-host this. I'm actually gonna host the show February 26th. Will you be my co-host? Steve will not You're be gonna here. You're gonna host a show. You're gonna host at, at a Steve's house. Yeah, Steve and I are doing each other's lives for a week. He's gonna do what I do for a week. And I'm gonna do what you he gonna does. Do your for wife too? <laughs> no, no wife swap. Just life. You are not allowed to bang Pookie. I. Well, we okay. don't worry about it. Why not? It might be fun. She might want it. <laughs> no, she probably would, but I'm not allowing it. Yeah, no. I, Listen, why not? It's can we focus on the show? Let's focus on the Sharing show. Sharing is caring. Who cares? It's fine. You know. It's not like she did, she did not sleep with somebody else before you. No, I think you know, I think okay. I was her I think I was her first. I really do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Hey, you might be. Yeah, uh, she might be your first, but not the other way around. <laughs> so February twenty sixth, I'm gonna go. I'll be here after Dallas. I want you to it's be after the Dallas Supercross. Yes. Okay, just uh, let me know. Uh, I can book. Uh, I'm planning to go to Dallas. Okay. So I can just do uh, yeah. Dallas to DFW to Vegas. Uh, Vegas and then uh, let's do it. Okay. There it is. There's We're the gonna, co host, can everybody. We, can I play with Pookie, uh, Mathis? No, no, no. No, no. Don't ask Mathis. It's my week, so I'll, I'll say yes or no. Life swap, not wife swap. <laughs> Life. L I F E. So. Uh, uh, you don't know. I uh, uh, know what they say. You know what they say? When the cat is out. You know, <laughs> when the cat is you know out. what they say. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, we're not talking about cat now. We're more talking about pussy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or if you're a little Let's bitch. do it. French, the, I'm in. The French I'm in their sayings. All right, DV's in. All DV's right. in. All right. Good, good to know. All right. Oh, man. Top that, Steve. Well, that was a good move. Right? Bookie, yeah, yeah. I, want, uh, move. I want some uh, some uh, very uh, uh, some soft cookies. Yep, no problem. I want some uh, some uh, chicken and uh, quesadillas. Okay, no problem. <laughs> she makes some, Pookie makes the best ones. And uh, we'll get you first class from Dallas to Vegas. No problem on that. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Kiefer Hink or Pulp MX? No, it's Pulp well, MX we, money. This is what uh, this is. I'm just Steve for the week. No, uh, no, no, no. We just fly you, you Southwest. Have <laughs> you have his credit card too? Yeah, well, it's, swapping it's, credit cards. It's my life. It's yeah. life swap. Right. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> uh, David Villeman on the show. Brought to you by Wiseco DV. Wiseco Pistons. Wiseco.com. Do I get a cut? No, again, you still don't get a cut. But they're bringing you Wiseco. Uh, please check them out. Garage Buddy Rebuild Kits as well. Clutch and valve train components. Uh, all right, anything else for DV? Hey, what, what's uh? Do we know anything about Roxanne? Where's he going? Uh, Hep Suzuki, I believe. You believe, or is it done? Mm, yeah, I don't it's... think it's done, done. But yeah, I think it's done. How do you feel about that, DV? Do you think uh, that's a good move for Kenny? Besides, uh, no. put them put the money aside. No. Put the money aside. What no, do you no, think? No, 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 uh, no. Uh, Kenny looks the, the, the most happy, the, the, the best is, is looked in Supercross. It's not really Supercross, uh, U.S. Supercross style tracks where we saw him in uh, the, the two World Supercross plus in Paris. He looked great in Paris, great in the Wolves. He's been uh, 
complaining about his bike and Honda guys has been complaining about their bikes in the whoops when they get cupped out and soft and they, they don't feel right. Um, but Kenny looks great. He looks great on the, on the Honda, which is uh, like a third party suspension. And who I don't I don't even know who does the suspension the engine. But whatever they, they did on that bike seems like it's working for him. So, and with a little bit of fitness, I think the Kenny we saw this off season is ready to battle for a championship. Are you? Do you agree? I don't know about a championship, but winning races, yes. Yeah, winning races. But yeah. if you win races, you're battling for a championship, right? True. If you're yeah. winning, if you're winning races, you should be a podium guy at the next race, right? You're True. not going to be. 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so knowing this, what would you change? What would you change uh, other than money? You know, so if he change and go somewhere else, it's because maybe uh, uh, I don't think that that on the team can afford him anyway. So you might write for no money, just gear and drink and bonuses. I'm sure they can find bonuses at Honda some kind of bonus program that's uh, appealing for him. Um, but he's riding so good. He's, he's, he looks happy, like, to ride and everything. Like, what would you, you know, a month before the race, just say, you know what, I'm going somewhere else and uh, diving and supposedly be the, the world's bike on the market. I don't know. I never raced one, but they don't, they don't look that good, you mm. know? So, I don't know. That's just my... My opinion. If you if you really based on uh, what can bring me the best result uh, after I see him ride this off season on the on the Honda, I'm like, dude, what would you change? You, you're looking great. You're happy. You're mm -hmm. smiling. You're winning races. You're passing Tomac uh, on his bike. That's that's that that won the two championships this year. Uh, what would you change? Yeah. What would you change? But that's just my opinion. You know. I don't know. Do you think it's going to be as competitive on the Suzuki? Um, I, I think he's going to be near where he was just because that bike hasn't changed much DV, and I think he's used to that bike. And out of all the bikes that is closest to Honda feel as far as chassis, I think the Suzuki is it. Yeah, I, don't, I, I haven't. The last Suzuki I rode is with you on a Dirt Rider uh, shootout, and I did not get the cover. <laughs> That's oh, right. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Very upset about that. DB yep. was, yeah. Good job, Kiefer. Yep. Uh, I'm still beat on about this one. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing some. I was doing some crazy whips. I'm like, ah, for sure he's gonna put me on the cover. Nope. Nope. Wasn't my call back then, DB. I wasn't the I, guy. I, I, Unbelievable. I don't, I, don't, I don't care, bro. I'm just. I love to bring in bringing it up but i don't really care <laughs> i know uh thanks dv thanks for calling in as always good to talk to you and uh can't wait to can't wait for the show february 26th everybody february, february 26th it's on my calendar yep there yeah. it is all right we're gonna and then after we're gonna do uh we're gonna take pookie out yep oh, we know the we go gambling she likes to go yep we we, we know like, all the good stuff she likes strip clubs so We'll see you guys. Yeah, there. that's yeah. What, right. I know. That's right. why I said that. <laughs> okay. <all right>. Okay. <laughs> hey, we'll FaceTime you. Thanks, you know. Thanks guys. <laughs> when, when you're in uh in the crackhead city of uh Victorville <laughs> or over there. Easy. Uh, easy. Easy. Uh, Me and well, Aiden are Matt playing Madden. Gonna, no, no, Matthew's gonna be like smoking crack and shit, <laughs> and we'll be like at the strip club with Pookie. That'd be great. It's life swap. I don't smoke crack, D V. <laughs> Everybody does in this period. Well, <laughs> Everybody. They all do. <laughs> Everybody rich. Everybody smoke crack. <laughs> no, uh, poor people smoke crack. You know. uh, all right. Thanks, uh, thanks, DV. Appreciate it, man. We'll talk soon. All right. Later. later. All right, see you later. Uh, that's David Villeman, everybody. Brought to you by Wiseco. You know what's, hey, you know what's awesome is I can have DV co-host and he'll just carry the whole show. Like I really, oh, that was in. a good move. Yeah. Right? Was, like, I was like, I dude, see that one this is gonna be the like easiest that. show ever for me. Yeah, I'll let I'll, I'll let DV oh, go yeah. on rants all all the for the four hours, and yeah. it's gonna yeah. be a great show. Yeah, yeah. just Absolutely. keep just keep poking him like yeah. you did Steve, and right, he'll be good. Right. Yeah. Uh, Race Tech rant. Pulp twenty twenty two is the code to save Race Tech. Mm hmm. Okay. You want, you all right, go ahead, Eric. You got you had. I get to start. Yeah, let's go. It's a mini rant. That's fine. And I love Race Tech. I use Race Tech. Yeah, Race Tech. Good guys. Pulp twenty two. Great guys. Yep. 
Um, can I paint picture a little bit? Yeah. Just sure. A little lead in? Yeah, absolutely. So you were gracious enough to like, let's go on a mountain bike ride. Yeah. <laughs> Loan my son, Brock, a, a uh, bike. Yeah, a we're taser. all on e-bikes. Yeah, yeah. So we're just, taser. you know, cruising out there and we saw ORW. And, mm -hmm. and on the way, I just, all I did was ask a question. I just said, <laughs> what's that dinging? Uh-huh. And you said, oh, that's the, that's the seatbelt. Yeah. I don't, I don't wear a seatbelt. Yeah. And so then it led into why don't you wear a seatbelt and mm -hmm. and I said you're a you know you're a, go, go you're a stats guy don't so interrupt you, the rest no but, but but my my explanation on not wearing a seatbelt really doesn't make much sense no it makes zero that's yeah. why I think everybody should hear it okay though, yeah. yeah so you're you're because so I know you're I know you're big into stats and so you were telling me that a buddy of yours who's a fireman which I respect I yeah told you that. long I respect time that. fireman right yeah. fireman Dave. He, Farman Ron. Okay. He's got numbers that back up that it's actually. Well, he doesn't really have numbers. He just has. Well, he saw, you said he had data. All right, no, 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 no. He just has his. Uh, Theory. His own, like, uh, numbers that he's done uh, in his head. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you told him, you mentioned that, yeah, without a seatbelt on, that right. you were actually. My, in his opinion, you were maybe better off in some wrecks to, my be, buddy, to be thrown no, from the vehicle. Well, my buddy Ron, fireman <laughs> for forever and uh, moto guy. Uh, doesn't wear a seatbelt and says this is he's a farm he says that he's seen as many people get hurt by not getting thrown from a vehicle as getting thrown from a vehicle like he's like sometimes the seatbelt's the worst thing for you it traps you in there and you just keep rolling or whatever whatever so he says in his eyes it's 50 50 on whether you're going to be saved by a seatbelt so he doesn't wear one because it's 50 50 okay fireman rods Theory. Right. And then you went from there, we went to more stats of, you said, well, I sometimes wear it. Yeah. So if I'm, on, I'm, if I'm on a long drive, like if I go to California, yeah. I put my seatbelt on. But then that, you've heard all the facts. Yes. I mean, the accidents close happen to, close yeah. to home, right? Yeah. So, I'm that, doing, you know, so that blew that one all out. I'm so doing 100, just, you I'm know. doing, you know, 80 miles an hour on the way down. So I feel like 80 <laughs> miles an hour is fast. I should put a seatbelt on. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that, I mean, so that, is that your rant? That was it. Yeah. No, oh. it was minor. That was yeah. it. The, the, the I mean, it went further into it more. Keith has got yeah. a lot to say about that. Well, I, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. No, we did. We had like a, but it might have went somewhere because on the way back, he clicked the seatbelt on. Mm. So it wasn't. And he meant, you know, he made mention that he was clicking it. Yeah, I, I did it as a, you know, yeah, it was just like, a, yeah. yeah, it was just like, here I go. Hey, hey I'm there. clicking just, my seatbelt, yeah, Eric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's yeah. exactly what I did. Just well, let you know. I put it on for you. Made right. a big note about it. Because. Yeah. Sorry. I don't even hear the dinging in anymore. Dude. Like seriously, it's like a dog whistle, right? Like I don't even hear it. Like it's. It is pretty. It is fairly quiet. I yeah. mean, compared to some of them, yeah, for sure. So but it's it still is like ding. Fucked. Ding. I hate that. Noise. I know you do. Ding. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like ding, and it. Just it's not all the time. It goes. It goes. It, it's <laughs> no, every it five gives minutes. A pause. Yeah, yeah, it's every five minutes. It's not. Did he, get, he didn't give you the whole. You gotta be mentally tough thing. No, I didn't does? get that. No. No, no I, I've mentally done. I used tough. that one before too. Yeah. Mentally yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah. Race tech rant. I was waiting Eric for Mark to do the dinging, but he didn't. It didn't do it. He didn't. I, I I had the remember when we put it on the sound drop board and yeah. I was doing it, and of course he got very upset as soon as I started. But he, of course he heard that one. Yeah, that he was. He got mad as soon as we started playing. Even it. Eric says it's quiet. So like two times that I've seen him really upset on this show. Out of all the years I've been here, I know two him. times. I know him. I know yes, both. you know both of those. Yep. Okay. Okay. Race so. tech. <laughs> Race tech rant. <laughs> so my rant. Nice job, Tom. Is uh. Once again, I'm sure Steve has told everybody, he's on many, many group messages, and I don't know how he keeps up with all these. Yeah, but a lot. Very important people, too. Heather, Pookie, Steve, and I are on one, and we get this random text in the middle of the day that says, Pookie will not let me have a Corvette. And I'm like, thank you, baby Jesus, for Pookie, because I don't think you should have a Corvette. You are a 48 48, mm -hmm, yeah. 48 year old media member of the motocross industry. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like your midlife is happening right now. Yeah, and I think this, this, this Corvette yeah. is a midlife cry for help. <laughs> but Steve Mathis rolling in a Corvette, it's not you. And it looks super douche. Okay. So hold on. I'm not finished. <laughs> so he goes on to say how I don't have anything for me, I want something for me. This is Corvette thing is for me. But I brought up the a great piece of information for him. Why don't you buy a van, fix it up how you want, 
You can have your mountain bikes in there. You can have whatever it is that you do, dirt bikes, mountain bikes. You can keep them in there. You can back it up against the garage. Ain't no one stealing shit out of it. You don't have to worry. You can travel to California because you don't have to buy a huge van. You can just a 144 box, have it all set up really nice. That sounds like a s- fucking bitching. Custom upfits, just totally do the whole thing up. Because you've, you've, you, you've really set yours up really nice. Well, I just so refuse to go up really there. really great work on that. Yes. Yeah. So... I got another rant oh. after you. Go ahead. So I would say, Steve, just get a van, fix up really nice, and you're actually going to use it. You're not going to drive the vet. You're, you're not going to dr- drive, drive it. I wouldn't drive it that much. I wouldn't drive it that much. Right. So what are you going to do? You're going to be one of those guys that buys a nice car and just lets it sit? That's lame. It's not, well, it's not I, practical. In certain moments, you take it out, and you f- you, it feels pretty good. Maybe you take it on and up to make uh, sure Mount the Charleston. Charleston. And then here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. You're gonna, take it to Mount Charleston. Take you, it to Anaheim. Take it, you know, take it around. You're going to speed without your seatbelt on and have a bad accident. Oh, okay. You already know that? No, I don't know oh. that for a fact, but that could happen more than you could in a van. So I just feel like Steve doesn't fit the Corvette. I probably don't. I'm tubbier. I'm older. I get it. But it's a the new ones are bitching, like DV says. For the price and the looks and the performance, they're really good. I know the Corvette is a you know, midlife crisis thing. Yes. I get it. I understand that. But they're bitching. No, no other car that you would want, like a badass Mustang or something like that. A Mustang's worse. What? A hundred percent. The Mustang is a worse. A Shelby Mustang is worse than oh for my God. A, an older guy driving a Mustang. Stop. Because at least the Corvette's like pricier and nicer. A Shelby Mustang is insane. It's, it's not a, a it's, Corvette. It's muscle it's car. A it's like a, a, it a has Corvette's a, not a muscle car. A mid-engine. It's a douchey muscle car. It's just it's just not. It doesn't have heart. It doesn't have a, like a a heartbeat. Like a like a Shelby. No, it's Mustang. a Chevrolet. That's the heartbeat of America. <laughs> it's not Bob Seger. Chill down. <laughs> Marks, new Corvettes are pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're fine. Yeah, whatever. Do you know what a Shelby Mustang is? Mark? I know what a Shelby Mustang is. Yes. Would you rather have that or a Corvette? Uh, probably a Shelby Mustang. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, neither one of them are high on my list. Well, I'm, I'm not getting either because you're, you're, you're either a Ford or a Chevy guy to start with too. So yeah, that yeah. plays yeah. into. I'm a not getting bit. a van because it's going to get broken into and it's. It well, why, why why do you say that? That's what my wife says. And there's nowhere to park it, she says. Yeah, there is. You back yeah. it up against your, your garage. I, I, I don't think that's acceptable. I don't know. You can't park a, a vehicle in, in your driveway? That, those are more money than Corvettes. By the time you do them up in the back and everything, you could those get things a deal are on expensive, a, no, man. stop. Those vans are 60K. Okay, let's say you They're spend 60K. You spend 60K, you, you actually use it. They, you know, they hook you up. Right. They're 60K. You'll use it. And a Corvette will make you money. They're, they're making good money. They, they appreciate the cars. Hey, buddy, I'm going on a mountain bike ride. Oh, yeah, I got the bikes in there. Just come on. Let's go in the van. Let's go. I got a truck for that. It works out great. Race yeah. Tech Rant, everybody. That's a Race Tech Rant. That's it. All right. Am I still getting my Lambo, or is that? No, the, that Lambo's, deal off? the Lambos are off. <laughs> Lambos are off. Uh, this gentleman, Mr. Side, he's on one. You all right? Hello? Mr. Sock. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's David Bradshaw's bike. I just fucked up. <laughs> did, did, did you, did you <laughs> look at Mr. Side's like Instagram old. for his shed? Oh, uh, I just did, yeah. Did you look at his trophies? Yes. Dude. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, they're, they're out there. Just for everybody to see. Dude, they're like, out there. You think Mr. Side was like. Anybody want to come to my shop? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Other, otherwise known as the championship. Yeah. Coming to my championship hall. Forgot to ask That's DV. Corvette, I guess. I f- forgot to ask DV at eight hundred if he had eight hundred dollars. <laughs> I yeah, I doubt I I seriously doubt if he has eight hundred bucks. DV. Right. Uh, I'm sure he's good. Uh would you buy a Corvette? Fuck yes I would. Oh my god. Well, you had long I'm a hair. Guy. This guy I've says, been a big guy since I was like 12. This guy said, uh, turn off Kiefer's mic, get the Corvette. Mustangs are garbage. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> He's a Twitter. Chevy guy for sure. Bill on Chevy guy. Said that. Yeah. Eric sort of supported my vet idea. You did? It was, it was semi. He understands I understand. It. I, understand. He understands I don't it. necessarily go for the Corvette, but I understand the midlife uh, crisis part. I don't it. have anything for me. A van wouldn't be for you? Yeah, a van would, but. You know, so Paul Parabino is selling his van. Buy Paul's. Dude, again, $75,000. Yeah, 
I'm not saying it ain't worth it. It's a beautiful van. It's everything you would want in one of these vans. But you're going to pay $75,000 for a van? On something that you would use, correct. On $75,000 on something that you don't use. I don't understand people that buy vests and don't drive them. I'll put a hitch on it, pull my motorcycle to the track. Fuck, I'm driving that car. Now that is the epitome of... I wouldn't do that. Steve oh my doesn't God. leave Why don't just put your fucking tape your house. trophy on the back hood of the Corvette too? Why yeah, don't there you go. I'm exaggerating it, but I would drive it a lot. What'd you say? If I could afford a vet, I'm driving it. I, I was saying you don't. There's a mile radius around your house that you don't leave, so I don't understand where you're going to take this you. vet. Thank well, you. I ain't going to drive it. It's not going to be my everyday driver. But Pookie and I go for dinner. We'll take, get in the Corvette. Take it to Starbucks. Sure. Starbies. Uh, Why don't you take the I go van, to California. go to dinner, bang on the way home in the van, and then uh, go yeah, home. Oh, yeah. That's, 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 yeah. Why not? You got a bed in the back, yeah. bang. Just like My wife's sake. a woman. She's not some whore. I know that. You're okay. banging your wife. You're not whoring her out. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> whores bang in the back of vans. Oh, my God. Not classy Role ladies. Role play a little bit. Not classy ladies like Pookie. Oh, boy. There's zero chance if I said to Pookie, hey, you want to bang in the van? She'd be like, why don't we just go home? <sighs> That's what she would say. Life swaps coming up. Well, you're Hopefully, I have, I have a van. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Steve. Uh, let's let's recap the week's events. <laughs> Mr. Side. Hello. Mr. Mr. Mathis. Are we? Uh, what's the wrap-up show this week? What do we got? <laughs> let's just get to we it. We got Kellen Brower and Roto Moto. Oh, that's a heavy hitting. That's Racer a X. That's a Racer X wrap-up right yeah. there. Roto sold out, huh, Marks? Roto took the Unbelievable. mainstream money. He's out. A little bit of money. Yeah. You throw a little money his way, and he's yeah. just, yep, Mainstream money, Roto. <laughs> yeah. You, you know. It happens. What, yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, we'll, we'll you, know, our you know who you could use a van now? This man on the phone. You want to know why? Van. Because this man is single now, and he's ready to bang. <laughs> I got a big back seat in a Tundra. So all these ladies that listen to Pulp MX, I know there's a shit ton of you. This guy right here, dark. He's ready for some van action now. So you're 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 solo, Mr. Sai. Yeah, yeah, I'm single, single. Yep. Deep single. If there's any East Texas ladies listening to this you wanna show. You want to be Dark Side's rebound? Yep. Let's do it like a Dark Side <laughs> dating game right here, right now. Yep. Uh, you are the Vital MX dating game? Should we try to get him a chick? Or? Yes. I think we should change his life that way, too. All right. So yeah. if you're hey. single yes, and you're or looking not. for a top media member right. in the sport of motocross. Great haircut. New hair. He's got a bike. Got a badass shop with got trophies. got shop with trophies. <laughs> yep. Likes Corvettes with trailers. Yep. He's your guy. Man, all D you guys do is talk shit. We're pumping you up right now. What are you talking about? He's he's what got a new. Hey. Look at, I see a trophy behind Steve right there. What's what's the problem with my trophies, man? He can't find his fucking fifth place plaque, so what's, I don't know what he's talking. What's my trophy behind me? What trophy? There's a trophy to your right. Oh, that cup. What's what that cup? Summer cross. Oh, the, what is that? Oh, that that's uh, a that German supercross with Kelly Smith. There it is. So it's not his trophy. Oh, so yeah. yeah. Um, listen, Mister Side. Uh. Let's well, get you doing this. Yeah, let's get you, let's get you. So, any ladies out there that would like a date that live in the Texas area, or even if it's California or Nevada, we'll make hey, it happen. Does Yar Yar have any friends? Yar Yar? No. Okay. We're, we're That's, out. Chicks don't like chicks, dude. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll, so. I'll be in Cali all of January. Okay, January Supercross time. You want to get taken out on a date? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Dark will take you out on some dinner. Maybe a movie. You can go see Avatar. Movies Avatar. are no good for dates. No? Because you don't talk. Hey. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be less than $800. Bowling? Right? Yeah. Bowling, less than 800 for sure. Okay. Um, I, will oh, I will pay yeah. for the I will pay for Ladies, the, you may have date. to pay for this date. <laughs> <laughs> so. You guys are fucking. And, then he'll, he, and if he tries to pay you back, it'll take him uh, <laughs> two weeks, two to three weeks to pay you back. There is a payment plan on your dinner. Hey, yeah. No, wait. Time out, time out. I, I was on hold with, or I was talking to Talon, I guess, when this went down, and somebody told me you were bitching about this. You pick some stupid app that only has a $500 limit per week or okay. whatever, so I had to pay you. That was on okay. you. Okay, sir, would you like me to blow you out one more oh, time? Oh, don't do it, Dark. Oh, you cracked the door. Don't do it. The stupid app goes off your bank balance on how much it lets you send. So I don't have that limit. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Side, I send thousands of dollars via that app. So your limit is 
due to your bank beep, balance. Beep, 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 beep. Well, so once again, that my my budget wasn't as big as yours. Look at your ceilings. But when you complain about the app, it's only it's not a stupid app. It's based on it. what you have. Dark. When you do a dig, okay. you got to have some back. You got to know what you, you're doing. You didn't know what you're well, doing, look. Mr. Side, and <laughs> no, I just that is fair, but. It, it's not my fault that I could. Well, maybe it is. I guess it is my fault that I don't get paid as much as you do. So the Listen, gentleman, you're screwing this date up. You keep the, fucking talking. You're not going to get any chicks. He sends me five hundred dollars for a Paris hotel room, and then says I can only send five hundred dollars in twenty four hours. I'll send the rest to you. And fucking crickets, dude. Crickets on the other hundred and eighty. <laughs> Nothing. And then it was <laughs> tw- two weeks later. He's got a bat. Two weeks, later, two weeks later, I'm like, excuse Bullshit. me, Mr. Side, one week. <laughs> what about the $180? Are we just like, and he's just like, oh, oh uh, sorry, you busted me. Here, I'll send you the money. Wow, yeah. that's not like you. <laughs> Were you trying to get away okay. with that? Hey, no. no that's, he's full of shit, Kiefer, you know this. I was going to say, that doesn't but, sound like you. No, of course not. You know what else is not like me? If Dom wants to ride our paper on me, I'll read it and I'll go to lunch with the dude. Right. Yeah. Well, we know. We know we're not built like Steve. We got Listen, that. Listen, Mr. Side. I realize that you could totally throw me under the bus right now, but I know you won't because we're true friends forever. <laughs> we ride and die together. <laughs> He's so, your ride and die. Yeah. Because you can vouch for me talking to fans. I I, I can't, won't lie. I have seen you do it many, many times, even when in a hurry to get to a press conference. Thank you. But so, when he when you. he doesn't do it, but when yes, he when, when he doesn't do not, it. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I say when you're not friendly, it's pretty fun friendly. Yes, thank you. It's both sides. It's extreme on both sides. Yeah. And with your poll, you're kind of like, oh, it's 50-50. If you're anything over about 5% negativity on friendliness, you got a problem. Oh, that's a good one. It is not that hard to be nice to people. I told you before, <laughs> Dark Side, those polls are full of shit. Well, you can't me, believe those this. polls. You can't we, believe those you know, Let's focus on getting his pole smoked, okay? Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> All right, so California ladies. Yes. If No, for reals. If you're in California and you want to go on a date with Jamie, Kiefer will pay for the date. Yes. Under 100? I 500. I don't, I don't need anybody to pay for a date. Under 500? Yes, we clearly know that you do right now. So we'll pay for the date and hit up I'm Mr. Sutton. Su- I'm no, out. just I'm calm. Out. Just calm down. Relax. Can you borrow your Corvette when you take it <laughs> yeah. out? Wow, I'm not allowed to get a Corvette. <laughs> no. Right, Listen, I'll pay for the date because I Heather want. Heather and Pookie and Kiefer are not friends of mine. <laughs> they don't want the best for me. Let's just let's just listen to me. It's not a, it's not a charity thing. I want you to go on a date with a nice chick. Look, all right. Let's just do the dinner. We're gonna have the girls email what? What do we got? What do we need to do, Steve? Email you? No. Yes. No, I don't want to deal with these people. Steve at pulpmx.com. Fuck. <laughs> if you're a lady, give us a picture of yourself. Okay? That seems rather shallow. No, no, it's not. A picture of yourself. Do we, we don't know what they look like, right? Dark side has some taste. I mean, we, we'll throw a picture up Dark Side if they don't know what Dark Side looks like. Dark Side MX, what is your Instagram? Uh, Dark Side MX3. Okay. And then tell us your hobbies, age. What you like to do and... Breast size? No, that's shallow. Okay. Okay. I was asking for a friend. <laughs> and then uh, we'll we'll pick a winner, okay. and you guys can go out in between what? Dark. We'll pick a winner. Yeah, we're going to have so many <laughs> entries. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll pick a winner between what? A1 in the second round? Yes? Yeah, that's fine. I'll, yeah, I'll be out there the whole, the whole month. So, so uh, here's what's so going to happen. You dudes listening, because there's no chicks listening. Your, your <laughs> wives or girlfriends have friends? Have them... Email a submission. Do they have to call him Mr. Side? Or Dark. Or Dark? Yes. They're not allowed no. to address him by Jamie? No. Okay. Dark. Okay. Dark. Yes. Okay. So This is going to go so bad. No, it's not. It's going to go great. Steve Dude, at pulpmx.com. Okay. Ju- that's not my real address. So why don't you tell him. It's not? Just use the contact form at pulpmx. Okay. Contact yeah. form at pulpmx. Right. Okay. That's right. it. That's what I got. All right. And also on the line here, uh, speaking of. Uh, we got the first one. Of Vital MX. Michael Lindsay. Here we go. What's up, ML? Oh, uh, just in, enjoying it. You guys say off-season shows don't have much to them, but I listened to the first little bit of this one. I mean, it went from a, a six with uh, with the original talk <laughs> to an eight to the burnout to Jamie jumps online. He just goes instantly to the rev limiter with that song. Yeah, he was very aggressive. Yes. 
such an aggressive intro to the show. I mean, all time, but definitely aggressive. And Michael, you are the one to blame for all this for not arranging the hotel room properly. You, you started him. every all of hey, this. Hey, hey, I did. I hey, I'll take my eye heat on this. I screwed up, but but let let's continue one more one more screw up that hasn't been brought up yet. He hits me up. Hey, it's not paid for. Okay. They had already charged my card for it, which was bullshit. But I turn around, I'm like, okay, I'll send you like seven or eight hundred dollars. You have plenty of money to pay for roommates. Oh yeah, I forgot about do. this. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and and Mister again, whether it's his shitty bank or he doesn't know how to instant transfer on Venmo, <laughs> the money gets stranded for three or four days for it hits his account when you because hit instant. It always I don't. Instant. Oh my god, I don't Venmo, <laughs> but apparently there's a button that says instant transfer, right? On yes. Venmo. Yes. <laughs> transfer function he somehow i hit it but it was two or three days later i think he hit the two to three day like normal transfer and then you're talking about not getting your money cool i'm still waiting for my remainder back from that money i gave him for the mr trip. side what is going on what? <laughs> i was yeah i was listening to that today wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> hey Hey, Mr. Uh, Sock. Like, God dang we're it. Gonna go down, we're going to go down this road. Where's my expense money that I've been trying to get for three pay periods? <laughs> I we screwed out his expense, his, his uh, couple hundred bucks for his last expense report. Oh, uh, this, this is. <laughs> it's a whole thing. This, these, these two are perfect for each Jesus. other. These two are great for each other. Oh, my God. It's fantastic. Right. It's great. Fantastic. I thought the Rockers oh. are <laughs> rockier than this, Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, am, I am genuinely concerned. So I was joking with him earlier. I was like, "Man, if the wrap-up show coming in, what 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 are we gonna have him call in about every week? Is this dating show thing? Are we gonna be able to carry oh, this for God. a few months? Or like, what, what's if this is the if here? this is what I want to do when the when we get three women that we are finalists, we're gonna have them on the show, and then we're gonna have a whole little <laughs> dating game. Okay, thing. okay. I think I don't be, think we get three. You don't think so? I'm sorry, I don't. No. I think we do. Jamie's good-looking dude. No, it's nothing against Jamie. We just don't have chick listeners, right? No, like, but that's what I'm saying. The guys, we're, we're going to have to rely yeah, on but, our dude listeners to give it to chicks. The dude chicks. listeners are going to be like, hey, there's this guy. I think you might like him. Like, I, I, they're not going to – the, no, no, no chick's no, no. going to go this for that. This will work. Trust me. It'll, okay. It's going to happen. All right. Okay. Yes. You confident about that, Michael, about him getting at least three finalists? I think so. Right. I mean, I'm curious to the the quality of these three finalists, but I think it's uh, possible. Mark, Mark's, don't worry, I mean, Steve, and I will pick up the quality. Marks will judge it. Any anything is better I for mean, him than being here in California all week with me driving him around, just him sitting in the passenger seat, swiping, 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 swiping. I mean, if we can get right, some real face to face action here, I'll be. I'm bringing my truck out, Michael. I'm not rolling around. With you. <laughs> yeah. <he's... laughs> Oh, uh, Marks! Marks is so on this. Yes, four point two percent female audience on YouTube in the last twenty-eight days for us. There it is. Four point two percent. That's a start. That's yep. more than three. That'll work. Yeah, that's, yeah. that'll yeah. work. Yeah, Yar Yar says she's in to help, and we can get three finalists. Do we have? Uh, is okay. this his little photo pop up when he calls in on YouTube? Uh, no, I. I Funny you say that. I just thought about that, but we should have Swizzcore make him one because hey. yes. he needs Well, he needs no, one. I mean, I, now he's working for Vital. He can't call in anymore and starting in January. Mm -hmm. Oh, he can call in. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Don't ban his okay. callings. <laughs> if not, we'll just play his intro every once in a while. <laughs> we fun. will play his intro. It's great. <laughs> a lot of dark side just, uh, candle. Followed by like a music that's like an in memory. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be too death metal-ish. We couldn't do that here. Uh, <laughs> hey, Let's let's move on to it since we got all you guys on the line. Let's let's I want I have a topic I wanted to bring up later this show. May as well do it with two of the top journalists in the sport on the line. Of course, of course. Uh, oh, that's a scary way. Who who else is on the line? Cause uh, me. <laughs> we got Mumford crashing, breaking his wrists. Mm -hmm. Heart raft, real bad crash, right? And then of yep. course Garrett Marchbanks crashing. Bikes all all injuries. Marchbanks broke his wrist. All injuries and related. And J Marks, right? I heard J Marks went in the last couple of days. I did not hear that. So we've had injuries happen lately. Um, they're all well, two of them Suzuki's, one Yamaha. Same motor builder guy, right? Twisted is doing it now. I'm not blaming Jamie because I don't know what went on these bikes. I don't know the maintenance. I don't know anything like that. But if I'm Jamie at Twisted, who does awesome work, I'm freaking out a little bit. Again, not saying it's their fault. I don't think it's a Suzuki fault or a Yamaha fault either. This is our sport. This is the world we live in. But these these three guys are seriously hurt. They're going to miss time, and it sucks. And I think it sucks for Jamie because, again, who knows why, but this is three of his bikes, and that's no good. 
Mm-hmm. So I guess I'll start with you, Michael. Um, you know, like it's, it's part of our game. It's part of our sport. But it's not good for anybody from Jamie to the teams to Suzuki. Because I saw this on my Twitter feed. Suzuki's are blowing up. Like, come on, man. Mumford's bike versus Rock, uh, Heart Rats 450. God knows the difference in those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a coincidence, right? It's nothing against that. But I'll start with you, Michael. Um, like what I think the the issue, or like what? Well, just I'm sorry. Uh, just kind of like this is really bad for everybody involved, from the bikes to the riders to the teams. Uh, definitely, and it's it's. I feel bad because of the situation you said. I, I feel bad for Jamie's end because it's you know his name's on them. There's I'm sure. Chris will talk about this a little bit too. There is kind of a unique situation that all these teams though are kind of responsible for servicing all of them. So then a lot of question marks start to begin on, you know, what was switched when, why, like how upkept is everything yep. being not the original guy in it. Like even if you've got a solid dude that, you know, it can build an engine, you know, how much experience they have knowing exactly what's going to wear, when, why, like other than having a list of, oh, I'm going to change these at these hours, you know, are they not catching little things on inspection that maybe the original guys that build it would more notice or something along those lines. So I think definitely that, that makes me kind of question a few things there with some of those, some of those teams, like, um, you know, maybe that's the right path to go versus having the original people service it. Um, I think that's also, I don't think that's also possible technically for Jamie because his main teams is they're supporting. Um, but then the, the end outcome is, you know, terrible for us with just a bunch of riders all getting hurt right at the same time. And then, I don't know, just that many bike issues in, in general. You know, I know it's going to stick in those guys' heads then uh, from there on out a little bit. Well, again, from a rider's point of view, which I've worked with them from team's point of view, I've been on and motor guy's point of view, horrible, Chris. This is bad, bad deal. I know Jamie. Uh, look at Aiden's motors are built by Jamie. Um, so I know some backstory on this, just like what Michael said. It's just not all on Jamie. I know Jamie as a human being, he wants all of his riders to be safe, for, first and foremost. Of course, yeah. Um, second is... Uh, it's up to the team to figure out what the service intervals are, right? And then in those time spans, they get changed out. In the world of R&D, things fail. And it just so happened that Jamie and Twisted um, does a lot of these teams. He is saturated in the paddock. There is a lot of Twisted development. Because he does great work. Correct. Yes. So when there is a failure and Jamie is, his percentages are high of the numbers that he does within the paddock, Sometimes that falls on Jamie, the negative, right? Um, I do know that there is not that many Suzuki or any Suzuki aftermarket rods. Like, you cannot find someone that builds an aftermarket. They don't make them. They don't make them. Simply because the, the, the companies yeah. don't sell enough of them to warrant to, right. to develop right. one, right? Eric, Eric can vouch for that, right? Like, right. Where, you, where you have right. a brand where you're like... So we within, that, yeah. within some, uh, like, at least... For Brandon's thing, like they're on stock rods that have an interval time, and to this time, how many how many years has Suzuki been in circulation? There has been no rod failures on the time service limit within what they have for that rod. Well, maybe that's we finally found a failure. I can vouch for some of this because I stuck up for Yamaha for years when people would email me and say, "Kiefer, my 21 YZ450, my rod went through the cases." And I got several of those emails, and I said, look, I've had three YZ450s over 60 hours, never did anything. It has to be what you're, something's going on. What oil are you running? I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then one day at Glen Helen, sure shit, my rod goes through my engine. I endo, break ribs, and screw myself. I found out that was a failure. And you don't know until something happens. So that's the shitty part about dirt bikes is we're not in a roll cage. Um, We don't have the beauty of having some safety nets, right? So when something goes wrong, it really does hurt the rider a lot. And in some of those cases, it's really no one's fault. It's just shit happens. Yeah. No, it's a motorized sport. And it's not the team's fault. Um, It's not the motor builder's fault. And sometimes it just goes kaboom at certain times that you don't expect. And you've had several years of the same spec 
and nothing has happened. So, of course, you're going to continue doing the same thing. When I'm involved in production testing and we have an R&D process and we go through an X amount of hours and it passes, we move the part along, right? If it doesn't pass within those many, those X amount of time, that's a failure. We have to start over and do it again. So up until now, there has not been a problem. So I think, and this is my opinion, with Roxon coming on board, at least on the Suzuki 450 side of things, it's going to help the development of some of these things that are lacking right now. His name brings some clout to force these companies to say, okay, we need to make right. this kind of stuff. But having said that, and again, like what Michael was saying, with these teams employing different people to do the services on them and and you know and different parts or whatever like the club guys have pushed a lot of bikes off yeah and that's not a good look for them or for twisted and i thought to myself man if you're gonna get jmart you can win a championship here Correct. you really can right. outdoors you got to step up your motor game yes you know and i don't know if what michael was saying about jmart's motor going uh but we know march banks did and broke his wrist and like, it sucks. It sucks for everybody, man. And again, I've been there. Our carburetors are falling off at Yamaha. Our carburetors were just coming off. Popping off the intake. Popping off the yeah. intake. And yeah. guys were endoing and eating shit. Yeah. And luckily, only Timmy got hurt. It could have been worse. Not luckily, but only one guy got hurt. We could have had more riders hurt. Right. They, you know, they saved it. So I've been there. But what a, what a shitty deal for everybody involved. And the thing is, too, there's human error no matter what you have right yeah, absolutely you got a guy putting together the motor you have jamie that does what the team says jamie has some input obviously i'm sure like hey this is what i want to do they try it they know uh it's it's too much or right. not enough like the team has the right to say hey we don't want this time bomb this close to time yeah. it out let's back it down a little bit the motor builder is from what i've gathered in the last couple years that i've been close to some of these guys is we do what the team wants us to do. We have a spec. We give it to them. They decide if that's what they want or not. They, the motor builder gives the team the information of everything they have done, um, the time limit that they think or they know, I should say, what they know until it times out. Yep. After that, it's up to the team, yep. the guy who's running the team. Right. Right. Yeah, so I'm it just sucks that yeah. us on the outside look in like, oh, that's a so-and-so motor or, or that's it. I mean, or Suzuki or whatever. I don't yeah. know what Supercross it was and, and XPR and Chad and those guys that um, um, Bullfrog Spa's Honda team, the Moto Concepts team, one took a shit on the starting line and they had to get another engine and they don't, it's just, sometimes it happens. Like it just, it's just the way it goes. So um, even the best of the best, the factory teams um, have the same kind of problem at times, you know? So it's just, it's just a matter of going through the process. And it just sucks because you mentioned the practice. Everything's happening in practice. The riders are so hard on practice bikes. Uh, the, the practice bikes get used way more. There's a, as a, there's a heavier time limit on these practice bikes versus the race bikes. Um, I just think some of these time constraints, um, these limits that are on some of these parts, need to be pushed in a little bit more for practice bikes, I think, for me. Because these are the, the bikes <coughs> that they're using all the time. Right. Uh, so and I don't know I don't know what these guys intervals are. I don't know what the criteria is. Yeah. Yeah, we don't really know. Uh, Michael, do you think that Hep's gonna fill in with for Hot Raft with somebody? Um I would think um I guess, you know, we all could say thing it all depends on contracts, how many they're required to have for their new whatever deals they come up with, especially Kenny coming in additional money. I, yeah, because right now the plan would be as long as everything goes to plan, it would probably be Kenny and Chisholm um, incoming. So I, I would, you know, two four fifty guys and one two fifty guy on each coast. Does that satisfy all the needs of contracts? Um, definitely sounds like. I mean, at some point, yeah, because if yeah. if again Chiz say Chiz and Kenny go to World Supercross, they need U.S. outdoor guys. That would have been Brandon. You know, Brandon's injury list is very extensive. I'm, I, you know, we don't know yet, but I'm just gonna. Throw, Sounds like full recovery you know, though. Yeah, full recovery though, from what I hear, right? 
yeah, full yeah. recovery, but I'm guessing we are not seeing him this year. That is, that is quite the laundry list. So, yeah, yeah somebody's got to be brought in at some point. Do they bring somebody in immediately? Do they need to? Again, we'll see, right. you know, if they do, it answers that question if the contracts require. Um, and, yeah. So, from what um, I gather, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the 250 guys and Kenny are in one truck, and then Chiz yeah. and Hartraff are going to be in the twisted truck, and then Kenny and the 250 guys are going to be progressive truck, from what I hear. Yeah. So that's the other thing that could play into that is even if, you know, pre Kenny say their contract only needs two 450 guys, um, you know, maybe that, that kind mm. of, since Kenny though is under the other truck, like, yeah, they might need somebody now. Um, the other one is, is I keep getting a mixed answer on this. Is seven deuce deuce racing or no? No, I don't believe so. No. Okay. I asked him like two months ago and he said he was, and I was like, oh, I haven't heard anything since. So. Right. Um, uh, the I don't think he is the. They could also put Marsh up to four fifties and find a two fifty guy. Yeah, you know they Mar- could, but Marsh could. Is, I don't. Marsh, he's not ready to Marsh ride yet. Back on from his injury. No. Yeah, he's not ready what to injury? ride. Huh? ACL. He blew out his knee playing basketball. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was saying playing basketball. News yeah. to me. So he was okay. scheduled for two fifty. That's why he didn't race World Supercross. Um, that's why Kelly got that gig last minute because Marshall did that right before World Supercross. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I didn't know that. So oh. he's scheduled for 250 East. Dylan Schwartz would be 250 West. I just think it's, it's, it's for us listening and the fans, just because these things happen to racer doesn't mean it's going to happen to your stock motorcycle. <laughs> No. That's where I think it gets confused. Like, oh, something yeah. went bad on so and so's bike. That means my no. bike's going to do I, it. That's, I heard, oh, that's I, not the case. Like I said to you, my Twitter feed was alive with Suzuki, Suzuki's are blowing up because no. of Ken yeah. and, and or because of Hartraft and uh, Mumford. Like, calm down. Yeah. Like I've had Suzuki's it, it, and a lot of hours on mine, and sure, it hasn't been developed in umpteen years, yeah. but I can say it's pretty damn reliable bike. We should get. Uh, yeah. Oh, Vi- Vi- Michael, does does Suzuki give vital bikes? Uh, yeah, from whenever we finally get them, I saw them gone mine mm. uh, for this year. We got last, the ones we got for what would have been this year's test bike last year. We didn't get till like February. Or something. I'm just now <laughs> getting mine Thursday. Put Mr. Side on one. Yeah. He yeah. can be RM Army. Mr. Side can be RM Army. <laughs> you really want somebody to kick it since you don't anymore? Right. Mr. Side, will you do RM Army? If I'm told to, but I'm not giving that husky back. Oh wow! <laughs> now he's demanding. Wow, he hasn't even been a year yet. Has, he is, his, has he off his probation yet? He's uh, Church of 350, man. I'm not giving man. that husky back. God. I told him as soon as I got so back to Texas and rode the first time. I texted him, said, "You're gonna have a hard time getting his back." Listen, drive out here. Dark said, "Don't be like that." The ladies are listening. You saw him controlling. They don't want to hear that. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. The last, the last thing I'll say on the engine thing, I don't know if, if you would agree with me on this, Chris, is like <clears throat> exactly what Chris said, though, is I know people are going to freak out, but it's like, hey, these things are high strung. If anything, when I hear the issues I do and I hear others on top of this, again, I tend to glare more at, yes, things can fail, but when I keep hearing of the same things over and over, I start to look at the team and the process they're doing Um it would be actually my biggest question mark more than, oh, is that bike safe to ride or something? I, I start to go, well, because, again, I, you know, woohoo, I did it for two years. But we we were very aggressive with intervals based on what we were told we could run stuff. And because of that, we never had a complete 250 failure of any sort. Um, but we were very aggressive on our, our intervals based on the information we were getting. We never tried to stretch it. Um, for any reason, the the safety mattered too much of the of the riders to to ever push anything correct for cost reasons. Yep, absolutely. Well, Michael, hey, thanks for calling in, man. Appreciate it. Um, you know, get Mister Side his expense money. Mister Side, <laughs> is it? Please. Has he, How about you know what? You might as well just keep my money at this point. <laughs> has he passed his ninety day probation? Have we done that yet? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I started in like June. Okay, I didn't know. Good, good job, Chris. Way, yeah, to, way to keep up with your friends. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Michael. Uh, oh, hey, one, one more one more thing. Next Monday we have we have another we have another person joining our staff next Monday. Oh, is it happening? It is. It's finally happening. Is it is he here? Uh he will be here in like two weeks and then followed oh. by his cohort shortly after. All right. Big news. And Mr. Side's going to have some competition for top vital yes. employee. Yeah, we're, 
start a we're gonna start a Survivor style island show. Right. <laughs> uh, and Michael, so you will confirm that you will give Mr. Side the morning off the night after or the morning after the date. Yes. Oh yes, yes, definitely. Okay, all right. Because he as long as you know, as, as long as he, you know, I, I always tell all my employees the same thing. Whether it's you know a little side work here or there or a personal trip or something, hey, as long as you get your work done. So what really this depends on, and I'm not talking about work for the company. As long as Jamie does his work, he, that's what he I'm saying. The, uh, so we'll have his dating there. show. We'll have the dating show where we get the three finalists and we'll choose one for him, and then we'll have a, a sh he'll be on the show for a follow up with the lady, mm -hmm. so we can ask her how the date was as well. Okay, fair enough, because he's going to be doing fair work enough. all night. Yes. So exactly. All right. Thanks, Michael. Go. Dark right. goes on a date. That's right, dark. Guts Racing, uh, Seal Savers, Motorsport.com, all on board the wrap-up show with uh, and Michelin Bicycle Tires with uh, Kellen and uh, and the sellout, Roto. And Jamie, <laughs> j Jamie, just for the record, I had nothing to do with any of this, just so you know. That's false. Yeah, Eric. Eric's I know. on you, board. You Eric, are, there's no way. You wouldn't even give him a launch device, a pro launch device. Win. What Last year or about? two years ago, you wouldn't even no. give him the works connection. Oh no, that was you. That, no, no actually, that, was that was not Pookie. me. <laughs> that was not. Or no, me. that was Heather. That was Heather. Heather that did. Yeah, that. That was I Heather. heard. I heard you were texting her. Don't know. I'm oh, gonna, I heard. Yeah, man. <laughs> Fake so, news. Eric was the one that made sure I got one when Heather said no. There we go. All right. That sounds more like. Way it. to go, Heather. All right, <laughs> uh, Jamie. Well, we'll get you a date too. Don't worry. We'll get your haircut. We'll get your dirt bike. We'll get you a job. Gosh. Now we'll get you. What if he gets this girl? Goes on a date. And ends up marrying this lady. I, I mean, what else? <laughs> you think a Southern California lady is going to move to East Texas with him? I'm just now thinking of this. What if this just... Yeah. We finish it off. Mr. Side, would you move out of East Texas for the right lady? Uh, very unlikely that I'm leaving my grandbaby. Good. Uh, yep. Be surprised what a woman, a woman What if this do? chick has $800 at, at the ready any time? <laughs> Okay, I'm in. <laughs> He's in. <laughs> All right. Thanks for calling, man. See you, Jamie. All right. You guys are assholes, but I love you. <laughs> Later, Dark. See you, Jamie. We are getting just, him a date. Just, yes. Just out of – how does HEP – just thinking about it. This is a, this Kenny deal is a last-minute signing. How do they get a second truck – uh, in that amount, in that short well, amount of time, I know with everything pe going on. Nah, you can get trucks, no problem. Trucks, like, no le problem. Le but wraps you, lease them. And you lease them and decked out. Well, and, I, mean, I don't like, know about the wrap deal, but you you can lease a truck tomorrow. Existing. Didn't they have yeah. two trucks anyway? Yeah. No, they didn't have two trucks. I thought they had a hospitality one. I don't believe so. Okay. I just think um, of awnings. I just know how long everything right, is right. taking. You know, well, just, yeah, I don't know, but I know they can get a truck real easy, real yeah. fast with a lease. Yeah. You don't buy it or anything. Um. And a wrap, I feel like wraps are pretty simple, too, for these guys nowadays, right? And they do digital stuff and everything. Interesting to see, for sure. Uh, yeah. Maxima USA, favorite Maxima product? Uh, suspension clean. Wrong. Okay. SC1. Okay. Uh, 927, number one selling performance two-stroke oil in most markets around the world. Pulp 20 is the code to save with Maxima. Their four-stroke engine oils are designed to ensure ultimate performance while providing maximum protection. Under the most severe MX and off-road conditions, and they have the suspension clean that Kiefer mentioned. They have SC1 as well, uh, so please check them out. Pulp 20 is the code to save. Profilter.com. Pulp 20 again to save uh, on a Profilter, which is uh, top quality air and oil filters for dirt bikes, street bikes, side by sides, and everything in between. Sold through Motorsport.com. Sold through your local dealer. Pick up a pre-oiled, ready-to-use premium air filter, oil filter for your next service. Pulp 20 at checkout. Profilter.com. Uh, please check out those guys. Maxima as well. Use the code PULP20 to save. Thank you to those companies for coming on board. Um, we got After Dark if you want to do that. If you don't, we can skip it. We Just, have yeah, we'll skip it. Okay. Uh, Works Connection. How's everything at Works Connection, Eric? Everything is good. Yeah? Yeah. We're, you have uh, the new uh, the Kiefer developed uh, we have Yamaha. We have the new titanium offset foot, you know, foot peg mounts in yeah. stock. They just Yeah, we got them all done last week, and... They're already shipping out to everybody who had them on order. So, yep. yeah, if you had that them on order, the, you should see it soon. Or if secret, you haven't already seen Secret it. testing you guys were doing that were, you were not telling me about. We which correct. I, wasn't, I wasn't happy. Did yeah. a little bit of that. Right. Yep. Yep. He's been bugging me for how long? Was it's been a bugging? while. And, and then the in, Yamaha comes out 20, with a new bike. with the, know, right? yeah. Well, it was probably in 2020. It's like right in the middle of everything. And he's, yeah. he had the idea. And I'm like, I, just, I can't do it. And now, you know, we waited a little bit long, but yeah. now they turned out great. But they're selling yeah. well? and Yeah, they're yeah. good. Yeah, the feedback's been good. Yep. Um, 
yeah, got a, you know a fair amount of orders. Pre, you know, like nice. I said, the pre-sold stuff's good. Super clean the way they did it, and yeah. it's titanium, so you lose a bit, little bit of weight. Yep. It's just it's a super trick factory kind of piece, right? Because you can't get them unless you were on a team or someone built them for that team. Yeah. Because I had a set from another team that I got given to me, and I loved them. And that's when I was saying, hey, Eric, this could be something that you could sell that you, you, it would sell, you know? You think about it, it's like super simple, right? Like, it's That's just, not really simple. Well, <laughs> no, but okay, you got a bracket that fits to the frame. You can move your peg mount anywhere you want. You know, like it's a pretty easy deal. And, and when you, it's something where you try it, you're like, oh, wait, like that's pretty good, you know? So it's, It is. I mean, after it's all said and done, it's like you look at it and you go, oh, that was pretty easy. But getting there yeah. is quite a few steps. Right, right. And we have a new guy. Actually, we hired back in May. It's been working out really well. But he's very – he does SolidWorks, and he's a wizard at solid, oh, okay. SolidWorks yeah. and designing. So that opened up that door for us to uh, really pursue it. Right. And what's cool is, like, get it done. I pitched stuff to him. He's, he's an honest dude, and he's been around for a while, you know? Like you said, he's just now learning about his no, business. No, yeah, they're it's up, been a minute. up and coming company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, he decided, like, yeah, I think it would be a good time, and – I was excited to do it because I've been on that kind of dimension for a little bit. And I just know how it kind of changed my way on the bike because the bike was a little bit um, ergonomically challenged mm -hmm. before the new one. I didn't find that, but I have short legs. Yeah. So I never found what you were talking about. I didn't like the tall seat either. Mm -hmm. A lot of people did, right? I'm not a big tall seat guy either. I have a 32 inseam, so my, I have short legs, but like I'm six feet tall, right? But mm -hmm. it's just the way I, my body is. I don't see that making a lot of sense for me. I never found out what you were talking about, and I didn't like the tall seat. But... I've heard cramped, cramped uh, cockpit by a, more than a few people who had the older ammo. Well, the 23 sure. is basically yes, it is. what it's what you did. Right? It's Yamaha's yeah. way of saying like, yeah, maybe it was. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. for sure. So that's where I, when I saw the specs for the new Yamaha, it sort of validated what you guys were talking about because, you know, the great Travis Preston. And what's cool too, you did, I just figured this out. So the FX it will work on the FX, but it doesn't have the kick stand. It doesn't have the kick stand. Okay. So if a, if an FX rider can do away with the kick stand, we, these we mounts can't. will. We, we can't. I yeah, I an talked FX. to Weege. Oh. I was emailing with Weege. He wanted us up, and he's oh, I need the kick stand. Yeah, and so, I had the FX up in Idaho. Love that kick stand. Oh, really? Yeah. No, not too many FX guys will give up the kick stand, but yeah. that's yeah. the only way to do it. But if you wanted it, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, and uh, the Perch and the Pro Launch Start Device, so you locked in with Honda and Star we again just, and all that? We actually just re-upped with Honda for okay. the next couple of years, yep. so we're excited about that. Yep. Uh, Star Racing again. Um, we're excited with the Kinney, if that is, goes through. Yep. We're a uh, sponsor we're of HEP. HEP. We've been yep. sponsor for quite a few years with HEP. They're great great to work with. Yep. Um, yeah, things are good. We're, so we're trying, and to back up a little bit, you asked earlier, like supply chain issues. Yeah. and I mean, it hasn't been easy. Like two years ago, I had a full head of hair, and now, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, we're we're making strides, and we brought in, we bought a new press brake, you know, that's fully yep. automated. We're trying to be in kind of more, you know, in charge of our own fate, and right. not rely on on people because everybody got busy. All of our manufacturers, yep. our local manufacturers, got busy doing. Uh, they make four wheel drive parts. They make our part, you know. So we had to kind of step up, and and it's taken a while but we're we're starting to see some of it paying off now and there's going to be within the next six eight months yeah it's going to be even you know more noticeable like catching up on stuff and we've had guys and bear with us if you're if you're waiting for frame guards you know we're yeah. we're still getting there like yeah. we get a ton of requests for the old frame guards but when you look at it like how many we sell compared to a set of radiator braces for a yz450 yeah it's like we got to go with the numbers right and some people understand that some and i i get it. it it's it's tough but something that me and aiden just started using that we didn't think of of eric's is uh the radiator braces for the kx250 aiden squeezes with his legs so much against those shrouds where they come into the frame mm -hmm. that he bends the shroud in and that's a cowie problem right? and it pops yeah. the bolt like pops the yeah. plastic through the bolt which new said he did the same thing right yep, yep. so putting the works connection frame guards i'm sorry uh radiator. radiator guards not only are you protecting your radiators but like it'll protect those shrouds from pushing in right and it won't pop that thing out uh Kief, Kief, mr Kiefer here was quite upset with uh you at the world vets uh i'm sure you're aware uh eric that the generally for pros and non-pros the fork pro launch start device height is mm -hmm. way down there nowadays 
and you supply a template like a great company does. Right, right. Yeah. And you supply a template <laughs> with the three <laughs> try holes. Try to make it easy. Yep. Yeah. And I took the middle hole of the template because I'm like, okay, well, 100. I don't, you know, whatever, yeah, whatever the middle one is. And sure. He said, uh, "Well, stop. you're a five, so you go right in the right. middle, right?" You so like he yeah. he's like, Touché. "It got yeah. it's got to go further down." And I'm yeah. like, "I don't know, man. This is Works Connection. Perhaps you heard of them, and they have decided that this is a suitable hole." I just got to go longer. It's not enough. Uh, yeah. to the chopper. Yeah, I could see that. I could totally <laughs> and, and, see that. And yeah. so he we moved my we moved the hook up on the fork to get oh, it down. To adjust, okay. To move it. Yeah. Not 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 advised, but No, but it it does the job. But yeah. maybe the templates should be a bit lower. We are yeah. One ten is what we like to see. Is I know guys are going one thirty. So I'm mean, going one twenty. One twenty. So yeah. you're ten more than we recommend. Mm -hmm. So if it fails then you're then no. it's on my ass. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no warranty. No, I mean, so. some of the factory guys I mean, I oh, don't even I know, know how far how deep those Hondas are I know, and right? everything else. It's amazing. Yeah. But There's no, a lot we of recommend we for local level, it's like you're not on a, on a grate. You're not on, you know, oh. really tacky dirt. So that's where we feel it runs. I best. was advised of the World Vets by, yeah, Keeper. Uh, I'd say 110 is a good thing. He couldn't Glenn even. Allen. He tried to set my device. Couldn't do it. I had another guy come uh, over. First uh, try. Yeah, that was weird. I thought something was up with his Cause device. He, oh, because it's, yeah. He's not doing it right. I had to say, get away. Team Canada, get out of here. Yeah. Uh, the 9 o'clock hour brought to you by Suspension Direct. Uh, Pulp MX is the code to save with SuspensionDirect.com. Uh, founded in 2005. Of course, hard to find suspension parts. That's how they started out with. But then they grew into the E-Click system, uh, which is meant for UTVs. And now it's have Jeep models and Ford Raptors and uh, F-150s, UTVs, and more. It's more than just electronic shocks. Semi-active suspension system that constantly adapts to the road and conditions. No more getting out of the vehicle to adjust suspension. If you have a UTV, please check into this Suspension Direct E-Click stuff. It's really cool. Marks has a set on his Raptor. I mean, it has, probably hasn't been mobbing lately. But. Not too busy doing all uh, the work I do for you. How's the app looking? Mm. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, mm. did we have a problem? Did we have problems? Dude, it's just <laughs> been, it's, it's a, been a pain in my ass. Mm. So, and you now said I gotta, January 1, right? Well, I said I, w I wanted to get it done. Oh, I okay. didn't say it was going to be out by then. I said I wanted to. And so. we got Pulp Mix Fantasy wrapping up, too. When's sign-ups for that, Marks? December 19th is our uh, target date. 19th. So, yeah, for the next two weeks, I'm pretty much on fantasy stuff. So, so am I. I got to do a show, so I yep. got to get into I it. I think you should just play. Can you just play I'm going to play it so I can talk about the damn thing when I do the show. Just one year. If you don't like yeah. it, you, you're yeah. out. But you got to commit. I need a commitment. Eric, you one play year. I don't. You don't play I forward. enjoy watching the races without so do we. Know, being pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Promise. <laughs> hey, grab a grab a headset over here. Come on, come. Yeah, you. Yeah, you and your. Uh, suspension Name Direct, Dane, right? made and developed in the USA. Please check them out. Use the code PulpMX to save SDI. Uh, good guys. And uh, Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, Race Tech Suspension and Engines, X Brand Goggles, Renthal, Michelin Motorcycle Tires. I mean, Michelins are great. Let's just you know, let's it, get that it's, out. It's of it's way. good. It's good. Yeah. 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 Uh, a Chair Beast, Firepower Batteries and Chains, Maxima USA, Pro Filter, Skosh, ORW, OGO Power Sports, FMF, Guts Racing, Atlas Neck Brace, Pulpamex is the code to save with atlasbrace.com, Works Connection, Pulpamex 20, support Eric here and Ryan and everybody down there, MotorcycleMachineJobs.com, Get Data, WUSA, love the guys at WUSA. I like, like I, I, you've been around longer than John and Kristen at W, but I feel the same way at you guys get it. You guys are cool companies. You make cool stuff. You you fill a, a need in the industry. You know, well, I don't thank, know. I feel yeah, like thank you Earth Connection that. and that's WR like, like just on the well, same path. Well, that's a compliment. To coolness, tie those I in because I like yeah, John. Right. They do a great job. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, ride yeah. engineering, intense cycle, suspension, direct manscape, Weisco piston, twisted T, on board with us. Uh, ride engineeringcom Pulp Fan Twenty. You ever think how good a set of YZ four fifty forks would feel on your twenty one to twenty three KTM? No, because I've had that on my KTM. Did you know Ride Engineering has a YZF style KYB conversion kit for seventeen fifty installed and revalved for your weight and riding ability? I didn't know they did this. With spring? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty installed good. Installed and revalved. This kit uses the stock WP udder tubes and lugs so the fork wheel and brakes all bolt right on. And then you can get the uh the rest of the KYB conversion kit. Wow. Huh. Yeah, so Adrian sells the KYB conversion kit. I didn't know this. Yeah. Uh, nine millimeter more travel too. Do you like this? Is it is it a good is it a good? A thing? lot of WP guys go with the KYB conversion because of comfort. So 
this is different from like you know their normal conversion kit that's just a spring conversion. It's so not a KYB. this is basically using the KYB internals. Yeah, it's like a mid valve. Yeah, right. So uh, with that, with the KYB, obviously everyone knows the KYB stuff is probably has the most comfort out of all the stock production forks. And with the WP, obviously you have an air system. You want to get rid of that. Yeah. You want to get some comfort. But the internals of a spring conversion is not KYB ish it's something different what are you talking about I don't understand. like okay we've all heard of the spring conversion for wp forks Tol yes that's a race tech thing we've all well heard of that. wp sells their own version yep race tech has a single-sided version and then this is a KYB. kyb version yes okay i was wondering if the race tech version and other conversion kits that i've heard so much about mimic KYB everyone's stuff. slightly everyone's different. A little different yes okay yeah uh pulp fan 20 is a code to save with ride com. Please check that out as well. Pulp Mex 20 code to save it works connection. Get a perch. If you don't get a perch, get a radiator guard. Radiator guards, yeah. perch, right. caps. Yeah. KTMs, you know what else they sell that's really good? Hmm. Um, oh, the chain adjusters? No, the, the chain oh. adjusters get rid of that fixed adjuster. Right. Because people are like, oh, you can't feel that. That's bullshit. You can. Because when you're under torque, you're accelerating. That left side will bind a little bit, and you do get some harshness. So that's a new, that was a new kit for yeah. 23 also. Yeah. yeah. With the new axle size, we have those. Yep. And the lines are way easier to read when you adjust your chain on the worst connection blocks. So, When's, When am I getting my 2023 oil filter cover? Uh, it's in process. What are we Thanks thinking? Thanks to you, loaning us. Yeah, you're welcome. Know. Good ride my bike. Yeah. But yeah. It's, uh, how about we say, like, two months. I always, I always guess long and yeah. hope that we, you know, yeah, sure like under, yeah. I do under that too. promise and over deliver. I could, guess could long. I get How a stoked is he going to be to on, go from, you know, eight on, weeks to on the underside five. of it? Can I get a thanks to pulp engraved? Oh, maybe on yours. No, I, I mean, oh, you want just you on sell. every yes. production. And then maybe I can And get you a, want a little cut out of I, that? Yeah, I a mean, little cut out of that. I mean, yeah. If you're going to go big, you might as well push right. it. You know. I, uh, I'm not going to talk about it because like, we can't, but I'm super excited about some new stuff. We got even new, new stuff that me and Eric yeah. have been talking about. Well, cool, man. Right on. Wait I don't know secrets. anything about that. But. Uh, JP's on the line. He wants to talk to Kiefer. JP, what's up? What's your uh, question for Chris Kiefer? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hi, JP. JP, have you ever met me at a race? I have met you at a race, actually. You kind of uh, cool guide me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, JP. <laughs> That was but not the there, answer you, Steve, that's, was looking that's, for. That's fucked. That you He's a that. pole person. He's my kind of pole <laughs> no, person. To be fair, I was uh, I was actually flagging that race. So I had the whole flagger get up, and I know how Steve feels about flaggers, so I wasn't doing myself any favors there. Wow. Wow, Steve. I like dig dugs. I'm a fan of dig dugs. <laughs> well, I wasn't a dig dug. I was just a temporary flagger. He's just like so a stock flagger. You know, dig dugs are the cool <laughs> flaggers. When, when did you confront me? JP, what, what? Uh, it was it was down in the tunnel, but um, I had some carbon monoxide poisoning by that time too. So Minneapolis, yes, dude, dude. people got jacked up, dude. I felt yeah, like was, shit too. That was wasn't good. Maybe you weren't even hearing or seeing me right. Maybe I broed you down, and then you were just like, I don't I know. I think everybody man. was high. All jacked uh, I up. I know I was. Yeah, that was. I know I was. Hey, we were up in the press box that time, and I remember asking Steve. I'm like, dude, do you smell that? And he's like, yeah, like. It's pretty gnarly. And then, like, I got a headache. I like, had a headache all night. Yeah. All right, JP. Yeah, dude, it, was, it was bad. Really, really sorry I asked that question, but go ahead and talk <laughs> to Kiefer. Nah, it's all right, man. Say, um, so, Kiefer, I got a 22YZ250F. Yep. Getting uh, getting up there in hours. I got about 40 hours on it. And um, just kind of, this is my first 250F in quite a while. I've been riding 450s for years. Um, and I've been buying bikes every year. But this one I decided to keep because I like it so much. Um, but just kind of wondering your opinion on what I should be doing as far as maintenance, you know, off-season up here in Minnesota. So, um, you know, should I be looking at top end? Should I be looking at timing chain? I mean, what's your opinion? I hate opening bikes up if I don't have to because I love it, and I feel like they're never the same again after you open them up. But uh, what's your opinion on that? So with the YZ250F, great bike, by the way. Um, fun to ride, so I kind of get what you're talking about and not want to get rid of it. But I would definitely change your timing chain. Um, those have a tendency to go south on you after about – if I don't know how you ride. So depending on how you ride, it could last you 60 hours and be, wouldn't be a problem. But normally 
around 40 hours, I would change the timing chain. Look at your valves. Get your valves checked. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to do anything, but at least have see if your it. valves are checked and if they're they're tight or loose. Um, and then I would just put a piston and rings in it and be done. Okay. That was okay. it. I mean, Perfect. it's pretty pretty simple. It's a it's some cheap insurance just to put a timing chain in it. Trust me. Yeah, and that, I mean that for sure was going to get done. So yeah, just questioning whether or not. Uh, we need to be doing a, a piston and rings as well. Like I said, been riding 450s for a long time. I am, I'm a 40 year old vet rider, but I do kind of beat the crap out of this bike. So um, here's the yeah, thing that I look at: it, like I'm a vet guy too. I'd rather spend a little bit of money now than a lot later. And yep. if you have enough time during the winter, I would just go ahead and put a piston, rings, and a timing chain, and that that's it. All right, sounds good. That's what we'll do. All, All right, right, JP. Thanks, JP. All right, thanks, Appreciate guys. It. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Uh, the uh, motorsport.com tweet a talent segment coming up here right away. Uh, Aiden, welcome to the show. It's not on, so. I know, it's coming, but you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah Just yeah, act yeah, like you can, yeah, and then yeah, we'll okay, fix okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. All right. How's the wrist? Uh, it's good. What's wrong? It's good. Oh. It's good. Can you hear me? Through yeah, this? we can. Yeah, you. you're good. Oh, actually? Yeah, yeah just keep oh. talking. Okay, yeah, it's good. Um, I'm not even supposed to be riding right now, but uh, we're back riding, and yeah. And he's going, so we're leaving to go to Mesquite tomorrow to do some testing. And uh, so you're, you're going to be able to get to ride. Yeah. I've only rode like three times in the past, like two weeks, I think. So hopefully. You can talk a little louder than that. Well, I can't hear myself or sound what I sound like. So <laughs> I don't know what I sound like. Right it, sounds <laughs> it sounds all right over here. It's a, uh, okay. I'm excited for tomorrow. Mesquite right. should be good. I'm excited too. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, Aiden, just like what DV was talking about, we were having him practice some Supercross to get ready for some future races. We were at Carson Mumford's house, and I thought we were doing it the right way. Carson had him out. They basically, what Carson had at his track was just a circle track with whoops on each side. Um, so, he was just doing whoops, just practicing whoops at his mm -hmm. own speed, no problem. And then he did that for about three days with Carson, and then we took him on the big track. And the first day, he started doing laps. Um, he screwed himself, skipped a whoop, broke a scaphoid. And then uh, they said about three months. But um, Dr. Alexander um, took his cast off, looked at it, said it looked pretty good. He put a pin in it, and here we are. So we're about a month early. And, uh, yeah, he's going to go ride with me tomorrow. Yeah. This is the first time? No, this is yeah, the third time. I feel like you've been rocked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, all right, well. I wish I could go to Mesquite for you guys. That'd be sound, that sounds like a fun day. I mean, my bike's in a bunch of pieces thanks to you two. And but it's not washed. You know, I would like to take it out. Well, we could, I mean, I, I feel like what you're doing tomorrow is more important, but, yeah, I mean, I get it. Yeah, I'm heading out to uh, North Carolina for a service for Corey Gibbs. Yep. Not the funeral, but just a service memorial something at the shop, at the cup shop. So going all the way there for that, uh, yeah, should be – I could see Weege and Phil and – Tell stories. Thomas and tell some stories and laugh about Koi. Yeah. My whole thing is I don't feel like Koi would fly across country for me, but I'm going to fly across country for him. So that's, <laughs> that's one true. one final like thing that I win at. Yeah. You know? So, uh, all right, uh, motorsport.com. Tweet at Talon. No, <laughs> oh, that's my mom. It's the motorsport.com tweets at Talon segment. No. Oh. You're breathing. You're breathing really hard. I know, dude. You nervous or something? You all right? You've been on my show 20,000 times. It's different, dude. It's different. Why? It's a different vibe. We're live. Can you turn his mic up? Because he's, he's slow. He's like all shy and shit. He's bussing over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say, dog. <laughs> Motorsport.com. Go through the banner on PopoMex.com. How's Motorsport from Works Connection? It's, uh, they, the, they do really they do well. They do well for They're you guys. Great, great company yeah. to deal with also. So they yeah, they absolutely awesome. do well. If you want to get your Motorsport, uh, get your Works Connection through Motorsport.com. Free shipping on everything over 79 bucks. And uh, great return policy as well. UTV stuff, street bike stuff. All of that um, is available at motorsport.com. And uh, really appreciate those guys coming on board with us. So these are tweets submitted to at Pulp Mech Show. The guy in the corner picks the best ones, goes through them all. And uh, Aiden, uh, don't be nervous at day service. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Is that Thanks. good, Marks? At whose service? I don't know, man. I was Dave just service or something. Like Dave, Dave service or Dave Dave's? service. Dave service. I said, don't be nervous. Be at day service. Oh. Yeah, you don't know how to read, but no, that's okay. I don't. Yeah. I'm getting really What does that mean? What is that from? Yeah, it's right from an old uh, Cat old Williams skit what? with Snoop Dogg. Uh, okay, you did good though. Nice try. I didn't know what that meant. I don't know either. Man, Mark told me to say it. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> All right, really, it. it was really white. <laughs> it was so white. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Let's do this, Talon, please. Thanks. All right. From, uh, from Jimmy G for Kiefer. I took your advice on purchase, purchasing a KTM 250 XCF over a two-stroke for 50% vet moto and 50% single track. He wants your opinion on a recluse clutch. Thinks it'll be good for woods, but will it be a negative for moto? Uh, auto clutch, I think, is a negative for most guys. I'm not saying for everybody. Um, it takes some of that hit away if you have an auto clutch. Um, man, unless you really, really need it in off-road and you're doing more off-road than moto, I would say, yeah, it's okay to go to an auto clutch because it does really make it really nice in the woods. Um, you don't have to really think about it. You just twist the throttle. Um, engine braking is better. It lugs better with the Recluse Auto. But for moto, if it's a 50-50 type ratio, I would just try to stick with the stock clutch because, honestly, the KTM stock clutches are really, really good, and they last for a very long time. Compared to, like, my 22YZ clutch, I have to change every 10 hours. Uh, KTM clutch, I could go 30, 40 hours on a clutch. It's amazing. All right, from uh, Jordan L, 1992. With the 23YZ450 coming in coming in a little late, are we worried about ET3 and Ferrandis being behind the eight ball? No, they've got them. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. Steve, what happens first? The Raiders win a Super Bowl or Stark races Supercross or Motocross? Stark races Supercross, Motocross. Really? <laughs> yeah, I feel like they're, I mean, a few years away. Or, I, mean, uh. I mean, I know they're having some issues, but... It's no, not, it's not really just you issues. Think the Raiders just, are close. I think the Raiders are closer as the battery technology needs to go up a lot more. It can race soupy for twenty minutes. Easy dog. Yeah, he's breathing hard, touching yeah, he's, mics. Yeah, like he's, he's amateur out. <laughs> you think he'd be used to? You know, I mean, he's no, Chris I don't Kiefer's know. Kid. Right, chill out, relax. Frankie says, relax, man. <laughs> 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 They're telling him to stop <laughs> breathing, so then he's focused on like. T now timely, like, bro. Oh, crap. Timely <laughs> reference. It makes it even harder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Freaking out. Now, yeah. he's, now he's thinking about it like, oh, oh okay. crap. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, from Scott McElroy for Eric, how hard do you have to throw a Phillips head screwdriver to make an indent on a motorcycle frame? Asking for a friend. I knew this one was coming. What happened? This what is happened? my former roommate, Scott. Okay. So I may or may not have had a temper when I was, you know, younger. Does it, you don't seem like yeah, at you all. Seem like, you seem the most I mellow know. dude. I know. But no, I, I had a temper. I still do, but it's it's hidden. Yeah. But no, I uh, yeah, things weren't going well with something, and uh, yeah, I decided to throw a screwdriver across the room, and it left a perfect indent on my '91 RM125 frame. Really? Yeah. Right, like just the just the, the, just the yeah, tip of the, the tip thing. of the just, screwdriver. Yeah, just that. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I can't remember if Scott was there, and I well, he must have been, because otherwise I would never said anything. Right. So yeah. At some point, we've all thrown something in the oh. garage. Or the shop, right, like, exactly. Oh, yeah. Tire irons or yeah. T handles. Yeah. Something. Uh, from Zach Wisniewski. Brownie has been ripping this year. If he were to race outdoors, where does he finish? Also, if he raced Hayden Deegan at Minio's, who wins? Oh, Hayden beats Hayden him. Beats Come him. on. Brownie, uh, depending which which race it is, he could be near 20th. Of yeah. Course. yeah. Yeah, I think around 20. I was going to yeah. say around 20th. Yeah. From Destry Butters, who do you think will make the better 450 rookie in Supercross, Craig or Nichols? Craig. Craig. But Craig's not a rookie. In he's he's raced 450 Supercross yeah, before. Yeah. I'm kind of excited for Nichols. That, I mean, just to see what he can do on that Honda. Yeah. I mean, I mean he's been out for a year. When he yeah. Was on yeah. it though. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited about no, that. No, it's a, it'll be interesting to pick up for sure. He's uh, he signed with O'Neill. I saw. Yeah. O'Neill's got a lot of guys. I know, right? Yeah, Enjoy the ride. This year, yeah. yeah. Marv. Yeah. Colt? Him? Carnell? Carnell? A Ray? A Ray? A Ray's free. Is he? No. No. Why are you so negative on A Ray? I said Izzy, not is oh, he. Is, is he? I Z Z I. Is he racing? He said he's going to race Soupy. Yeah. His, his, Eddie Laird, you know Eddie? Yeah. Uh, his bike was over at Eddie's. He was working on it. Getting ready to ride Supercross. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck to him. Yep. Uh, why are you so negative? About? A Ray. No. Do you want me you're, to tell you the story? You're so or? negative. No, you're, I'm not. I'm honest. You're usually like pretty positive, Chris. For A Ray, I'm positive, but the, some of the stuff that he uses and chooses, I'm I just not the best stuff. Well, can you just be a, a supportive friend? I can now. Yeah, now that I got called out, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
another one from your roommate, Eric. Have you ever publicly told the whole story about the whole shot device and that other guy? Uh, no, not really. We. Uh, I think you went into it a little bit on our pod. Yeah, in, yeah. in the pod yeah. we did. But, uh, about what yeah. was, what's that about? The, the original the whole shot device. Oh, and yeah, and yeah. And yeah. Stuff. Uh, it's yeah. not that I like, avoid it. It's just not really that interesting to anybody outside of it, right. in my opinion. So, no, I've never really gone into it. It's probably a couple of years I'd like to kind of forget. <laughs> but. I Well, I was going through all my old resumes. If you saw that on my social media, like I got old handwritten letters to Eric when I was 14 years old oh, wow. to Works Connection at the old address. And that was that when you're in the yeah. garage yeah, yeah. and asking for sponsorship. And I sent it to Eric one day. <laughs> so did, he get, dude, did he hook you up? Ah, uh, yeah. I think I got like some percentage off oh, at yeah? some point. Percentage yeah, off. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to go through those every one of them. Yeah. I mean, I was I was a one man show for like yeah. four years. Yep. So I'd go through all that stuff. It was cool because I know if I got something, the envelope would be a little bit thicker. And you know, if you got a negative one, like, hey, we don't want you, the envelope was just like right. real thin. I think I. So I was. Uh, I think I had my shop up in Canada when you first started. And I was getting my stuff through White Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, White Brothers White was Brothers a distributor. Was yeah, solid. so I was yeah. getting worse connection stuff, but through them. Right. That was my, uh, my hookup. For they were, like, the most aggressive company. Like, the minute anything was new, was like, they wanted to know what it was, yeah. you know, what we had. Yeah. And uh, they order a bunch of it. And they'd yeah. beat everybody to the punch. All the bigger guys, they'd beat to the punch because they were just, uh, you know, we were bigger fish in there. Right. Pond, Chris so. Bergstrom was a guy I dealt with. He was the the okay. uh, distributor for, like, out, out of country stuff. Like uh, No, it was fun dealing yeah. with Tom. You know, I dealt with Tom quite a bit. It was a great yeah. company. Yeah. Things that always, that I, every year that I wrote, resumes no, we're back to this again what no cool, works cool. connection was always the one cool that story, i man. did because i wanted frame guards a skid plate and the perch right that's what i wanted on my bikes all the time smart man mm -hmm. aiden at pulpamex wants to know if you have that w riz <laughs> <laughs> no i don't not no. at the moment at least I don't know what that means. I don't know either, man. You got it means like you, you got, got a got game. With you got to control you your game. Kid, man. His music choices suck, Steve. No, I know. It's terrible. It's yeah. absolutely terrible. It sucks. It's so good. Machine Gun Kelly's the best artist ever. He's got these chains. He's got a monster toque. Like, what's going on with him? Dude, I'm trying to help. Like, well, this is the struggle as hard, a parent. You're try not trying hard enough, man. <laughs> like, you should have saw how he's wearing it on the way up. It was rolled up above his ears. And I go, why even have that on? Why didn't have the Why you have a toque on indoors? It's Thank not you. you're not in the snow, bro. It's just we have it's 75 degrees in here. He wants to be handy without the hair. Or yeah, something. just take the toque off. Aren't you glad you put on a headset? Like no. I should just go back to the I'm, a, I'm, a go back hey, I'm a monster car. I'm a monster kid. Like bro, you don't need a toque on. Yeah. You're not you outside. You know what a toque is? It's a nowhere for beanie, isn't yeah, yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Lipstick you're not on, on your that, dipstick? <laughs> Uh, from fake Glenn Helen for Kiefer, what happened to Preston Bose plug getting dropped by Team Green? He seemed to have a great year last year. Wasn't winning enough. Yeah, I think uh, you're in that position, and he was a B kid, and I think he was hired to win Loretta's as a B rider. And I was expecting Preston to do better than he did, and he didn't do bad. He just didn't win. And when you're in that kind of a position and you got that much help, they want you to win, and he didn't. So uh, I think they, they went their separate ways, you know. So and so I try to tell him, like, you got to win. No one cares about what you look like on Instagram and your fifths and fourths. You got to win. Yeah. Well, I don't got to win at World Vets, but I had to be dark. I had to be dark side. Dark. That's a win. Yeah. That is a win, I guess. Yeah. You, you beat him, so. He was rattled. He was so rattled. <laughs> he can say whatever he wants. That Friday when he was over oh. at the house, he was effed up. Yeah. Dude, he yeah. was blown out. Yeah. He was head case. He, he's, yeah. yeah. He was out to lunch. Yeah. Took advantage of it. Uh, I took advantage of his weak psyche. You did. These Manitoba championships didn't win themselves, Chris. Hey, I, I saw it at Mesquite the week before. I saw the corner speed. I was like, oh, boy. Yep. Dark's done. <laughs> 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 All right. Ryan Hyatt wants to know who wins more races in 23, Zacco or Kenny? I don't know XC2 competition well enough. I have no idea. I'm going to say Zach. If Kenny is on it, he can win three races. Easy. Maybe more, but like three. I got him penciled in for three. Phew. 
No? That's a lot. That's a lot. For Kenny? Yeah. Huh? I mean, as, yeah, I mean How many did he win last year? I know he won the opener. Yeah, I think he just won one. That was yeah. it. Yeah, yeah then he, remember he pulled out of the series halfway through yeah. ish or so. Yeah, I say Zach. You, Eric? I don't know. I think Zach. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know anybody at XC2 competition, so I, I have no idea. I feel exactly. I still pull for Kenny, though. Kenny is all, like, yeah. he's great. Like, yeah. social media, forwarding yeah. stuff. I mean, it's amazing for his level rider. He's a good dude. I feel like Zacho is going to be a podium guy almost right away, right? Yes, I, mean, I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. So. He can be as modest as he wants, but he'll be good. Right. Uh, another one for Eric. Which one of your amazing products has made the most money? Is that gross sales, oh, that profit? Would, he said what gross we, sales. Well, gross, gross sales. sales. Oh, that'd be the foot peg wideners. No. Um, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gross sales. That's uh, I mean, the radiator guards. Now you put me on the spot. They, they sell for a lot. So. I'll give you the top five. Okay. It's in no particular order. It's radiator braces, pro launch start device, frame guards, skid plates, and uh no purchase the perch yeah, yeah I was saving that for last oh, okay well that's your five most popular products that anybody would guess that you're not throwing you want me to narrow down there. to three yeah three <laughs> radiator braces pro launch and frame guards okay yeah hmm. figured skid plates would have been in there what did you ask eric the other day that he said he should not do and we saw on youtube Oh, someone polishing the... Um, no, it wasn't polishing. It was taking the anodizing off of the... Uh, the the, the, the pro-launch. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Perfect. this guy on YouTube is like taking the red anodizing off of the pro-launch and making it a different color. It's chrome. And chromed it. Oh. And oh, just did he just polish it or something? Or? Yeah. Yeah, we don't recommend. I mean, because it, it's anodized surfaces you don't wear. They don't gall like plain aluminum. So right. I, we see guys do it. Some hmm. guys don't like the red. Okay. But... I used to advice. take my goalie cage when I played goal. I would take the cage, you know, that you, you, and I would chrome it. And then a guy told me, don't do that because it's steel with paint on it. And then when I chromed it, it would change the texture of the so – Change the material, change the, yeah. the material, and it could just break in my face. I still kept doing it because it looked bitching. But he's like, don't do that. I'm like, why? I'm just chroming it. And he's like, no, it changes the whole metal composition. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? I'm like, oh. yeah. No, okay. there's a lot of chemical reactions have you looked going at, on. Have you looked at anodizing those for different colors? Because I, I could see guys <laughs> freaking out about that. <laughs> that back is scary. Yeah. Uh, like, no, you know, we looked we, at like it. I like, would probably like, get a blue one like if we, I could pick. It's just it's where we, why we don't is because our start devices are only made for one bike. I mean, they only fit like YZ450. Maybe they cross over to 250, but they don't fit everything. We, the way we make them, so we have probably well, the, the thirty-five. Flip thing, the flip thing fits everything. Yeah. Deliver. Well, there, we have a couple of different ones of those. You do? So, yeah. So why? Why would you have the different ones of those? Like the uh, RMs have more curve to the fork guard. Oh. Some so have a little bit oh, deeper okay. throw with the trigger. So it's all a calculated yeah. thing when we build the fork ring. It's per the fork guard. It's there's a lot goes on more than it looks like. Yeah, because get some, it to fit right. No, I get the fork ring. That's so then, one thing. So now we I have get that. we have thirty five ish part numbers. So now you add a color. Now we're up to seventy part numbers. Uh, yeah, yeah. and but the dude, distributors don't. They okay, don't like but it. what you could do is people that are cool like me, you could make me a blue one for. But a But then you show it, and then, and everybody, then everybody wants it. Wants it. Yeah, so that but doesn't but, work so but good. But then it's like ah, oh, we we only do that for elite athletes like Mathis. What about limited edition runs? Yeah, what about limited edition? Yeah, maybe. That's that would be an idea. Like LEs, like yeah. LE Pro Yeah, Launch. think right. about think about anything LE. It sells out like crazy. Yeah, right. I I just like the red. Okay, it's so like we're gonna people do people see red and they know yeah. what it is. So right? people it's almost like brand recognition. Uh, contact Works Connection. Ask them for an LE. <laughs> a dish. Is there an info at WorksConnection.com? Is there? One? There is. Okay, but so people we, do that, yeah. and if you get what, two hundred. Oh, you're going to make the gal that answers the emails <laughs> not very happy. Cam. I'm going to be in big trouble. You should send it directly to me. No, I wouldn't no. do that. That's, I wouldn't that's do the that. contact form at Pulp I, MX. I, would, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so email, use the contact form on Walker Works Connection. If we get 200 requests, can we make 200? That would be a good number, yeah. Okay. We'll go with that. If you Eric get 200 gets 200 emails. emails saying that you would buy an LE Edition. Pro launch. Pro launch. For double the money. Whatever the price. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Doubles a little much. Come on. I know. No. 
we'll it would have it. to be a little more. And we'll make it some color. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We can make a little more. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, MSRP on a Pro Launch is? 129 95 That's pretty steep. I'd say another 30 bucks. Do you get know. to pick your color, or we're all doing one color? If anybody at the shop's listening to this, they're going to be so mad at me right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know half of the... <laughs> Some like, of the shit for me, just, I could just come up... Because this is what I do when I'm at the shop. Like, I come up with, like, an idea. Like, yeah. like I added all those <laughs> colors, and it was a, it's just a shit storm. I mean, there's no way around it. It's like, you add that many part numbers and colors... So are we... If, we, if you like, get the two... I just get to walk away, and yeah. they have to do it all. Yeah, but we're, like, whatever. You're the boss. When I tell Mark what to do, he just does it, man. You're right. Like, yeah. Look at the app. Look at yeah, the app. Just like the app. It's coming in hot. Right. <laughs> um, are we just doing one color, or are we going to do multiple colors of the... It's you're you're running this let's, show. Let's so just you, start you with just, a different color. Let's just say whatever. What, let's if you're going to pick a different color, what color are you picking? Well, purple. I want blue, but that's not going to work for KTM people. No, but they have their own orange. We do have orange for oh. KTM. We've always had orange and red. Oh, those are we've started with oh. that. That's all we we've had. Oh, okay. So well, blue will work with RM Army. It'll work blue with Cowie. Blue works Cowie. Yeah. yeah. So blue. Blue, Honda, blue, blue looks good. Honda. Yeah. We've talked about blue. Yeah. Just we're because there's blue. a lot of Yamaha. We're doing blue. Yeah. If we get 200 emails, we'll do a blue. LE a dish pro launch start device. There Sweet. There it, huh. yeah. 200. Yep. Info at worksconnection.com. Yep. Okay. Start the camera. Poor, poor Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There goes some more I'm hair. Gonna, hair I'm going gonna to have to send an email to, <laughs> <laughs> to Gina. <laughs> Sorry, Gina. <laughs> All right. I'll explain Moto that. MotoFan92 <laughs> for you, Steve. What's the number one thing you're not looking forward to this upcoming season? Moto and Supercross. Cody Phipps on YouTube says he's pissed. Oh, yeah. That's my son, other right. son. who uh, He builds all the pro launches. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, Cody. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not looking for it. I was looking over at Brock thinking he was teaming up oh, with Cody no, or something. I'm like, wait a uh, minute. Yeah, no, that, yeah. I'm not looking forward to travel. Like, travel sucks. Like, just airlines and, you know. The travel all, sucks. It, travel sucks, right. Dallas so is going to be horrible. I'm not looking forward to that. If I had a Corvette to drive to Anaheim, I would be loving it. Why don't you just rent hey, one? if I get a Corvette. You want to get some bitches? I'm down. All right. I'm Big so down. I'm down. Where are you going to put them? <laughs> some bitches. I don't know, man. I'll Just kick Aiden out. Okay. Aiden, Aiden laughs. Laugh. Aiden don't even know what to do. You know that what I recommend? It. In from LA, boy. <laughs> 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 I recommend you go to – he's got all these – tracks right here where you go rent the fast cars and go yeah. rip the tracks and you got it right in Vegas. I tried right to rent backyard. a Corvette and Jesus told me it wasn't right. happening. I'd yes. love to see Steve at a, at a track in a car to be honest. That'd be great. I like it. Why would I I, I? I just don't see you as like a Thank you. go fast, let's let's crush lap times they, in a car. Dude, I live life a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> <laughs> they probably make you wear your seatbelt too, for They'd sure. Yeah. Yeah, Have you seen fine. him drive the Ridgeline? Because it's kind of like a race car. Ugh. Mid-size he's not. He's not that fast in the Ridgey. Midsize truck of the year. Would you? Would he you get rid of the Ridgey or fine. would you keep it? Nah, I love the Ridgey. I'd keep it. Okay. It's paid off. It's great. All right. No, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Motorsport.com tweet at Talon segment. There it is. Well, what a run. That was a good show. Osborne, mm-hmm. Brown, mm-hmm. Macquarie, mm-hmm. JT, or DV. Favorite guest. DV. DV's. You got to go. He always yeah, knocks it out. Banging hard, pookie so. and stuff. Yeah. yeah he no, wants to go hit it hard. Right, right. Yeah. No offense. I like Zach too, but yeah. DV is DV. Yeah, it's hard to beat yeah. DV when he's. Co host, oh, February yeah. 26th, DV in studio. Marks, you are forbidden from helping him when he's here for Life Swap. Like, he just has to do my job. Uh, so, uh, life is normal? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Stop breathing so hard, dude! I know what is anything. going on. I'm not even doing anything. I have the threshold turned all the way, which means <laughs> it, it, it activates only in a louder noise. I'm not even breathing hard. I told you he's a mouth breather, didn't I say that? You did that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, favorite interview, Mark? Um, yeah, I'm gonna go DB. Sorry, Talon. Zacho, because he's going off road. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Blue Crew. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Bita over there loves yeah, it. Bita. Uh, Some Bita's tires. Next Monday night, we're off, everybody. We're Pulp Mex dinner. And it will not be live on YouTube. Everybody has to keep their mortars under nine ninety nine. That is, I forgot to tell you guys. <laughs> nine hundred ninety nine. No, nine dollars. Where, you, where are you going? Where I don't know. Okay. I don't want to tell people because then who knows? Oh, that's true. But it's it's Italian place. Okay. So I can't. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna get off fairly cheap. Olive Garden. Yeah, I'm going to get off fairly cheap. 
Can't screw with breadsticks and salad, dude. Right. I love them breadsticks. Talon's gonna get all, Talon's gonna just be souping breadsticks. That's all he gets. And I have to sit at my own table. Yeah. The kids' table. Uh, yeah. but yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. Eric, thank you for coming in, man. Thanks for having me. It's thanks for the support time. of the show. I think you've probably been seven, ten years. I don't know. You've helped us. It's a long time. It's been early on. So yeah. yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Around. When was the first show you listened to? Do you remember? The Pulp. That I listened to. Mm-hmm. Do you right remember when you came in? Were Probably you? after we started sponsoring it. Kenny called me originally, so whenever that was. So not the Lindsay days, just the Kenny days. Kenny days. Okay. Yeah. Well, Lindsay was only about eight shows. Yeah. And then he was out. But I I, I run into some listeners that say they've been listening since yeah. then. Yeah. 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 Paul uh Paul and I, it was a rough start. Have you heard from him? Oh, I hear from him every now and then. What's yeah. he doing? I don't know what he's doing, but yeah, he sounds like he's doing well. Okay. So it's good to talk to him. So, uh, yeah, I remember Paul when we split. Paul's like, look, man, the only thing I want is I want the Moto Show name. And I'm like, sweet. Because I wanted to call it the Pulp MX Show the whole time. <laughs> I th- that's all I wanted to call it. He didn't want to. And I'm like, sweet. So you can keep the name. I'll, I'll start calling it the Pulp MX Show. Hmm. Awesome. And then he never really did much after that. No, I don't think he did. But yeah. I was just like, awesome, because I don't want that name anyway. So. Right. Uh, but, yeah, thanks for the support, man, over the years. Uh, again, yeah. Pulp MX 20, 200 emails for Factory Edition. Elliot dish, I should say. Yeah, I apologize to Gina and my son Cody for that one. So yeah, yeah. sorry guys. Yeah, but no, thanks again. And it was fun. Well, we blue, we'll do blue. We're doing blue if we get two hundred emails. We'll think about it. No, you said if we get two hundred, <laughs> you're doing blue. Okay. At thirty bucks extra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At thirty bucks more. Okay. I like Dick Cheese. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. I'll go with All that. All right. Done. <laughs> Stamp it. They can't be too mad at me, right? I mean, dude, you're they the can. owner. They can. You can fire everybody. Uh, oh, yeah. Fire <laughs> everybody. Too good. Yeah. Fired. 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 That's what. Hey, th- you think these guys? These guys live in fear. I can fire them at you any moment. Pro you Garmin Garmin get a pro launch. You get a pro launch. Fire cock. Fire marks tomorrow. <laughs> Might have came the earliest he's ever ever come. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for coming <laughs> in. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for, thanks for the support, us. Kiefer. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun at Mesquite, guys. It should be good. Sorry, no after dark. Sorry. Yep. We had some pretty good uh, emails, but I'll save them. All right. Well, I don't know when you're coming in next. We can figure that out. But it's fine. Maybe after A one. Sure. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Uh, Aiden. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are jerks. You guys are. You guys are assholes. <laughs> I didn't. See what I have to live with. This is what I got to live. You can with. ride with us tomorrow. Okay. Good. You thank go in the van. Yeah. All okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. He's riding with us. Marks, thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. We'll see you Monday. You're yes. bringing your hot. Thanks wife? for yes. the polls, Marks. Thanks for the poll. You're very well. Uh, hey, the what other is poll. The, polls? the other How poll is, is heavily in favor of me. What is it? What's the friend poll? The yeah. What's the? Let's give it update real quick before we wrap it up. Oh, sorry. Give me one second. Fifty-eight point seven percent nice guy, and fifty-nine point six percent dirty. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a great ratio. It's just yeah. barely over fifty percent. Yeah, that's great. I, my whole high school was like that. It's fine. What about the dirty bike one? Fifty-nine point. Oh, it changed to fifty-nine point five as we were talking for dirty. It's yep. dirty. Yeah, dirty for sure. Yeah. Dirty. Thanks, Eric, for that. <laughs> See, I just got you back with a limited edition. You did. I did. See? It's karma. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah, so are you bringing your hot wife? Me? Yeah. Yes. Are you yeah. bringing your hot chick, girlfriend? Yeah, she's coming. Sweet. She's not pumped that Kiefer's not going, but. Right. I love you, IR. When are you going to, are you going to get married? Maybe. She has an after dark for you, but we're not doing it. Oh, fuck. Should I leave? Can room? you at least email it to me so I can read it? We'll have to just wait till you do oh, it. Oh, man. Can we just read hers right now? Sure. Can we do that? Steve? Uh, ask Eric. Eric? Eric. Fine with me. Okay. Go your ass off after dark. <laughs> okay! Okay! <laughs> you got I'm here for the gangbang? <laughs> <laughs> Go your ass off dot com. Hey, hey, hey. Can I just say that I did two chicken breasts up, one with pop smoke fajita, Okay. one with salt, pepper, and garlic, mm. and... They were both so delicious. Really? Loved it. Okay. I'm still a uh, Willie Pete's guy. Yep. Just had some chicken the other night. We were talking about the chicken and rice bowls. Yeah. Heather does that with the chicken and rice bowls. Yep. Yeah. It's fantastic. And of course, Ma Deuce can't be beaten. No. No. Ma Deuce is good on steak. All right. Infidel. Infidel. For pork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's calling. Hey, man, me. you beaten off? Oh, okay, let's just get her on the show. Yeah, let's put her on. No. 
Hold on. Oh. All right, let me let me let, let me, me call her real quick. All right, let's patch her in. Why is that buzzing? Uh, that's your kid's thing. Something happened. Did you kick the? Where, look, where's your feet at right now? You're, are you kicking the cords? Did you move back? Step back. You're kicking the feet. You kicking the cords there? No, let me what about that. the one that I just hooked up? It's it's uh, the the audio one. <laughs> I did. It. You guys are How's so jacked. <laughs> yes, there it's fixed. Okay. Nope. This is high quality stuff here. <laughs> well, we're waiting to call. Yeah, there it's fixed. Yeah, I mean. Okay. I don't think they get a blowjob before the main event. <laughs> Jim Holly. We don't have Jimmy. time for pleasantries, Lone Wolf. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> hey, I'm coming home soon. Yar yar. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me as always. Hi, okay. Yar Yar. Hi. Hi, Kiefer. Okay, we're ready for it. Okay. I, I only did this ready? for you. This is your show now because this is like. Okay, I am so. I have been. Wi- I was honestly going to ask this at dinner, but clearly you're bailing. Yeah. So here we go. Steve, you have to answer. Thank you. Okay, you have to play. Okay. You have to play. Okay. <laughs> if you. You're getting Eiffel Towered by Satan and Jesus. Who's in the front and who's in the back? I don't know what Eiffel Tower means. I don't know either, man. I don't know. Are but you guys fucking kidding me? No, yeah, I don't do. know what that no, means. I'm no, I, don't, I really don't know what that means. Oh, my. God. There's one. Oh, one on each side? Yeah, and they're high five. Yes. Oh. You're Eiffel Tower? You're in the middle. You're just having a three way. How about you just say that? Yeah, okay. So you're Eiffel Tower. That sounds better. And Satan and Jesus? Is that what you said? Yes. Who are you going? Who are you choosing to be in front of you, and who are you choosing <laughs> to be behind you? <laughs> this, I, I should not have taken this call. But. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> this would have been better at dinner, but she hey, made me know, answer this. So, <laughs> Steve, go ahead and go at first. I mean, either one is good. Like, I, there's no good answer. It doesn't matter because there's not I a preferred like answer. I want. I want. Oh God, it's, I, I don't want to say it. It sounds so horrible. <laughs> I want. Just, in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Uh, I will go. Jesus is in my butt. Oh, I'll go the other way. And then um. Yeah, I'm going Satan in the back. In the back. Yeah. But I want whatever. So much better. But I want what Jesus has. I want him up in. I want it to give to me. Give oh, it to give me. it to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I mean... figured Jesus was gonna be nicer and like slow. I don't know. Just be a lot nicer back there. So I was showing yeah. him in the back. That's a good theory too. I just want whatever power Jesus has is going to go inside of me. and I'm, It's like a transfer of power. Okay. All yeah. right. Fair well, enough. I, I'll go that way too. Yeah, Kiefer, I like your answer. Eric's really quiet over there. What, what about you, Eric? Yeah. Eric's My out. headset stopped working yeah, like Eric four can. minutes ago. I can't hear anything. <laughs> I mean, I learned a new term about Eiffel Towering. I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know that. anything about that, Kiefer, no. Um, I know what Superman yeah, go is. Yeah, I and Google it tonight when, you, when you're off the show. Okay. Do you know what Superman I is? I admire it. No, what's that one? Was. So it's it's when Talon nuts on your back and he puts the sheets back over you and you go to the bathroom and the sheet follows you on the way to the, the bathroom. Stop it. It's like a cape. I'm like, is this one your favorite? This is the Superman is your favorite? Uh, yeah, that's my fave. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh. Is it Heather's favorite? Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. You're telling me Heather likes to just run around the house. Yeah, with, she's like, fine with it. It's yeah, Superman. It's easy. Yeah, you feel powerful. So Aiden was born. Yeah, I'm, I'm here by the way. <laughs> Aiden's right there. I'm yeah. right here. <laughs> Wait, but if it's on her back, then that's not how Aiden was born. Look at oh. you. Never know, right? You just they. What then? Then they say pre cum is the strongest thing there is before the actual stuff. Yes or no? I don't. I don't. I mean, that's what. That's how you can get a girl pregnant, Aiden. So don't even do it. Just get out. Don't even do it. Yeah, don't have sex. Your dick will fall off. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Easy enough. That's it. All right, Yar Yar. All right, we're wrapping it up now. Yeah. <laughs> <It's not laughs> okay. That, uh, Yar Yar, that that question's what? fucked. Yeah, it is. So yeah, good luck. Um, I want you to know that I accidentally asked. Uh, that question in a in a t-ball group chat with every single parent on my daughter's team. That's oh, so bad. God. That is so bad. <laughs> like you thought you were talking to somebody else. Yeah, and I just like <laughs> sent it. And I was like, I'm so sorry. And then I completely like ratted myself out because I was like, Indy and I will be there. Nobody would have known who sent it, but I panicked and I, you know, so it was pretty cool. Did anybody answer? <laughs> yes. Oh, everybody. No, the next practice, everyone was like, 
So, who would you pick? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Just a yeah. random T-ball meeting about <laughs> yeah. who we get, get I'll wait for the lightning to come Indeed, through the house. I say, <laughs> I'm, I'm the favorite of the parents. <laughs> Wow. That's a. Right. You see your true colors <laughs> shining through. Uh, we'll see you Monday, Yari. I remember. Uh, okay, you, I'll be there. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, Talon can sit at the big table. Uh, what is Talon popping the question anytime soon? What are we doing? I don't know. I mean, he's pop. You have to ask him. I will tell you that um, <laughs> we are no longer waiting on the Lamborghini first. No, no Lambos. Cancel, on your dips, cancel the Lambo order. Yeah. Oh, well, it was a nice thought. It was. All right. All Thanks, right. I'll see you guys Yara. Monday. Have Sounds a good. safe trip. Have fun. Thank see you. ya. See ya. Bye. That's Yar Yar, everybody. With a Coming really, with a hot question. A really inappropriate <laughs> question. Uh, all right. Well, hey, thanks again, Eric. Appreciate it. <laughs> thanks for having me. Uh, thanks, Kiefer. <laughs> Aiden, thank you. Thank you. Rock, thanks. Thanks for coming out. Uh, Marks, thank you. Yep. Got guy in the corner, thank you. Yep, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, good show tonight, everybody. We're off next week, but we're back the following Monday with Michael Lindsay in studio from Vital MX uh, to talk about uh, some more Supercross stuff, motocross stuff. Thanks to our guests. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to uh, you guys for listening. Thanks to people for watching on YouTube and all that. See you in a couple weeks. Sire's been so heavily, guys. I'm a kinky bastard, okay? There's something I want to get off my chest, and it's about that summer. When you went away to community college, I got an offer to do Playgirl magazine, and I did it. I did a full spread for Playgirl magazine. I, I mean spread, man. I pulled my butt apart and stuff, and I was totally nude, and it was weird. I, I mean, you probably didn't hear about it because I went under the name of Mike Honcho, but I just wanted you to know that. If you could hear me, if it got into your brain somehow, that I spread my butt cheeks as Mike Honcho.